The Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network is proud to present Old Dominion Athletic Conference baseball from Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. Hello, baseball fans. Kyle Haney hanging out with you on a Saturday in mid-March, and we're getting ready for what we think will be an exciting conference baseball doubleheader between Lynchburg, 10-5 and five on the season. They've won five of their last six, and the Roanoke College Maroons, 6-9 and nine on the campaign. But Roanoke College, 2-0 and oh in conference play already. Lynchburg, 1-1 one and one after a split with Bridgewater last weekend. Lynchburg has been heating up offensively in their last five games. They are five and one, or four and one rather. They've outscored opponents 66 to 23. They're hitting over 380 as a team, and there's 11 home runs in those last five games for Lynchburg. We'll run down some of those guys that have been leaving the yard, swinging the bat. Lynchburg's pitching has been solid as well. We'll see if the power switch is still on today for the Hornets as they get set to take on the Maroons from Roanoke College. First pitch is right after this short timeout on LHSN. Tim Slusser from the Outdoor Leadership Program gave a presentation at a teaching and learning resources conference here about getting his program more involved on the academic side of campus. I mentioned uh, computers and mapping and he mentioned caving and eventually we came up with the idea of mapping caves. So the week before we were able to learn how to use the instruments kind of like on a flat surface and just kind of get a hang of how they work but it was really amazing how once we got in the cave, it was a completely different experience using them. It was unique. It got most of us out of our comfort zone, kind of gave us a new experience, a new taste of something new. But I think the most difficult parts were getting the lighting right. Um, you had to read the instruments with the headlamps while keeping your eye pointed on the plot point. This allowed them to actually literally get their hands dirty, uh, collecting data, conducting measurements and putting all that together in the form of a map and doing it in a, in a place that's never been mapped before. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the athletic training laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience, practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the sports medicine clinic in Turner Gymnasium, You'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams, helping them get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. Hello again, baseball fans. Kyle Haney here with you on the Saturday before St. Patrick's Day. We're getting set for an ODAC doubleheader between Lynchburg 
and Roanoke. The Hornets 10 and 5, 1 and 1 in conference play after a split with Bridgewater. Roanoke comes into the game at 6 and 9. They took two from Eastern Mennonite in their opening conference weekend. Lost to Maryville on Tuesday, 7 to 3. Roanoke has actually won four out of five as well. Lynchburg has won five of their last six. And we'll get Wesley Arrington on the mound to start it for Lynchburg. The Sheriff comes into the contest at 1-1 one one with a 5.49 earned run average. He struck out 21, walked 9. Batting average against is a little bit higher than you would imagine against Wesley Arrington. Hitters, opponents hitting 286 against the fifth-year man from Keswick, Virginia so far this year. So he'll work to get that number down slightly. It'll be against a very talented Roanoke College lineup that actually features uh, four freshmen in the starting lineup. So it's a mix of young and old for Roanoke. Let's run them down for you. Leadoff man will be junior Corey Coogan in left field. Dylan Bonson plays right. He's a freshman from Toronto, Canada. Senior Johnny Wall, shortstop, has been around 160 hits in his career. The cleanup man is the catcher, Tucker Schiavone. Number 30 is batting fifth. That's Hayden Giordano, another freshman. Hunter Von Zelowitz is a sophomore designated hitter in the sixth hole. Kyle Mosher playing second base, a freshman hitting seventh. In the eighth spot is Caden Friels playing first base, another first-year man. And sophomore Nate Prince is in center field, rounding out the batting order for the Roanoke College Maroons, coached by Zach Ulrich in his fourth season. Lynchburg defensively will go like this. Already mentioned Arrington on the mound. The battery mate behind the dish will be Sean Pokerock. And in the infield, you've got going right to left at first base, Eric Hyatt. Second base is Ben Jones. The shortstop is Brandon Garcia. At third base is Gavin Collins. In the outfield, a start for Eddie Gimble in left. Every day, Eddie, steady Eddie out there in left field today for Lynchburg. And in center field, it's O'Kelly McWilliams in right, Quinn Madden. Some incredible offensive numbers for Lynchburg lately. Defensively, they have not been shabby, though, and the pitching has been solid in this recent stretch. There was a loss to Bridgewater in game one of that opening ODAC doubleheader last weekend. Not what Lynchburg wanted, but Bridgewater's got a good squad this year. I've actually got a good stat about Lynchburg opponents in general, the team's they have lost two. Combined record of 36, 18, and 1 for teams that Lynchburg has lost to. So the Hornets have five losses to four different teams. They lost to York twice. York is 7 and 1 on the season. Bridgewater 12 and 6. East Texas Baptist is 12 and 4. And then Cortland is 5, 7, and 1. A tie on there for Cortland. It's a 2 2 count as we get into the action here. This one swung on and lifted to foul territory, left side. Third base, shortstop, left fielder were all on the move, but that ball is foul, and we'll try a two-strike delivery again here from Wesley Arrington. The mini scouting report on Wes is he's a hard-throwing, tall right-hander. He's got that sweeping, breaking ball. Sometimes he can get on top of it a little bit more. It'll look more like a curveball. Other times it's a, a true sweeper, slider. And he can really make you uncomfortable as a hitter. High hopper to Ben Jones on the run. Sidearms it to first base just in time for the initial out of the game. Good play there by Ben Jones to come on the move. A tough play there for a second baseman because it's such a long run in straight to home plate. Then you have to throw across your body. And, and really, if you catch that ball on the infield grass, you're almost then throwing behind your body a little bit. So that's a... That's a hard one for a second baseman. The left side, the, the third baseman and the shortstops, they have to make those run throughs and those throws on the move all the time. Second baseman do some, and there's a, there's a few that for a second baseman like that one can be even just a little bit trickier. Arrington getting ahead here. 0-2 count on the two-hole hitter, Dylan Bonzen, right fielder, hitting 407 on the young season. Got it inside. The Sheriff slapped the handcuffs on Bonzen there for out number two. Good job by Wesley Arrington. Boy, his two-seam fastball 
has so much so much ride or run into a right-handed hitter, it can be really difficult. I mean, when he really peels one off, it can almost look like a left-hander's cutter or slider. It does have some sink, obviously, as well, but the lateral movement in there as well. There's the first hit of the game by a guy who is a proven hitter in this league. That's Johnny Wall. Give him 161 career hits now. He tried to hustle in to second base, and he got there. Wow. Just a slight, just enough of a delay and a misplay that Johnny Wall turned the corner and got to second. So not only is he just a pure hitter, but he knows the game as well, doing the little things like that, taking an extra base. Johnny Wall's in scoring position. Yeah, Johnny Wall, 353 in his career. He's up to 375 on the season now after that base hit. Tucker Schiavone, the catcher. He's a 290 career hitter, junior. Watches that slider go out of the frame for ball one. One, one count with two outs. Roanoke hitting in the top of the first inning at Fox Field. Beautiful day to play. We're low 60s right now, should get up to 70. Clear sky, flag is still, not much of a breeze at all. Definitely feels like springtime right now. It's gonna get cold again in Central Virginia on Monday and Tuesday, but right now it very much spring in full effect here. 2-1 delivery coming to Schiavone. There's that two-seam fastball that just kind of ran in too much, and it's ball three. Lynchburg outfield played to pull, probably slightly deeper than average. Infield pretty much straight away. Ben Jones trying to hold the runner at second. There's a ball up the middle. Garcia going to lay out, can't get there. Could have a play at the plate. McWilliams comes up with it, fires a seed home. He bumped into Wesley Arrington. Safe at home plate anyway was the call. Well, that was a strange situation there. Home plate umpire called him safe anyway. And, and I think that's what the field umpire is telling the Roanoke coaching staff that, hey, he was safe anyway, and it would have potentially been an obstruction situation there. Wesley Arrington was working his way behind third base and the mound to go back up a potential throw. So he was heading the right direction. I think Wes just kind of got caught spectating a little bit, and he was in the baseline there as Johnny Wall was coming through. There's a strike from Arrington. So two hits in the inning, and the inning continues. Run on the board, Johnny Wall hustling into second just to get into scoring position and then hustling home. And no, obviously no ill intent or malice involved there from Arrington. I think he was probably more than anything disappointed to give up the base hit. And then as he was getting over there behind the bag, he kind of got caught watching O'Kelly McWilliams throw, which was a good one. Went slightly up the third base line. Sean Pokorok did a nice job to receive it and try to make sort of a modified swipe tag. But Johnny Wall was safe. Johnny Wall kind of came into the plate awkwardly. He didn't really even slide. Just sort of tried to dance around that tag. Cue ball off the end of the bat. Ben Jones will stay down, scoop, and deliver to first. And the inning is over, but a successful one for the Maroons, they're on the board. One run on two hits, one left on. No Lynchburg errors. And we'll see the Hornets come swing it in the bottom of the first. in the dream. USA, Mexico. That was so exciting. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lynchburg, we have an on-campus zip line room. Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience.
Roanoke scores first, one run on two hits. And Lynchburg playing from behind here in the bottom of the first inning. The starter for Roanoke will be sophomore, number 23, Thomas Burgess. Burgess is a tall right-hander, comes at you from the three-quarter arm slot. We'll get some stats on Burgess here in a second, but let's tell you the Lynchburg lineup leading off the shortstop, Brandon Garcia, O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth, will hit second. Ben Jones, sophomore, hitting third. Eric Hyatt cleaning up. It'll be Quinn Madden in the five hole. Gavin Collins hitting sixth between Madden and Collins. They've got five home runs between them in the last three games. We'll discuss more on that. The senior DH will be Riley O'Donovan. Senior Eddie Gimble in left batting eighth. And rounding out the order for Lynchburg will be the catcher, Sean Pokorok. They are facing Thomas Burgess, the sophomore from Leesburg, Virginia. I said he was tall. He's listed at 6'4", 215 pounds. This will be appearance number five of the season. He went a complete game last week against, weekend against Eastern Mennonite. Nine innings, gave up seven hits, two earned runs, struck out five, and walked one. Numbers are really good this year for Burgess, and you can see why he's getting the ball in game one. Statistically, that was his first win of the season, but he is 1-0, 4.76 earned run average through exactly 100 pitches last weekend, so should be fully rested and recovered after nine innings of work. 19 strikeouts to just five walks this season for Burgess. Uh-oh, there's walk number six surrendered to the very patient Brandon Garcia. Actually, the umpire has changed his mind. We've got a strike. It should be a 3-1 count. Garcia looking for walk number 12 on the season. We'll see if it happens here, or perhaps the, the bat continues even more. Oh, struck him out looking. That's a punch out. So the count was not 3-1. and one. Count was full. Strikeout looking for Brandon Garcia. He has now struck out. Brandon Garcia, that is, seven times this season. Here's O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth. Fifth-year man will take strike one. Hitting 339 on the season. He's been part of this power explosion for Lynchburg lately. A home run in this stretch that, as a team, Lynchburg has now knocked in in the last five games 11 home runs as a team in this stretch. 11 homers in the last five games. It's 17 on the season for Lynchburg. We've got 39 extra base hits total. Hornets have really been swinging it great as of late. Competition part of that, sure, but I think Lynchburg's gaining confidence. Hitters are improving. Get used to seeing more live pitching. The, the general thought is that the pitchers are going to be ahead of the hitters early in the season, but now we're in mid-March, so this is the time where you do see a lot of guys start cooking. Looks like Thomas Burgess is cooking early, though. That was a breaking ball that O'Kelly McWilliams couldn't get the bat off the shoulder. And now there's two outs pretty quickly after two punch outs for Thomas Burgess. See what Ben Jones can do. Sophomore enters the game, swinging it at just 217, but the on-base percentage is 464. So Ben Jones is getting on base. He takes a lot of walks, 19 of them this season. He's been hit three times as well. In fact, Ben Jones has reach, reached base now eight straight games. It was seven coming into the game and right before that swing, but now it's eight as Ben Jones just pummels a ball right up the middle past the glove of Thomas Burgess. So there's the first hit of the game for Lynchburg. Eric Hyatt is the hitter. Eric Hyatt has done similar things to Ben Jones just as far as the average doesn't look elite right now but the on base percentage does Eric Hyatt has reached safely in 13 of 15 games this season he has started all 15 and this is game 16 for Lynchburg Roanoke six and nine so this is game 16 for the Maroons as well Lynchburg 10 and five strike one on a breaking ball you can see that I think from Burgess that his curveball slash slider, whatever you want to call it, is very good, very effective. Sharp 
got a lot of depth, comes at you from that steep angle, starts high, finishes in the strike zone a lot of times. There's one that started in the zone and finished out of it. Good hold by Eric Hyatt. Ben Jones with some speed at first. The running game has been important for Lynchburg this year. Hornets are stealing at an 83% clip, 33 for 40 as a team. Ben Jones has three, I believe. Going to confirm that. Scratch that. Ben Jones is five for five stolen bases this year. Five for five. Shorted him a few. One-two count on the junior from Woodbridge, Virginia, Eric Hyatt. Burgess set at the chest, delivers, breaking ball again. Hyatt will slash this by the pitcher and the second baseman. So it's back-to-back -back hits for Lynchburg. And here comes Quinn Madden, who might be the hottest hitter in the lineup right now. Here come the numbers for Quinn Madden. He has homered in three straight games. Quinn Madden has multi-hit games in his last four in a row. And in that stretch, Quinn Madden is 11 for 16. He's hitting over 680 in the last four games. That's three homers, two doubles in there. He's driven in 12 in the last four games. And I think one of the last times we were here at Fox Field, if you go back to March 5th, Quinn Madden was hitting 167 on March 5th. And now we're on March 16th, and Quinn Madden hits 340 on the year. So this tear he has been on has really upped the batting average, and it's really been a big reason why Lynchburg's been successful. Gets under this one, long run, it will not stay in play. So Quinn Madden will get another chance here. But it has been a delight to watch the things Quinn Madden has been doing on the season, but specifically in the last four or five games. So impressive. Quinn Madden has four home runs on the season, hitting 340, slugging percentages up to 620 now. Working with runners on first and second. Sophomore Thomas Burgess got two quick outs, but then back-to-back -back singles for Lynchburg. Here's the pitch. Madden lays off. Looks like that breaking ball again that started in the zone, finished off. Gavin Collins waits on deck. Collins has three home runs in his last two games. He's been doing major damage for the Hornets as well. See if they can sting early. Madden swings on this one. It's in the left center gap, hanging up. It's going to stay in the ballpark, and it will hang up long enough for the left fielder to make a long run in the gap. That was Corey Coogan that ends the threat with a running gap grab in deep left center. So Lynchburg gets two hits, but they strand two. And Roanoke leads 1-0 after one complete at Fox Field in Lynchburg. I learned a lot of valuable lessons playing college football. I never thought about the health benefits of exercise until I actually started to talk to coaches in college. It's not only just for performance, it's for life. My coaches instilled the importance of- A very of green life, fox field. I mean, the grass has really greened up. We don't have anything on the trees yet, green-wise, uh, but the grass is, is starting to look much like spring and summertime right around the corner as well. As the first pitch is swung on and blooped in the right field, that's down for a hit. Quinn Madden couldn't get there in time. And it's number 12, Hunter Von Zelowitz, that will turn the corner and then stop at first base. That'll be hit number three of the game for Roanoke. Kyle Mosher, the second baseman, steps in. He has one hit this season, and it's a home run. Average is currently at 0.77 for Kyle Mosher. 
But the one hit that he does have is a big fly. And that will be a key for Lynchburg to try to limit the extra base hits from Roanoke. There is one double. It was the hustle double from Johnny Wall. Roanoke has more extra base hits than Lynchburg. They've got 26 doubles, 5 triples, 11 homers. Lynchburg, for reference, has 39 total. It's 20 doubles, 2 triples, and 17 home runs. So Lynchburg has less doubles and triples, but more homers. And the extra base hits are always, uh, watch this, check swing. Arrington's going to have to get off the mound, field the spot. Nice, does a nice job to grab it, grab it and underhand it over to first base for the initial out of the inning. Came off in kind of one of those zones that uh, looks like it can be pretty difficult, but Arrington moves well, and he made it look rather easy in the end. The first baseman, Caden Friels, the eight-hole hitter, steps in with the runner in scoring position again for Roanoke. Hornets are one for one so far in this game with runners in scoring position. That came with two outs. That was wide left there from Arrington. Just didn't get the release at all on that one. That wasn't close. Arrington wants a new baseball. And that's a good idea whether it was the ball or not. Sean Pokerock tried to play the carom, tried to play the big rebound off the padding. But unfortunately, it didn't get to him quick enough to have a shot at Von Zillowitz. So he's at third base now, 90 feet away. Roanoke leads 1-0. Arrington, good adjustment, but that's also a ball. Much closer, much more competitive pitch there from Wes Arrington. As the fifth-year man from Keswick, Virginia, just outside Charlottesville. Looks to find it here. It's not pitching bad by any means. Don't think it's quite meeting Wes's standard just yet. He is a guy that can get better as the game goes on, and we have seen that in his career. He's a guy that can be switched on early and get... A bunch of punch outs the first time through the order as well. Every day's different for a pitcher, though. You you wouldn't maybe think that at first thought, first assumption, because the pitcher starts with the ball. He controls everything, but you're just different every day. Feel is different. Body is different. Weather plays a factor. Opponent definitely plays a factor as well. This is a good maroon squad as Friels fouls one off and hits with a 2-2 count. There's one out in the top of the second inning. Got him. Good job by Pokey to scramble out there and apply the tag before Friels could really get started down the first baseline. Nice defensive work there from Sean Pokerock, and it was a good pitch from Wes Lee Arrington. Second strike out of the game. And here comes the nine-hole hitter, Nate Prince. Center fielder bats 255 on the season. Starts with that back foot right on the back line. Trying to get a deep, long look in there off Wesley Arrington. 0-1 count as Friels fouls one straight back. This is game one of two. Lynchburg will have their first conference non-doubleheader, their first single conference game. That'll be on Wednesday when the Hornets will hit the road down to Virginia Beach slash Norfolk to take on Virginia Wesley, right on the border of the two cities there. 0-2 from Arrington. Think he got it where he wanted, maybe a little bit lower than preferred. It is ball one. Nate Prince kind of sniffed at it there, but didn't take a full bite. Let's see what Arrington goes with. 1-2 count. Poker Rock sliding outside again. Here's the pitch. Looked like the breaking ball. Prince was on it. And he just slashes that one into left field. Second run comes home. For Roanoke, they've done another nice job with the runner in scoring position. Not, not one for one anymore like they were when Tucker Schiavone drove in Johnny Wall, but still pretty productive there. Get one on, get him in. If you do that every inning, you're going to be a successful baseball team. Love the big multi-run outburst, but if you can just have a steady attack where you put up one every inning, well, that can serve a ball club very well. Leadoff man Corey Coogan's back again. His second at bat in as many innings, grounded out to the second baseman in his first appearance. Arrington, couple throws over to keep an eye on Prince. Prince is the center fielder. 
Roanoke has the running game going this year as well. 28 for 34 as a team for the Maroons. Prince was on the wrong foot, looking to steal. Arrington got him, and that's a pickoff to end the inning. Nice move there by Wes Arrington, but a little bit more damage done for Roanoke. They get two hits, leave none on, but score one, and the Maroons lead 2-0 through one and a half at Fox Field. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. Gavin Collins will lead off in the bottom of the second for the Lynchburg Hornets, who trail 2-0. Roanoke with one in the first and one in the second for the Maroons. Gavin Collins, the senior from Clifton. Last time we saw this guy on an LHSN broadcast, he was picking up career hit number 150. He's gone well beyond that in the last week or so. Gavin Collins is up to 161 career hits now. He's got a five-game hitting streak going on, and four of those featured multi-hit games. 12 for his last 22. So he's hitting 545 in his last five games. 0-2 count here on Thomas Burgess. You got to like how Burgess comes after these Lynchburg hitters. You can see that early. And there is... It's not tough to understand why Thomas Burgess had a complete game victory against EMU last weekend. And he's got everything you want from a starting pitcher. Got some velocity, got some life on the fastball, good breaking ball, and he looks to throw strikes. Collins lifting one to left field. This will stay in the ballpark. Coogan another long run towards the line this time, but he will make another out. Back to back F7 for Lynchburg. Vastly different though. To end the first inning, Coogan had to run in the left center gap. This one, he makes the move towards the boundary line. And it brings up Riley O'Donovan, hitting with one out in the bottom of the second. Eddie Gimble is on deck for Lynchburg. Breaking ball that just missed from Burgess. You, you can just see the, the takes on that breaking ball. It, it, it seems to have major bite. There's another one. This one, I think, was supposed to be on the plate. Maybe ends up off the time fastball. Here's a pitch from Burgess. It was the heater, but he couldn't get that in the zone either. And for the first time, we're seeing Thomas Burgess maybe look, just slightly lack a little bit of control. Riley O'Donovan hitting 333 on the season. He's driven in 10. He has three home runs and one double. Ball four there, and it will be the first free pass issued. For Thomas Burgess, first walk in the game, actually, for either team. And it brings up the left fielder, Eddie Gimble. Eddie Gimble is a senior. He has been around. He is from Culpeper, Virginia. Played in nine games last year. Eddie Gimble played in two games back his freshman season in 2021. On the career for Eddie Gimble, he's hitting 600 this year. The career average is 313. Eddie Gimble is three for five on the season so far this year in just four games played. This is now game five for the senior. And he was one of the heroes in a walk-off win earlier in the season for Lynchburg against Marietta. He was down at that event in Greensboro the second weekend of the year. And Eddie Gimble 
was one for one with the with the game winning RBI there, or he, or he scored the game winning run rather, tying run. Foul ball there. Oh, right into our crowd, Mike. It got scattered everywhere. We'll have to check that for damage. It looks like the crowd microphone did get dislodged from its perch there, but we'll put it back. It couldn't have been damaged too bad. I don't think the ball hit it directly. Breaking ball that Eddie Gimble takes, and it's a 2-2 count. One out in the bottom of the second. Riley O'Donovan leading off at first. Nine-hole man is the catcher, Sean Pokerock, waiting on deck. Here's the pitch to Gimble. Another one of those sweepers that he takes. I tell you, I was, I was saying you can tell from Lynchburg's takes on that breaking ball that it's very good, but they have seemed to lay off of it a lot better on, as the game has gone on. I heard some stuff from our crowd, Mike. It's still working. It's still effective. Mm, fast ball came inside. Gimble just moved out of the way slightly to take ball four. It's back-to-back -back walks from Thomas Burgess. Oh, the, the crowd, Mike. Crowd Mike must be closer to the speakers now, I think. <laughs> we can hear the speakers a lot better now that the crowd mic's in a different position. That's fun, though. Fun with audio on a Saturday afternoon. And Lynchburg with a great threat here with Sean Pokerock hitting with one out. Runners at first and second. Pokey went after the first one into center field. Long run here for Nate Prince. He'll make the grab and fire it in quickly. So a one pitch at bat there will help Thomas Burgess out. Does bring up the top of the order. Brandon Garcia struck out looking in his first at bat. Brandon Garcia's got six multi-hit games this season. And Brandon Garcia has four straight multi-hit games. So he's one of the guys that has been part of the offensive production since he stepped foot on campus here on Lakeside Drive. But in these last four games, Hollywood starting to heat up a little bit, showing the star that he is. He'll take ball one, 1-0 one -oh count. O'Donovan at second, not elite speed. Eddie Gimble runs a bit better at first. Brandon Garcia does have that elite speed. Second on the team in stolen bases to O'Kelly McWilliams. Strike one, 1-1 one -one count. Brandon Garcia confirming with the umpire that that's the, the top of the zone. It's a 2-0 Roanoke lead. Still very early on a doubleheader day. It's a marathon kind of a day when you get these nine-inning doubleheaders. Brandon Garcia was well out in front of a breaking ball, and that is foul. 1-2 count. That went in the direction of the Roanoke dugout. I think everybody's okay over there. See what Bird just goes with? With a one-two count. Seems like it's just been fastball breaking ball for Burgess. Don't, don't know that I've seen a lot of change-ups, although honestly, that might have been one right there. Garcia under it. High sky, big sun, no clouds, but the pop-up is secured, and the inning will end. Lynchburg leaves two on again, one in scoring position, and we'll move to the top of the third inning with Roanoke leading 2-0. I'm walking around over on the crowd side. I always hear someone yelling, hey, Nat, take our picture. Hey, Nat, get this or something. Or, hey, Nat, you got that shot? Like, <laughs> um, so I'm always like trying to photograph the crowds and my friends calling my name. I think sports at Lynchburg unifies us as a whole, no matter what background we come from, what differences we have, and what experience we've experienced through our lives. It brings us all together, and we have one goal, which is to win. It is the second weekend of conference play here. Roanoke comes in at 2-0 and in ODAC play. Lynchburg 1-1 one and one after the split with Bridgewater. Other games of note today, 
We'll just tell you all of them in the conference. Here's a ground ball right side. PFP play. Hyatt comes off and flips to Arrington, who steps on the bag with his right foot to get the out. Uh, we'll hold the thought about conference play here and just tell you what that term PFP means. Pitcher's fielding practice is the term. And so that's in uh, in practice. You're going to run those plays there. You're going to rep that play over and over where the first baseman has to come off and the pitcher is covering. And there's there's definitely some skill and some things that your young pitchers won't do on that coverage. And the first baseman, that, it's not always an easy play for the first baseman as well, even though it looks like just a simple soft toss. You're trying to hit a target on the move. And then sometimes the second baseman and the catcher can be involved in those plays as well. So the PFP play, and a lot of times – when that play is made, that's what the other pitchers and players will yell out of the dugout. They'll just yell out PFP because you work on that over and over. And sometimes that can be another one for a young ball player to really get focused and put energy into the PFP. But it definitely matters. It matters a lot when you screw those plays up. It's one of those that you take for granted, but they're, they actually can be pretty difficult. Watch out. Wesley Arrington with one that was up the ladder on Johnny Wall moved out of the way. Or excuse me, Dylan Bonson. I'm sorry. Dylan Bonson is the hitter with a one-two count. Check swing. Did he go? He did not. And now the count is two and two. Yes, yeah, so Corey Coogan led off with that ball to the first baseman. Coogan actually was at bat when Prince got picked off in the top of the second. So we are in the top of the third. Man, there's that two-seam heater with the ride that is so tough to hit. Bonson laid off. Full count. Johnny Wall is on deck. Wall had the hustle double in his first at bat. Here's the pitch from Arrington. Yeah, got him swinging there. Third strikeout of the game. He's gotten bonds and on the punch outs twice. And we have two outs in the third inning. So elsewhere around the ODAC today, we have to put that on pause, but it's Shenandoah at Guilford. Randolph Macon is in Lexing Lexington taking on Washington and Lee. Bridgewater down in Danville with a double dip against Avert. Virginia Wesleyan battling EMU. And Hampton Sydney is at Ferrum. So that's the rest of the conference slate today. Those are all double headers. And we'll get our first single conference games this week. Lynchburg travels to Virginia Wesleyan on Wednesday. That one fouled straight down by Johnny Wall. 161 hits in his outstanding career. Career average coming into the game was at 353. He's over 375 on the season now with the first hit in the first inning. There's the fastball running in on Wall. Dodges it for ball two. There are two outs. Lynchburg will have two, three, four due up in their half of the third inning. Hornets still looking for their first runs, trailing 2-0. 3-1 count for Wesley Arrington facing Johnny Wall. Arrington set at the waist. Fastball missed upstairs. Got a hold there from Poker Rock. It must have been now close, catcher, but it was ball four. First Shibani. walk that Arrington has issued brings up Tucker Shivani. Shivani is one for one in this game. He's hitting over 354 on the season. Meat of the order is pretty good for Roanoke. And really you have, again, some nice balance. Wall's a senior. Giovanni's a junior. Coogan is a junior. Then you got freshmen like Bonzen, Prince, Friels, Mosher, and Giordano, who was on deck. Four freshmen in the starting lineup go along with a couple sophomores in there as well for Roanoke. They're a team like Lynchburg that had some talent move on to the Division I level. Some of their outstanding pitching staff is now wearing a different uniform this season. Roanoke is a team that has always given Lynchburg trouble. Split last year. Lynchburg won game one up in Salem and then lost game two, three to one. Roanoke actually last season was the only team to hold Lynchburg to one run or less. Lynchburg scored multiple runs, I think, in every other game. 
Arrington misses low and away with that breaking ball, and now it's a 2-1 count with two outs. Roanoke, if you think back to two years ago, in the 2022 season actually eliminated Lynchburg in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference Tournament. Beat them twice there. Swing and a miss from Arrington on a ball upstairs. But yeah, back in 2022, Maroons won three of four that season. Split the regular season and then beat Lynchburg twice in ODAC, ODAC, ODAC tournament play. Excuse me. Arrington will throw over again. Nice job by Hyatt to secure that one. Had to dance over Wall as he was sliding back. So add all that up, and it can be difficult. But if you add all that up, Lynchburg is another great move from Arrington. Man, the pickoff move is elite. In addition to the things that he does, just carving up the batters, Wesley Arrington can really shut down a running game. He snap throws, quick turn. 2-2 two -two count with two outs. Arrington will throw over again. But yeah, in the last two seasons, if you add it all up, Lynchburg is just two and four against Roanoke. One of the teams, one of the rare teams that has had Lynchburg's number in the last couple years. Not many others can say that. Fly ball, center field. O'Kelly McWilliams is measuring it, blocking out the sun with his glove, and he will make the grab for the final out of the inning. Roanoke still on top, 2-0 here at the University of Lynchburg. A single thread is unique, like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences, embrace each other, and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms. A new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible. The true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. And we can achieve so much more when we are all as one. The leadoff hitter in the bottom of the third for Lynchburg is O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth IV. Fifth year transfer. O'Kelly McWilliams is part of this recent offensive explosion as well. He has hit safely in seven of his last eight. And O'Kelly McWilliams is another guy that will take the walks. He's been hit by a few pitches this year. He has reached safely in 14 of 15 this season. O'Kelly McWilliams is the stolen base leader for Lynchburg. 0-2 count on IV. Fastball just missed. Thomas Burgess, the sophomore, still seeming lively and sharp on the mound. He did walk two in the last inning. Good cut right here by O'Kelly McWilliams. This is going to drive Prince back, but he makes the grab on the run. Nice job by the center fielder, Nate Prince, to really cover a lot of ground and make a pretty good grab. So McWilliams will have to wait for his first hit. It's Ben Jones. Ben Jones got the first hit of the game on the Lynchburg side. One for one right now. Jones takes ball one. 1-0 one -oh count. Look like the breaking ball again from Thomas Burgess, the sophomore. Ben Jones got the bat off his shoulder, didn't pull the trigger. And now it's a 1-1 one -one count. 
Eric Hyatt waits on deck. He also followed up Ben Jones' first hit with a base knock of his own. Ben Jones will lay off that one, and now it's a 1-2 count. Sunny skies. It's probably mid-60s now. I think it's gone up just a few degrees since when we started. Great day to play baseball. Tough sky, though. Here's a pop-up into that tough sky. You see all the players holding the glove up, trying to shield their eyes from that bright sun. Catch is made, out number two. That was the third baseman, Hayden Giordano. They called off the shortstop to make that grab. Lynchburg, all, all air outs so far. No ground ball outs just yet for Lynchburg. And we have mentioned in previous games, if you are a frequent viewer or listener, well, hold that thought. Lynchburg's kind of going to probably make another air out here as Eric Hyatt swings at the first but gets under it. Shortstop Johnny Walsh struggled just a little bit, but he pulled it in, and the inning is over. Three up, three down there. First time Lynchburg has been retired in order. Let's see if Roanoke can use some of that momentum as we move to the top of the fourth inning. Hayden Giordano. Hayden Giordano leads it off for Roanoke in the top of the fourth inning. Maroon still leading 2-0. It is 5-6-7 due up in this half for Roanoke. Lynchburg will have 5-6-7 of their own stepping to the dish in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Wes Arrington still doing his thing. He struck out three, walked one. Surrendered three base hits. Roanoke's offense has been very, very efficient, though. Particularly with runners in scoring position. Here's a ground ball up the middle. Six hopper will get through, and that is base hit number four of the game for Roanoke. Hunter Von Zillowitz, the DH. Oh, Kyle Mosher, I'm sorry. I screwed up the lineup again. No, no, it is. Isn't it Hunter Von Zelowitz due up here? Or isn't he in the batter's box right now? Number 12. We've got it together now. And pretty soon we won't be able to use the early season excuse anymore here. We're 16 games into a 40-game campaign. 40-game regular season anyway. But it is Hunter Von Zelowitz. He got his second hit of the season in his first at bat of this game. Right-handed hitting DH with a man on first, swing and miss. Good hack there. Sophomore, another one of those young guys in the mix here for Roanoke. Getting some signs from head coach Zach Ulrich in his fourth season. Maroons beat EMU 8-2 and 12-3 last weekend. They are 2-1 and one in conference play. They did lose to Maryville in a non-conference game 7-3. Fun fact about Roanoke's schedule. They have played Maryville three times this season in three different locations, which seems maybe slightly odd. I don't know. In a 40-game baseball season, you got to find something to talk about, right? So that will fall under that category of interesting things. Roanoke has played Maryville in three different locations. The most recent game was down in Maryville, Tennessee, which is uh, swing and miss here for Hunter Von Zelowitz. Strikeout, that's out number one of the inning. But you know I love the, the geography there. Maryville, Tennessee is not too long of a trip. 
just stay on 81 and go past Bristol and down there, uh, not quite to Gatlinburg and all that stuff, but, but in the neighborhood anyway, we'll say. Kyle Mosher, the second baseman, is up. Mosher with two hits on the year. Excuse me, just the one hit on the year for Kyle Mosher. That was the home run. He is a freshman, Kyle Mosher. Just missed there from Wesley Arrington. I, I do think Arrington's got the zone back. He has walked one. We saw a couple wayward pitches there from Wes Arrington. But I think for the most part, he's around the plate getting what he wants. Here's a ball sent into center field. Three steps back for O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth. And then he'll put the foot on the ground and make the grab for out number two. Caden Friels is the first baseman who struck out in his first at bat. Hitting eighth in the lineup here today for Roanoke in game one. And now at bat with a runner on first. Caden Friels is from Coral Springs, Florida. And on the season, Caden Friels is two for eight. Make that two for nine after his strikeout in his first at bat. He has driven in one this year. It looks like it's going to be just start number two for Caden Friels. Started way back on February 17th, but he's at first base today in game one for Roanoke. Caden Friels, 2-0 count for Wesley Arrington, working against Friels. No activity in the Lynchburg bullpen as of yet. And I don't think we've seen anybody head down to the Roanoke pen, although they've already got some folks down there. This ball will get by Sean Pokerock. And now there is a runner in scoring position for the Maroons. Roanoke has gotten two in scoring position so far today, and they have both come around to score. That was one in the first and one in the second. So back to the efficiency for the Maroons. Strike one for Wesley Arrington, just pounding the inner half right there with a good hard fastball. 3-1, two outs. Nine-hole man Nate Prince waits on deck. He's one for one. Drove in one of those runs. Arrington went with the breaking ball that time and got a swing and miss from Friels. Lynchburg dugout coming alive. Trying to urge on Wesley Arrington. Defense straight away in the infield and the outfield. Ooh, fastball went in, nearly handcuffed him, but it is ball four. Second walk of the game for Arrington. He's walked both his batters this time through the lineup. Johnny Wall got the free pass last inning, and now Caden Friels. Two on with two outs in the top of the fourth. This is Nate Prince. He slashed a breaking ball through the five hole in his last at bat for an RBI single. 0-1 count as Wesley Arrington, the sheriff, gets ahead. First baseman Eric Hone, Eric Hyatt, excuse me, set up behind the runner at first. Rest of the Lynchburg defense is normal depth, outfield, average slightly to pull. 0-2 count on Nate Prince, poker rock. Away target. Arrington got it there, skipped in. Good stop by Pokey to keep that one off the back wall and leave the runners at first and second. Madden, Collins, and O'Donovan do up for Lynchburg in their half of the fourth inning. Here's the leg kick from Arrington in the pitch. Bouncing ball up the middle. Garcia on the run, picks it up, arm fakes, and now he's going to go home. Excellent play there by Brandon Garcia. Let's see if Lynchburg can get the out. Over to Collins. Collins is going to try to run him down. He does, just puts the leather on the back there for the final out. So that was really impressive from Brandon Garcia. And for the casual baseball fan, you may not have even seen what happened. It was a long run on the batted ball. Garcia did not think he could get Prince at first base, so he just did the old arm fake. The runner was rounding third, heading for home. Garcia knew that in the back of his mind when he did use that fake. And then they end up getting the run down for the final out. Let's see if Lynchburg can get some momentum off of that. Hornets trail by two here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. 
The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. The right fielder, Quinn Madden, leads it off for Lynchburg in the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's talk about Lynchburg swinging the bat. They have not made any ground ball outs as of yet. They've all either been pop-ups or fly balls. Two strikeouts in there as well. Garcia and McWilliams struck out to open the game. Burgess hasn't struck anybody out since then. But that tells you a little bit about his pitching. Seems to be hard to square up and or hit on the ground. And maybe it tells you something about Lynchburg's hitting plan right now. We said the Hornets have 11 home runs in their last five games. Quinn Madden's going to belt this one. What a grab in left field. That was Corey Coogan laying out to take a sure double away. Coogan full horizontal there and throwing the glove out at the last moment to snatch that out of the sky. Got a feel for Quinn Madden a little bit. You'll note that that ball was hit hard, but it is the first out of the inning, and it's another air out. It's not a, it's not a ground ball out. Gavin Collins will take strike one. But Lynchburg, in, in their last five, again, they have 11 home runs and 10 doubles. The on-base percentage is 500. The batting average is 382. That's all coming in to this game. That Those numbers don't factor into anything that's happened here in this one. But I think they are getting the ball elevated a bit more from an offensive perspective. That ball just barely clipped Gavin Collins. I think it was one that actually got all three guys around the plate there. I think it deflected off of Gavin Collins, then briefly hit the catcher's mitt and then hit our umpire in the left shoulder or bicep. Hit by pitch, that is base runner number five for Lynchburg. Gavin Collins has been hit five times this season. Creeping up that leaderboard, he is second all time in hit by pitch. Riley O'Donovan, the designated hitter, now with one out. Check swing, yeah, probably did go around, might have been a strike anyway. Good pitch from Burgess. O'Donovan walked in his first plate appearance. Eddie Gimble is on deck. He also got the free pass. Burgess ready with an 0-1 count. Collins has decent speed. Hasn't run much this season, but is still a threat to move over there. Can't completely leave him alone if you're Roanoke's defense. 0-2 count, O'Reilly O'Donovan. One out. They will throw over and keep Gavin Collins close. He's back on a slide safely. Maroons will have the leadoff hitter up. It's Corey Coogan. He's played a great left field, including the most recent diving catch. Breaking ball away. Collins did, or excuse me, O'Donovan did get the check swing there, but held up not even any appeal that time for Roanoke. 1-2. O'Donovan's ready. Hold from Burgess, now the delivery. Riley O'Donovan just rips that one into the left center gap. That's gonna be down for a double. Let's see if Collins tries to score. Oh yeah, turn and burn time around third. They're not gonna get Gavin Collins at home and Lynchburg is on the board. Riley O'Donovan rocking one into the left center gap. It is the first extra base hit for Lynchburg. Hit number three of the game. Maybe this Hornets offense is ready to sting here in the bottom of the fourth. 2-1 Roanoke lead. Eddie Gimble walked in his first plate appearance. Sean Pokorak is on deck for Lynchburg, and then it will be the top of the order. 
from the Roanoke perspective, you don't want to panic by any means. But as a baseball fan, you know this, this could be a key moment here. Still feels early in the bottom of the fourth, but this could be really key, especially if Lynchburg could get top of the order up here with runners on base in the fourth inning. Feel pretty good about your chances. Don't mind your chances with a guy like Eddie Gimble and then Sean Pokorak on deck either. One out. And you think about it as a strike is taken by Eddie Gimble. If you think about it, Lynchburg's actually hit two balls really hard this inning. So it's a diving grab to get Quinn Madden out. And then Riley O'Donovan just hit it where nobody could get to. It's a 1-1 one, one count with one out. I think Lynchburg's offense is starting to heat up. Eddie Gimble out front on that. Here comes another one of those PFP plays. Burgess does get over and tap the top of the bag for out number two. Sean Pokerock flied out to center in his first at bat. Pokey comes into the game hitting 143. He was one of those postseason heroes last year. Eight, hit, eight hits in postseason play for Sean Pokerock, including, including three to start the fun in Cedar Rapids, Iowa against Wisconsin Lacrosse. A three hit day for Pokey there. Get things going in Iowa. Fastball, outer third, strike one. Sean Pokorock this season has one home run. This is start number eight. He's driven in three. An RBI here would tie the game. This ball is lasered into left field and another diving grab. My goodness, tip your cap to Corey Coogan. He's taken two hits away just in this inning. He has been outstanding previously, and here he is just stealing the show out there in left field. Corey Coogan with a diving grab to limit the damage for Roanoke. Lynchburg gets on the board. They cut the lead in half. It's 2-1 Maroons through four complete at Fox Field. I was looking for a school that could provide me with the athletics, academics to pursue my career, a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique. They, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate. The left fielder, the star of the show right now for Roanoke is Corey Coogan. Two diving grabs to take two hits away in the last inning. And it, and it truly was diving catches that robbed base hits and, and really robbed two doubles there for Lynchburg. The first was Quinn Madden. The last one was Sean Pokorot. That saved a run as well because Lynchburg ends up leaving one stranded in scoring position. Lynchburg does score one, though. Gavin Collins hit by a pitch, and then Riley O'Donovan drives him in with the double in the left center gap. So think about that offensively for Lynchburg. Exit velocity in that inning was really great. They, th they hit three balls right on the nose, and the left fielder, Corey Coogan, who's in the batter's box right now, steals two hits. One falls for a double. That's Riley O'Donovan. And I think Lynchburg's hitting approach is very sound. They're ready to continue to hit balls hard. You know, sometimes you do have to hit them where, where they ain't. Case in point right there. Corey Coogan didn't get a lot of that one. 
but he got it in a direction that Brandon Garcia could not get to. And Corey Coogan is on for the first time today. That's a base hit. Hit number five for the Maroons. Roanoke has really done a nice job working that middle. It has been a lot of those, hate to call them seeing eye singles. I feel like that might take something away from Roanoke, but they have been four, five, six, seven hoppers that have gotten through the middle of the field. But that's sound hitting as well. Use the middle, start in the middle anyway, and then adjust from there. If you think back to Nate Prince, he had his single through the left side of the diamond. I think other than that, all the hits really have gone gap to gap up the middle for Roanoke. So credit them. Sound approach. And, and each guy you know, has their own things that they're going to look for and to try to do. Sometimes things can happen by accident. Sometimes you can hit a ball up the middle when you're not trying to. This ball's fouled away. But yeah, hit, hitting is so difficult. One, one against nine, I always say, with hitting. They got nine defenders out there. Eight and a half, maybe, if you don't want to count the catcher. But it's really difficult to find space for that ball sometimes. And then other times, you can just tap it, and all of a sudden, it's down on some green grass somewhere. And then you have days like Lynchburg, where you hit line drives right at people, and then even that last inning, those line drives weren't exactly right at the left fielder, Coogan. He just made some really good plays. On the move out there in left field. Very impressive. Two strike count here for Dylan Bonzen, the freshman from Toronto, Canada, has struck out twice. Trying to avoid going down a third time. Uh-oh, Arrington's got another one picked off. Lynchburg will have to complete a rundown to get the out. Coogan alive so far. Brandon Garcia dove back to get him. Yes, he is out. Garcia held it and held it and held it. And I think Coogan was waiting for the release to change directions. Then when he finally saw how close he was to first base, he just tried to dive back. But Garcia's dive touched him before he could get to safety. That's actually pretty sound rundown fundamentals there because you want to throw a base ahead and then try to run the guy back as far as you can. You don't want to run him to the base ahead. Look at that. Lynchburg has two quick outs now after the pickoff and then another strikeout from Dylan Bonzen. Bonzen's gone down three times via the K today. This is Johnny Wall. Johnny Wall has not been retired yet today. A hustle double and a walk. Arrington's picked off two. So that's one thing as a pitcher. You got to be able to do a little bit of anyway. You got to be able to keep runners somewhat close, limit the running game. But if you then add as Wall will not be retired, instead he'll take one in the rib cage, it looked like. But as a pitcher, Giving your catcher a chance is just, just a bare minimum. you got to slow down the runners at minimum. And then if you're like Wesley Arrington, you can add an elite pickoff move in the mix and maybe completely shut down a running game or pick up some outs like that. He's got another runner on. That's Johnny Wall. The shortstop leads off at first after the hit by pitch. There is two outs. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Lynchburg will have the leadoff coming up in their half of the fifth inning. Garcia, McWilliams, and Jones. Game two starter for Lynchburg, projected to be Nick Matfield. Not sure who we're going to see for Roanoke. We can scour their stats and maybe look at their opening weekend event against EMU. Try to learn a little bit more about their pitching scheme. Roanoke is 2-0 and in conference play. Lynchburg 1-1. One one. Arrington went in with a hard two-seamer again. Don't know how much you can see on the camera, but that two-seamer just has that run and that ride. Starts in one place and ends up in another. It's got the velocity as well. Two strikes now on Tucker Schiavone. He's one for two. Catcher for Roanoke. Hitting with a 1-2 count and two away here in the top of the fifth inning. Roanoke leads 2-1. to one. 
There's a pitch. There's that, there's that one that's wide left from Arrington. Seen that a couple times. Nice scramble there by Sean Pokerot to get leather on it. 2-2 two -two with two outs in a 2-1 ball game. Arrington lifts the leg and fires. That one fouled back. We'll try it again. Roanoke lost on Tuesday to Maryville, but they've won four out of five. Lynchburg has won three in a row, five of their last six. Road wins this week against Pfeiffer and Greensboro. Really haven't talked about them a whole lot. That offensive explosion against Pfeiffer was a thing to behold. Wesley Arrington pulls the string, gets the punch out. He's pumped. Six Ks for Wesley Arrington. He'll strand another Roanoke runner on first. And let's see if Lynchburg can tie it up or take the lead in the bottom of the fifth. A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It doesn't matter how long ago you had your professor, they still remember you and they remember all of the hard work that you put in. They're always there for you, and they always want to do the best that they can to help you succeed. Here, you learn how to love one another regardless of what's going on or what you believe. You leave here better than what you came in. It's what the school's really good at doing. Leadoff man, shortstop, Brandon Garcia will start the party in the bottom of the fifth for Lynchburg. One run on three hits. Hornets have left five on, three in scoring position. Roanoke has two runs on six hits. They've left four stranded in this game. Brandon Garcia pulls one right side. Second baseman stumbles but gathers in time to make the out. Nice job over there by Kyle Mosher, moving to his glove side to take a potential hit away. First pitch swing in there for Brandon Garcia. And this will bring up IV, O'Kelly McWilliams. He was in high spirits before the game. Just walked by him down there in the batting cage. Seemed to be enjoying himself, seemed to be looking forward to the doubleheader today. Lynchburg trailing two to one. The offensive explosion against Pfeiffer. Hold your thoughts there as O'Kelly McWilliams will just lace one into right center field. There's a base hit for IV and that's Lynchburg's fourth hit of the ball game. Unofficial numbers as always. Follow along with the official stats at lynchburgsports.com. Now we'll get to talk about O'Kelly McWilliams' speed over there at first base. He is the stolen base leader for Lynchburg, 16 of 20 this season. But that win against Pfeiffer on Wednesday, 23 to 1, and Lynchburg scored 15 in the second inning. And the Hornets just could not get out for a while. And, and really, it was a, a weekend to remember, not a weekend, a Tuesday and a Wednesday, actually, to remember for Lynchburg because they scored 12 against Greensboro in seven innings. So it ends up being, as Ivy does not waste long, he'll slide headfirst into second safe. Stolen base there. Stolen base number 17 for O'Kelly McWilliams this season. But Lynchburg, think about that. In, in two days, in a basically a 24-hour stretch, they scored 35 runs in 14 innings. 35 runs in 14 innings. Lynchburg has scored 12 or more runs in their last three straight games because they scored... 12 
in game two against Bridgewater on Sunday of last week. Ben Jones will lean into one, but it's foul. Sent it down the right field line, but could not keep it between the lines. Lynchburg scored 13 in game two of the doubleheader against Wittenberg. That was a seven-inning game as well. So this Lynchburg offense is very, very capable of putting up some massive numbers. They've scored double-digit runs now five times this season, and most of those have come in the last two weeks. Ben Jones will really get into this one, but that's even more foul than the last. Hornets scored double-digit runs 19 times last year, over the 10-run mark 19 times last season. They've done it five times this year, but four in their last six, basically. Mm, good spot there from Thomas Burgess. We're talking about scoring runs and all kinds of other things. Thomas Burgess is still on the bump working hard for Roanoke. Good take from Ben Jones in another zone. Another two-strike delivery coming up. Similar result that we have been having. Ben Jones just out in front pulling it foul. Ben Jones is one for two. Popped out to the left side in his last at bat. Single in his first. Ben Jones, an on-base machine. Another foul ball. He's a hitting machine, but boy, when you add up all the walks that Ben Jones takes, it's a pretty impressive on-base percentage. 19 base on balls this season for Benny Bombs. He has reached base in 13 of 15 games this year. He's taken walks in 13 games this year. Umpire wants time. Ben Jones, I think, wanted time first, and the umpire gave it to him. Thomas Burgess, the sophomore, he's impressed, though. He just threw out all the offensive numbers for Lynchburg, so to keep this Hornet squad at just one run through four and a half innings, should get some high marks there on the mound. Ben Jones will dodge out of the way of that one. The long at bat continues with one out. A speedster, O'Kelly McWilliams, is on second base. Eric Hyatt on deck. Roanoke defense does have Ben Jones played to pull and deep. Another foul ball. Great at bat here from Ben Jones. We're not into double digit pitches yet, but I think it's close. Eight pitches. This will be delivery number nine for Thomas Burgess. Two one ball game. Pick attempt coming there on O'Kelly McWilliams. That's pretty savvy from Roanoke. A long at bat. Sometimes the last thing you think about in a bat like this is running a pick play. Kind of smart, actually, and McWilliams was ready for it on his end. Here it is, ninth pitch, and it is ball four. Ben Jones will take walk number 20 on the season through 15 games. So that math is pretty easy. Ben Jones is getting on a lot. Wow. I know that wasn't the actual mathematical equation there, but it just kind of boggles the mind. A lot of that is his eye and his plate discipline. Some of it is the respect that opponents have for his power. He'd rather give Ben Jones one base than multiple or four. Breaking ball to Eric Hyatt, that's a strike. He hits with one out. Runners on first and second. Good speed at both bases. Elite speed, A plus at second. Ben Jones is uh, not bad himself though. We'll give him an A minus on the wheels. He might not like that if he watches the broadcast, though. We'll just bump that up to a straight up A, Ben. 2-1 count, or excuse me, it's an 0-2 count. It's a 2-1 ball game. When Eric Hyatt gets on, we're, we're ditching the, uh, the grading scale for the speed. Hyatt runs better than people think, though. See if he can get on here. 0-2, he's going to have to work for it. Burgess checking the runner at second. Multiple looks there. McWilliams will take off. Both runners go. Sidearm throw by the catcher, but it's not in time, and it's a successful double steal for Lynchburg. O'Kelly McWilliams, two for two in this game. Give him 18 on the season. Wow. I said he had A-plus speed. Now it's two in scoring position for a proven run producer, Eric Hyatt. He's driven in 16 this season. Foul ball as Hyatt was ready for an inside pitch. Couldn't keep it between the lines, though. Eric Hyatt is one for two in the game. 
We'll get a check on Thomas Burgess's pitch count here soon. Sophomore has thrown a lot of pitches. 78 pitches for Thomas Burgess through four and a half. Hyatt stings one into center field. One run is in. Lynchburg has tied it. Ben Jones will round the bag. No play at home. And the Hornets have taken the lead. The proven run producer delivers again. Hyatt with RBI 17 and 18 on the season. Lynchburg takes the lead three to two. What a sequence right here for Lynchburg. Classic Hornet baseball, and you're going to get a mound visit for Thomas Burgess, who went 100 on Sunday against EMU. So we know he's got it in him to go more and throw more pitches, but looks like Burgess's afternoon will come to an end here. Eric Hyatt driving in, too, with a great swing of the bat. We'll pause and figure out the new arm in just a second here for the Roanoke Maroons, who have surrendered the lead in the bottom of the fifth. When creating a sustainable future, your choices matter, even your choice of a college. The University of Lynchburg is the first college in Virginia to go carbon ne neutral. Our dining hall is green restaurant certified. We compost all of our food waste and purchase our electricity from landfill gas. Now we're turning a hazardous lake into a thriving urban wetland. When you choose Lynchburg, you leave a smaller footprint while building a better tomorrow. <laughs> Lynchburg has taken the lead in the bottom of the fifth inning. Brandon Garcia grounded out to start the inning. It was actually a pretty well hit ball. O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth single into center. He stole second. Ben Jones walked. They stole second and third. And then Eric Hyatt, fifth hit of the game for Lynchburg, ends up being a two RBI single. Hyatt's driven in 20 now, and we will get to see that speed at first base from Eric Hyatt. We'll get to see Quinn Madden again who is swinging an outstanding bat. He roped a ball to left. That was a, one, of, one of many, <laughs> one of two diving grabs last inning from Corey Coogan to take Quinn Madden's hit away. Let's see if Madden can find some green grass here. New arm and a 2-0 count. It is Gardner Meeks coming at you from the sidearm there underneath. Almost a true submariner here. Gardner Meeks is on in relief of Thomas Burgess. Breaking ball that Madden does not like. It's ball three, 3-1 three, count now for a guy who can jump on any mistake. Quinn Madden has homered in three straight ball games. He has multi-hit games in his last four in a row. Here's the pitch. Madden wanted that. You could tell he was looking for distance on that swing. Now it's a full count with one out. Eric Hyde at first base. It'll be four and a third, three runs surrendered for Thomas Burgess. Thought the sophomore was pretty good. This Lynchburg offense is just starting to find another gear here in mid-March or continue the new gear that they have found in the last week or two. Quinn Madden's got a base hit. Smoke through the left side. 
Hyatt's elite speed will have to hold at second base. Back-to-back -back hits. Three in the inning right now for Lynchburg. Six total in the ball game. And it's Gavin Collins. Flew out to left, got hit by a pitch. Gavin Collins has been on a heater as of late, though. Five-game hitting streak. Two homers against Pfeiffer. A homer against Greensboro. So three in the last two games for Gavin Collins. See if the senior from Clifton, Virginia could keep it going. One out. We already know that Hyatt runs well at second, and so does Quinn Madden at first base. Power and speed. What a combo there for Madden. Meeks checks the runner. Good two-seam fastball that tails over the plate for a strike. 1-1 one, one is the count with one out. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. Roanoke scored... One in the first, one in the second, nothing since. Lynchburg got one in the fourth and two here so far in an inning that still seems to have a long way before it concludes. Gardner Meeks is a senior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. 5'9", 175 for Meeks on the season so far. He's 2-0 and with five appearances. This is game number six. ERA is very good at 1.38. He's given up just two earned runs this season. Struck out 12, walked four. You know why he gets the ball in a situation like this. Gets a strike there on Gavin Collins. The count is full with one out. Meeks has been really good in his career. He's actually never taken a loss in what will be appearance number 19 for Meeks. Gavin Collins will get a piece of a breaking ball. Meeks was a two-way guy last year. Hit 250 in a limited number of at-bats. But, yeah, pitching-wise, seems to be one of the key arms for Roanoke. Oh, got Gavin Collins looking. Tough coming from that different angle there. And when you compare that with some good breaking stuff and velocity on the fastball, well, you can see why Meeks is tough to hit. That's out number two of the inning. Strikeout number three of the game for Lynchburg. Riley O'Donovan, he is one for one with a double. He also walked. Two on right here for Riley O'Donovan with two outs. There was a frisbee breaking ball that slipped out of the hand of Meeks and didn't come across for a strike. One-0 -oh count. Riley O'Donovan. That breaking ball much better from Meeks. O'Donovan takes it, and now the count is even. At one ball and one strike, two outs. Hyatt at second, Madden at first for Lynchburg. Lynchburg leading three to two. O'Donovan flares this one to right. Right fielder misplayed it slightly off the jump, and that's down. That's a double for Riley O'Donovan. Hyatt is in. Madden will come around with no throw. Lynchburg has scored four in the inning. Another double for Riley O'Donovan. The slugging percentage is going to be through the roof for Riley. Seventh hit of the ball game for Lynchburg. Two doubles for Riley O'Donovan. The slugging percentage for the senior from Reston, Virginia, coming into the game was 636. That was one double and three homers. Now, Riley O'Donovan has just doubled his double total. I guess he's actually technically tripled it, really, because he's up to three now. Eddie Gimble, 704 is the slugging percentage. 714 is the slugging percentage right now for Riley O'Donovan. Breaking ball to Gimble, not in the zone. Lynchburg looking for more here in a four run fifth inning. Eddie Gimble could turn it into a five-run fifth. Breaking ball. Just missed Gimble and also not over the plate. Meeks seems to be given a steady diet of that breaking ball to Lynchburg. See what he comes back with here. Was the fastball. Gimble gets a lot of that to the shortstop. Long throw. Gimble beat that. And the baseball was not on target anyway. It's a base hit for Eddie Gimble. Now all of a sudden for Lynchburg, Brandon, they might bat around. Brandon Garcia might get a second chance here in the fifth inning. Garcia made the first out to start this inning. And then it was 
Single from McWilliams. Walk from Jones. Two RBI single from Hyatt. Quinn Madden single. Gavin Collins struck out looking. And then O'Donovan's double and Gimble's single. Gimble running on the pitch. They'll throw and try to get him. Feet first slide. He's safe. Boy, it was very close out there at second base. Roanoke with some notable disagreement there from the middle infield. The body language told the story. It's a good throw from the catcher. Two in scoring position now for Sean Pokerot. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Lynchburg, it is a five-hit inning. A five-hit inning. Garcia and Collins have made the only outs. Let's see if Pokerock can keep it going. Here's the pitch from Meeks. Pokerock off the end of the bat. Long run for Corey Coogan, but he will make the grab and end an inning where Lynchburg sent nine to the plate. They score five, and the Hornets now on top and in control through five complete at Fox Field. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person. Competing at a Division III level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Four in the bottom of the fifth for Lynchburg. Four run, four runs on five hits. They do leave two in scoring position. But it just felt like it was coming for Lynchburg. We talked about the approach was good. Plate discipline was there. They were hitting balls hard. Roanoke was making plays. Burgess, the starter, was throwing the ball well, but it just had that feeling that Lynchburg was close. And in that fifth inning, they break through. Five hits. McWilliams, Hyatt, Madden. O'Donovan and Gimble had him. O'Donovan with the double. Hyatt had the two RBI single. Ben Jones walked in there, as he so often does. And for Lynchburg, they go from beginning the inning down two to one to really being in control with Wesley Arrington. Maybe not cruising, but looking sharp on the mound. And Lynchburg does have some arms freshening up in the bullpen. We are in the sixth inning. We're past the halfway point in game one of our doubleheader. How about another strikeout for Wes Arrington? Back-to-back -back punch outs for the Sheriff. He's up to seven. He struck out Hunter Von Zelowitz once. Von Zelowitz did single in his first at bat. So one for two on the day so far for Von Zelowitz. Lynchburg 10-5 and five on the year. One and one in ODAC play. Rowan Oak. Six and nine, but two and oh. Slight bobble from Hyatt. He will have time to shuffle it over to Arrington on another PFP play. Good job by Eric Hyatt to stay with it. And, and despite the bobble, it stayed close enough that he really didn't even have to move his feet. He could just reach down and pick it up. So that's savvy infield play, especially for a first baseman. Now, a, a shortstop or a third baseman, they can't really think that way they got to be a little bit better with the hands, a little bit cleaner with the catch on those weird hops. 
But Hyatt, as a first baseman, he knows, hey, I've got a little extra time. Let me just make sure I square this one up, keep it in front. Good hack right here by Mosher. There's Brandon Garcia. Strong throw across the dirt for the third out of the inning. It's three up, three down. A quick one for the Sheriff. And Lynchburg might be looking for more in the bottom of the sixth inning. in the dream. USA, Mexico. That was so exciting. Lynchburg is all about you, your ideas, and your goals. We've got one professor for every 10 students, so you can get all the support you Brandon Garcia leads off another inning. This will be the third inning that Brandon Garcia has led off. One, five, and six. Hollywood has started to frame the bottom half of the inning anyway for Lynchburg. And the Hornets lead five to one. Donuts in one, two, and three. Lynchburg got one in the fourth and four in the fifth inning. Roanoke got their runs, single shots in innings one and two. Wesley Arrington has seemingly got better as the game has gone on. And it was a five-pitch inning in the top of the sixth for Wes Arrington. Roanoke was swinging early. Arrington has that game where he can pitch to contact, especially with the movement on his two-seamer. And Wesley Arrington did just that. It's the only inning where Roanoke has gone down in order, three up, three down. Lynchburg has had one of those. That happened in the third inning. Brandon Garcia will take a strike. Count should be full. IV. O'Kelly McWilliams is on deck. We'll run down the nickname again for folks that don't know. Garcia hacks at this one. Pulls the second baseman up the middle slightly, but another out. Brandon Garcia yet to find a hit in game one today. Brandon Garcia, four straight games with multiple hits. It's going to be tough to keep that alive, but if Lynchburg's offense can continue to bang, Brandon Garcia might have a couple more swings at it. O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth IV is what the Roman numerals look like for the four. That's where the nickname comes from, and the great play from the third baseman, Hayden Giordano, will get O'Kelly McWilliams. Tried the bunt attempt. Giordano was ready for it on the move, throwing on the run to retire IV for the second out. Ben Jones is one for two with a single and a walk. He popped up to the left side, the only out he has made today. Ben Jones, what a season last year as a freshman. And he's following it up with a really good sophomore year. The average right now is not great for Ben Jones, but that's about the only thing that you could dislike about what Benny Bombs has done this year. Hard ground ball to the second baseman. This will be a quick inning for Lynchburg. Three up, three down there for the reliever Gardner Meeks. And we'll move to the seventh. That's about as short of a sixth inning as you're ever going to have in baseball right there. We're enjoying it, and we hope you are too. You're watching Hornets baseball on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Look what you're missing.
a quick sixth inning for both squads. It was three up, three down for both teams there in the sixth. And we're into the top of the seventh. It's the eight hole hitter, freshman Caden Friels. 0 for 1 with a walk in this game. Two hits on the season for Friels. Swings and misses at the delivery there from Wesley Arrington, who is over 90 pitches. Over 90 pitches for Wes. Off the end of the bat, Ben Jones will get around it, scoop and throw for the first out of the inning. So make it now five retired in a row for Wes Arrington. He hit Johnny Wall, so he has retired six of the last seven successfully. Three strikeouts this time of the order, this time through the order for Wes. Arrington's got seven on the game. This is Nate Prince, who singled in his first at bat, and then we debated if he had a single or a fielder's choice in his second at bat. That was the play where Prince hit the slow roller to Brandon Garcia, the shortstop. Hollywood came on, fielded, and then made an arm fake to first, and then turned and ended up getting an out via the rundown. It's a 6-2-5. Here's another slow roller up the middle. Garcia's got a hustle. He'll get to it. Flips it across the diamond for the second out of the inning. So make it six in a row retired for Wes Arrington. Sometimes when a pitcher is late in the game, deep into the pitch count, 90 plus pitches for Wes Arrington, sometimes there's some value in taking a pitch and making him work and being more patient at the plate. Roanoke seems to be doing the opposite. Free swinging. I will say the other side of the coin is you've been seeing this guy for 100 pitches almost. You should know what he's got. It's everybody's third time through the lineup, and now Corey Coogan's fourth time. Coogan is one for three. Coogan's got high value out there in left field, though. Two diving plays, a couple other great running grabs earlier in the game. But Corey Coogan has showcased elite defense in left field. But just back to the hitting plan, I mean, you should know what the guy's got, so you don't want to handcuff your hitters, make them take a pitch, or make them take till they get two strikes, that kind of thing. You want, you want the hitter to have confidence. That's a fine line as a coach. How do you control your hitters? Or do you not control them at all? As Coogan will foul one away. I think most coaches would prefer to have some kind of a team concept plan. Maybe there is something to be said for just letting guys do their own thing. If each guy is an individual, then the other team can't get a team scouting report. Could still get the individual breakdown, but you don't, you don't just become too predictable as a team with everybody doing the same thing. So different schools of thought there, different ways to get it done. 3-1 count for Wes Arrington with two outs on the leadoff man, Corey Coogan. Coogan under this one. I think it's going to be three up, three down, two innings in a row. Quentin Madden fighting the sun, and the ball nearly popped out, but he held on. You could see the ball exposed at the top of the leather. Almost turned into a snow cone kind of grab after it hit the palm and then popped up, but it is an out, and it is three up, three down. For Wesley Arrington, the sheriff has pitched his team to a 5-1 lead through six and a half at Fox Field in Lynchburg. It's a 5-2 Lynchburg lead, a 5-2 lead for Lynchburg. Your current score, Roanoke scored one in the first, one in the second. Nothing since then is Wesley Arrington getting better and better. He has not surrendered a hit 
since the fifth inning. He has sat down seven straight. Wesley Arrington over the 100 pitch mark now, but I would not be surprised to see him come back out for the top of the eighth. Lynchburg, one run in the fourth inning, and then the big one was the four spot in the bottom of the fifth. It featured this man, number five, Eric Hyatt, with a two-run single. That gave Lynchburg the lead. They did not stop there. Hyatt came around to score. Eric Hyatt wants this hanging breaking ball, pumping it in the left field. Corey Coogan is there, though. More defense on display. My goodness, it's rare that a left fielder can put together a highlight reel. But Corey Coogan has done that today. He has been so solid for Roanoke. Corey Coogan. We need to get the, uh, get the GPS, get the technology, get some wearable technology on Corey Coogan to figure out how much ground he's covered on these outs to make these plays. You, you, could get into the, uh, you could get into the catch percentage and some of that stuff that they're doing with the new school analytics and technology. That would be interesting. I think by any metric, Corey Coogan is playing elite left field defense right now in a place where sometimes you just hide a guy out there. You hide one of your big bats out there in left field, but not Corey Coogan. He is very good. Quinn Madden slightly out front on this one. Let's see if it drops in. It will. Outfield had him played back, and certainly I think you would have to based on Quinn Madden's numbers this season. Madden has four home runs. He has three in his last three games. So you probably would be wise to have your outfielders played a little bit deeper. So Madden drops that one in. Two singles for Madden. Not the power he wanted, but his multiple hit streak will continue. Quinn Madden now has two or more hits in five straight games. Gavin Collins just blisters one to the right center gap. This is deep. Wall ball for Gavin Collins. One hop. Madden's going to turn around third. He will be in without a throw. How about Gavin Collins? scorching a double to the right center gap. Collins' first hit of the game. It will help him continue a hot streak. It's now a six-game hit streak for Gavin Collins. In his last six games, Gavin Collins now has three doubles and three home runs. So basically averaging an extra base hit per game right now for Gavin Collins. Lynchburg leading 6-2. to two. Riley O'Donovan will be looking for more. O'Donovan has two doubles in this game. The slugging percentage over 700 now for Riley O'Donovan. One out with Gavin Collins leading off at second. There's the Frisbee breaking ball from Gardner Meeks. Meeks is the second pitcher Roanoke has used. Came into the game after... The single from Eric Hyatt. So this is the second time through for Meek. Second time through the Lynchburg order. In fact, Quinn Madden and Gavin Collins were the first two hitters to have multiple looks at Gardner Meeks. 6-2 to two, Lynchburg leading. Gavin Collins leading off at second. Riley O'Donovan, two for two, two doubles and a walk. Here's the pitch. Low and away, that's a ball. Count is even at two balls and two strikes. Eddie Gimbel on deck. Eddie Gimbel's one for two with a single and a walk. Here comes the pitch to O'Donovan. Got him with that breaking ball. Kind of just stayed upstairs, which is sometimes what you don't want from your breaking ball or any off-speed pitch. But in this case, I think it actually helped Gardner Meeks as O'Donovan was expecting it to come down. It never did. And he ends up just kind of flailing at it with the swing. Here's Eddie Gimble, runner in scoring position with two outs. Breaking ball again from Meeks. He throws it a lot. Steady diet of that Frisbee curveball slash slider. That's what everybody calls the breaking ball from a side armor or a submarine guy. Frisbee. There it was again. Arm slot appeared to be a little bit higher that time from Meeks. Seems like sometimes he's got the true sidearm and then he actually takes it down another notch comes to, to the submarine. 1-1 one, one to Eddie Gimbel. There was a hard fastball that rode in. Caught the corner for strike two. Sean Pokorak on deck. He is hitless so far on the day. 
Frisbee came again, and it just did not break enough. The motion is supposed to look like the, the motion of a, of a Frisbee when you throw it. That's where the term comes from. Back to the shapes of those breaking balls. Everybody's got a slightly different one. Eddie Gimble hitting with two strikes. Went with the fastball, missed the plate. Now the count is full. 3-2 with two outs. Pokerock and Brandon Garcia are the only two Hornets without a hit in this ball game so far. That was very wide, not even close. Eddie Gimbel has drawn his second walk of the game. Lynchburg has 10 hits, six runs on 10 hits. Hornets have left seven on in this game, and five of those have been in scoring position. Here's Sean Pokerock. Let's see if he can break a, a slightly dry spell and give Lynchburg maybe their 11th hit of the game. Pokey still looking for his first. Fastball in the dirt, skipped once into the catcher's glove for ball one. Game one of two today, of course, conference play, doubleheader day. Mid-March. You really, you really can't say the old it's early in the season line anymore as a broadcaster or a, a coach or a player. We're not early in the season anymore as this is game 16 of 40. I guess if you really wanted to break down the semantics, you could say anything before halfway was early. But, you know, we're, we're a third of the way in. So I think the early season stuff is done. Frisbee came out of the right hand again from Meeks but did not hit the target. Sean Pokorok looking at the play card in his back pocket. There are runners on first and second. Two outs. Could be a running situation. Gavin Collins moves well. Mm. Bowtie pitch that came up and in on Pokey. And he'll head to first base. It'll be Brandon Garcia. Batting with the bases loaded. Hollywood still looking for his first hit today. Heck of a time to do it. He might be doing it off a new pitcher. Let's see if Meek stays out there. It was ball four on Sean Pokerot. We were wondering maybe if it hit him because it came awfully close, but no indication from the umpire. Just ball four. So it's uh, walk number five for Lynchburg as a team. Gimbel has taken two. Sean Pokerot one. Ben Jones one. Where's the other walk in there? Oh, Riley O'Donovan took a walk in his first plate appearance. All right, Brandon Garcia, time to bust out right here. You know he wants one. Garcia came coming into the game was hitting 286. And he does have four straight multi-hit games. So he really has been getting hot lately here in the last couple weeks. Last week anyway. Two games on Sunday against Bridgewater and then Tuesday and Wednesday for Lynchburg against Greensboro and Pfeiffer respectively. But it has been a good week so far for Brandon Garcia. Six multi-hit games on the season. He was the team leader in that multi-hit category last year. Garcia went down with the seven iron to try to fire one at the pin. But he does miss the green. And it's just a strike. Golf references. Brandon Garcia, big golfer. Big golf family. Can't wait to play golf with the Garcia family sometime soon. 0-2 count. Brandon Garcia is focused on baseball right now. Going to have to. Base is loaded. Ball in the dirt. Up. Oh, got underneath the catcher. Collins scampering home. He'll slide in feet first. May not have been necessary, but a run scores for Lynchburg. And now the lead has grown even more. 7-2. to two, The Hornet advantage. Runners on second and third. Still a great opportunity for Brandon Garcia. Garcia had 19 multi-hit games last year. And nine of those were three-hit games. Yet to have a four-hit game in his college career. You just know that's coming soon. His talent, his quality, he'll, he'll have a four-hit game eventually. Here's the pitch to Brandon Garcia. Up and out for ball two. Count is even at two and two with two outs. Sean Pokorock at second. Eddie Gimble at third for Lynchburg. Here's the pitch to Brandon Garcia. Yanks this one down the line foul. Brandon Garcia, Durham, North Carolina native. 
like his high school teammate Ben Jones. O'Kelly McWilliams is due up next. Jones would be after that. Oh, strikeout looking. Off-speed pitch that was low. That's how the inning will end, but Lynchburg is going to get more 7-2. to The Lynchburg lead through 7 complete on LHSN. Day. Jess and I are officially on a break. The couple hey, canoe no, has broken up. <laughs> it's not. How you feeling? Living the dream. Just canoeing. That's the Mexican side behind me. Um, the U.S. is that way. So far, we're all still alive. I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. We did it! Kind of! Two more runs for Lynchburg. Got them on two hits. There was a couple walks in there as well, and then the pass ball allowed Gavin Collins to score. Lynchburg leading 7-2. to Roanoke has not scored since the second inning. They do not have a hit since the fifth inning. It'll be freshman Dylan Bonzon leading off against the Sheriff. Wesley Arrington pitching into inning number eight. I believe that was delivery number 105 for Wesley Arrington. He's pitched around five Roanoke base hits. Excuse me. He's struck out seven. Wesley Arrington has issued two walks and hit one. He's picked off two runners as well. Lynchburg has had some nice defense. Bonzon will swing on this one, looping into left field. Eddie Gimble gave it a dive at Caroms off the glove into the tarp, still in play. Bonzon will hold it second after a double. Great effort there by Eddie Gimbel. We've seen the outstanding left field play of Corey Coogan. But this time, it's Eddie Gimbel trying to lay out and take a hit away, and he just can't quite get there. So there you go. Roanoke's first hit since the fifth inning. They've got a runner in scoring position and a good hitter up. Johnny Wall is one for one with a walk and a hit by a pitch. Nice low fastball for Wesley Arrington. Arrington will probably be over 110 pitches by the time this at bat is done. Swinging a foul ball from Johnny Wall, who hits over 375 now on the season, factoring in his double in inning number one. He scored the first run for Roanoke in this game. It is a 7-2 Lynchburg lead. Maroons have used just two pitchers. Gardner Meeks has surrendered some runs in relief for the Maroons, but I would argue he's actually done a decent job keeping a hot Lynchburg team somewhat at bay. Hornets have scored over 12, 12 or more in their last three straight games. That dates back to Sunday's game two of the doubleheader against Bridgewater. And Lynchburg in their last five games has been scoring a lot of runs. Over 12, 12 or more rather, four of the five. That includes the back end of the Wittenberg doubleheader, which was here at Fox Field a week and a half ago. Sean Pokorock got slightly shaken up on an, an attempt to block a ball in the dirt, so the umpire will give him some time. Runner Dylan Bonson did advance. And now the count is full to Johnny Wall. Here's the pitch from Arrington. Missed, that's ball four. Johnny Wall's nice day continues. One for one now with two walks and a hit by pitch. This will bring up the catcher, Tucker Schiavone. He is one for two with a strikeout. Runners at first and third for Lynchburg. 7-2 cushion. 
obviously that'll make you feel a lot better about this situation. Just don't want to bleed too many runs here to a good Roanoke team. We are in the top of the eighth inning. Don't want to give the Maroons any kind of momentum or anything. Arrington has missed the zone. Nobody warming up in the bullpen. I think any relief options have already done their throwing, and they're probably ready. Actually, now you do get a look maybe at Mason McDowell picking up a baseball in the pen there. Sean Pokerock will go have a chat with Wesley Arrington. Could be to buy a relief arm warming up some more time to get loose, or it could just be to talk about the situation. 1-0 count to nobody out. Runners on first and third. Hayden Giordano is on deck. He has a hit. It is in the game now for Roanoke. Six hits. They've been pretty well scattered around. Multiple hits in innings one and two for Roanoke. So it's not hard to figure out. They scored a, a run in each of those innings as well. One run in the first, one in the second. Nothing since then for the Maroons. Roanoke has left just four on base. Factor in a couple pickoffs in there. And they did lose a runner on the bases when Brandon Garcia made that pump fake and turned that into a 6-2-5 rundown to end an inning. Breaking ball misses. 2-1 count now. With nobody out. Runners at the corners here for Roanoke. They'll have to come back if they want to win game number seven on the season. There's that handcuffing Sheriff two-seam fastball, but it is just a ball. Nice job to lay off, not swing at it. It really starts middle of the plate and then just runs in under your hands. There it was again. Don't know how well you can see it from the camera angle, but it has nasty movement and the velocity to go with it. A lot of times a righty can get a changeup to move like that, but when you can get your two-seamer like that, that's that's the thing that, oh, watch out. This is a line drive laced into right field. Quinn Madden came on, almost looked like he wanted to come up, throw the runner out at either second or first, but it's just a clean base hit. Second of the inning for Roanoke, seventh of the game, and they have scored their third run of the game. Looks like maybe this is the end of the road for Wesley Arrington. Did a nice job, though, in seven-plus innings of work. We will see Mason McDowell coming on next. We'll catch our breath and tell you more about the new arm for Lynchburg and what Roanoke's going to send at him here. Nobody out. Runners on first and second in the top of the eighth. Still very much a ball game at Fox Field. in the dream USA Mexico that was so excited Mason McDowell is on for Lynchburg. The sophomore from Fishersville, Virginia, comes into the game with a one and one record, two saves in 10 plus innings of work. The earned run average is 4.22 right now for Mason McDowell. 
batters hitting just a measly 194 off the hard-throwing right-hander. He struck out 14 and walked seven. McDowell has pitched in some big games. And really the only time he's given up, you know, we'll say multiple hits in an appearance, was that, that game against York, the third game of the series. And that's been his only loss of the year so far. McDowell trying to figure out the footing on the mound here at Fox Field. It's another one for a pitcher. I, we ran down all the things pitchers have to worry about. You, you definitely worry about the mound. And when you come in late in the game, that's something a pitcher really has to worry about. And it's not always easy, especially at the college level, and, and take that down to high school and younger, because the mounds are not quite as good quality as you're going to have at the professional level. But even the pros will talk about sometimes it's hard to come in when there's a big hole where you want to land. You don't want to land in a deep hole, and you don't want to land at the edge of a hole. So sometimes you have to alter your delivery as McDowell walks Hunter Giordano. Bases are loaded now. Second walk of the inning for Rona. They've got two hits. No outs yet in the inning. But, yeah, the previous pitchers have created a hole in the landing area. So, as a pitcher, sometimes you have to alter your delivery and, and your lead leg stride to try to pitch around a hole. You can also obviously have holes up there at the rubber. And sometimes those are difficult to work around. A lot of pitchers do like to, so you see the right-handers will work to the first base side a lot so they can kind of swing out, not have to worry about the rubber on the windup or just kind of anchor themselves at the edge. Very few people pitch in the middle of the rubber, it seems like. Good breaking ball from McDowell, but that's a ball as well. Six straight have missed for Mason McDowell to come into the game. And I think he is having maybe some issues with a, with a hole in the mound up there. But, but you see, most pitchers are going to be on one side of the rubber or the other. You don't see many guys pitching in the middle of the rubber anymore, I feel like. And I'm sure there's going to be exceptions to that. A good, a good Twitter account would be to track where pitchers are at on the rubber in the big leagues because you could get that data. Oh, and then you could probably take it deeper and find out how much of an effect does it have. Here is a ball swung on, and that is fair. That is Hunter Von Zelowitz that has doubled. The ball has gone underneath the fence, out of play in left field. This should be just a, a stand-up double, and one of these runners I think is going to have to come back for Roanoke. The ball goes out of play, so, so it would fall under the ground rule double category. The ball has snuck under the fence or become lodged in the fence, perhaps. Coach Travis Beasley is going to go out and talk to the umpires. It would have been... A bases clearing double for Rona. Hunter Von Zelowitz. He's going to get a double regardless. The question is, will one of those runners have to come back or not? Home plate umpire is going to go now talk to the field crew umpires. It should just be two bases on the advance. It was a fair ball. It then rolled and went under or became lodged in the fence at Fox Field. And the coaches and the umpires will tell you, hey, if it gets stuck, you just throw your hands up and the ball is dead. If you go digging around for it, then it's live. And if it doesn't come out, the guy could end up with an inside the park situation. Umpire's going to rule that all three runners score. Umpire, in his discretion, thinks that all three runs would have come in. So I said when Mason McDowell came into the ball game that we still had very much a ball game at Fox Field. We do. We are in the top of the eighth inning, and Roanoke is getting it done right now. Roanoke has yet to make an out. They have three hits in the inning, two doubles and a single, and they've walked twice. Umpires are going to talk again maybe after a word from Coach Beasley. I don't know if that third run is going to score just yet. Let's wait and see. Roanoke had scored one before that. Bases were loaded, and Hunter Von Zelowitz hit a double off Mason McDowell. There is nobody out. And, yeah, three, three runs have scored. Even Ben Jones is talking to the field umpire, trying to find out something maybe. 
It's a 7-6 ball game. Lynchburg, Lynchburg had their big inning in the fifth. For Roanoke right now, their big inning is the top of the eighth. Coach Mike Solbach is going to go out for a mound visit. Michael Solbach is one of the assistant coaches that works quite a bit with the pitching staff. So he'll go out and have a word with Mason McDowell. Believe that will tell you that it's not going to be a pitching change right here for Lynchburg. Solbach just having a chat with Mason and the catcher, Sean Pokerock. Infield stays back. Now, look like some of them wanted to wander toward the mound, but I believe Michael Solbach just giving all his instruction to the sophomore, Mason McDowell. Okay, nobody out and a runner on second in a one-run ball game now. Lynchburg was up five coming in to this eighth inning. Wesley Arrington started it through 119 pitches in the game. Arrington's going to get responsibility of a couple of those runs there. Actually, three of those runs will go to Arrington's card. Hunter Von Zelowitz leading off at second after the double. There's a breaking ball in the dirt from Mason McDowell. Before all that happened, we were talking about the footing at the mound and how difficult that can be in relief. Don't know if that's still an issue for McDowell or not. Maybe it was never an issue. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe Roanoke just having a great inning. Looked like another off-speed pitch from McDowell. Missed. It's a 2-0 count. Could be a bunting situation. Josh Jorman, the first baseman's even with the bag at first. Gavin Collins is behind at third base. McDowell looks at the runner, picks it up, fires. That was a fastball that missed inside and low. Three balls, no strikes. McDowell walked Giordano on four pitches. Fell behind Von Zelowitz 2-0. Now he's fallen behind Mosher. Three balls and no strikes. So I think that makes it like eight of nine balls for McDowell. He did get that one to come across. And you see him kicking at the mound again there. That's, that's why I keep bringing up maybe the footing. 3-1. So McDowell did get a strike. See if he can come back and get Mosher again. 0 for 3 on the day right now for Mosher. That's a fastball. It looked like it was pretty much right down Broadway. Maybe McDowell's got it figured out here. 7-6 ball game. Lynchburg by one. Now the count is full. Caden Friels is on deck. He is hitless on the day so far as well. McDowell set at the chin. Pumps and fires in the dirt for ball four. McDowell has walked two. And surrendered the double to Von Zelowitz, who still stands at second base currently. A change coming for Lynchburg. Short appearance for Mason McDowell. Just three batters. Lynchburg's going a different direction. We'll figure out that direction in just a moment here on LHSN. My name is Alexis Fabula. I major in criminology and I double minor in psychology and criminal forensics. My favorite part about Lynchburg is the friends that I've um, come to have. It's helped me come out of my shell more and it's helped me become the person I am and the student I am. I really enjoyed how small the campus was and I also really enjoy um, how small the class sizes are. It made me feel like I was gonna be more engaged than I would at a bigger campus. If someone was on the fence of coming to the University of Lynchburg, I would definitely love to sit down and have a conversation with them because I'm forever grateful that I made this choice. Um, it's definitely something that a student wouldn't regret. I, out of my four years here, I've not had one bad experience. I've had a great four years and I'm gonna be very sad to go.
Colin McGuire will be the third pitcher for Lynchburg. He enters with runners on first and second. Still nobody out in the eighth inning. This is the third arm that Lynchburg has used in inning number eight. Wesley Arrington came out to start this. Wes was the starter who really pitched pretty good. Seven hits, seven Ks, two walks, one hit by pitch for Wesley Arrington in 119 pitches of work. Mason McDowell, he just faced three batters, walked two and gave up a bases clearing double. It is a one run ball game, seven six. And it's Colin McGuire on for Lynchburg to try to restore some order to the game. The Hornets do still lead, but the Maroons have the momentum right now. McGuire, this will be appearance number seven. He went five innings against Greensboro earlier this week. That was March 13th, 80 plus pitches. Oh, that had some good bite on that breaking ball. 0-2 count right here pretty quickly for Colin McGuire, the freshman from Cross Junction, Virginia. Just outside Winchester, he struck out 13 and walked just five. Great appearance against Greensboro. That was on Tuesday. That was Tuesday of this week. So McGuire's had a full three days to rest, and he's got another strikeout. First out of the inning. That was a big one there. Nate Prince is one for two, one for three, rather. And then he had the weird one there that we're not sure if you call it a fielder's choice or an infield hit where Brandon Garcia pump faked and then went home. Runners on first and second, one out. McGuire set at the waist, one head nod, now delivers that curveball missing upstairs. Lead off is coming back here. Corey Coogan, the left fielder, on deck for Roanoke. McGuire batting at, or excuse me, the ERA is 2.57 on the season. 2.57, uh-oh. That hit, that hit Prince in the forearm or maybe the wrist. He's fine. He waved off a trainer, I think, as he was going down the first base line. So here is the top of the order. Corey Coogan, one for four. Singled in his third at bat. He's grounded out to first, second, and short. McGuire. Checking the communication device on the wrist there for the next pitch. Bases loaded again for Roanoke. They have been efficient. They have delivered with runners in scoring position. That even goes back to those first two runs in the first and second inning. Lively fastball there from McGuire for strike one. Corners are in for Lynchburg. Middle, double play depth. Outfield, medium out there and pretty much straight away on the lefty, Corey Coogan, who really has shown that he'll hit it anywhere. Away target set up here for Poker Rock. McGuire got it down, but it's a ball. Count is even at one and one. Lynchburg will have two, three, four coming up. That's McWilliams, Jones, and now Jorman. I don't know if we mentioned that Josh Jorman is in at first base, fans. Took over for Eric Hyatt. Ground ball that side, but foul. Jorman, a very good defender, a solid hitter in his own right. That probably undersells it. Josh Jorman had the leading batting average on the team last year for the University of Lynchburg. One ball, two strikes, one out. McGuire, ready, breaking ball in the air. Will not stay in play. Dylan Bonson on deck. He doubled to start this inning. Barring a... Double play right here for Lynchburg. Roanoke will bat around. They've already sent nine to the plate. Coogan will foul off another one. And regardless of result, we will remember Corey Coogan's outstanding defense taking hits away in left field. Another 1-2 delivery coming up for Colin McGuire. Here's the pitch. Hot fastball upstairs that Coogan lays off of. Like the velocity from McGuire. I won't say it's a noticeable difference from early in the season, but to me, it looks like he might be throwing just a little bit harder here in mid-March. Got that one down. Coogan staying alive. Putting together a quality at bat here. Corey Coogan's fifth at bat of the game. Now Josh Jorman has moved behind the runner at first base. Still could be in a double play zone there for sure. 
Another foul ball from Coogan. It's a 2-2 count. He's fouled off at least three. And the bases are loaded for Roanoke here in the top of the eighth, a long half inning. Coogan lifts this one to left. It's foul, but Eddie Gimble's going to make the grab. Runner will tag. Gimble throwing home. It's on target. Pokerock picked it, and they got him to end the inning. What a defensive play. Eddie Gimble, sack fly in foul territory, rifles it home to get the runner there. Lynchburg holds on to a one-run lead after the old 7-2 double play. Tim Slusser from the Outdoor Leadership Program gave a presentation at a teaching and learning resources conference here about getting his program more involved on the academic side of campus. I mentioned uh, computers and mapping and he mentioned caving and eventually we came up with the idea of mapping caves. So the week before we were able to learn how to use the instruments kind of like on a flat surface and just kind of get a hang of how they work but it was really amazing how once we got in the cave, it was a completely different experience using them. It was unique. It got most of us out of our comfort zone, kind of gave us a new experience, a new taste of something new. But I think the most difficult parts were getting the lighting right. Um, you had to read the instruments with the headlamps while keeping your eye pointed on the plot point. This allowed them to actually literally get their hands dirty, um, collecting data, conducting measurements and putting all that together in the form of a map and doing it in a, in a place that's never been mapped before. New arm on the mound for the Roanoke College Maroons. It'll be John Rossi, six foot senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Numbers on the season this year, 2.78 earned run average. He is 1-0 in two appearances. He has one game started. It was actually a complete game. So this is relief appearance number two. McWilliams likes the first, sends it to the right side of the infield, but Second baseman is there to make the play. Roanoke made some defensive changes as well, which we'll, we'll try to get those for you in just a second. Rossi facing Ben Jones, who's one for three with a walk. So we think in center field, or a change, a change in right field maybe, Justin Steens has gone in to play outfield. Looks like Steens is in for Nate Prince. And they got we've got multiple changes here for Roanoke because it looks like Nate Chown is playing first now. And a change at short. Johnny Johnny Wall uh, Johnny Wall's been at short. So that's the same. Johnny Wall played very up the middle here on Ben Jones. Two strikes. One two is the count now on Benny Bombs, one for three on the game so far. Josh Jorman would be on deck. Lynchburg might make a change there depending on situations. Multiple bench options are available for Lynchburg offensively and defensively as well. Jorman could stay in. Could pinch hit for him and then go Ryan Long at first base. That would be an option. And many other beyond that, but those are just seem what seem like plan A and B, maybe. Popped up to the pitcher. Ben Jones is out. The rare pitcher catching the pop-up. Sometimes that's a no-no for baseball teams, but 
Looked like John Rossi didn't have too many problems there, and it will be Josh Jorman hitting in this spot. Lynchburg leading 7-6. to six. So it was a very big inning for Roanoke, a four-run inning. You could argue it actually probably could have been worse. Lynchburg gets a double play to end it. Corey Coogan flew out in foul territory, but Eddie Gimble making the catch and throwing a strike. And how about Sean Pokorock at the plate with a nice pick? It kind of came into him on a short hop, but he hung tough, made the grab, and then the tag at the end of it to really limit some damage. Josh Jorman will pop one into center field. That's a base hit. Jorman is aboard. A potential insurance run for Lynchburg as they lead 7-6. Colin McGuire was the third pitcher used in the inning for Lynchburg. We'll see if he comes back out to pitch the ninth. Back to offensively, there's plenty of options. Well, on the mound, there's plenty of options for Lynchburg as well. This is Quinn Madden. Another multi-hit game for Quinn Madden. He took a big-time hack at that first pitch from John Rossi, but it's foul. Quinn Madden now has multiple hits in five straight games. That's the kind of heater he is on. Five straight games, Quinn Madden has gotten two or more hits. Ground ball left side, that's foul. Madden's average on March 5th was 167. Coming into this game, it was 340. He's two for four right now, so it'll be going up even more after this one. And depending on the end result of this at bat, well, who knows? Madden pumping it into right center field. This is deep. Bounces at the base of the wall. Uh-oh, Madden's kind of hobbling at first. Josh Jorman motoring around. He is in no problem. There is the insurance run that Lynchburg needed, but at what cost? Quinn Madden with his third hit of the game, but as he came around first, he started hobbling a bit there. Athletic trainers are coming out to attend to Quinn Madden. My goodness, a double. And he's got, he's got three hits in the game now. This tear that Quinn Madden is on is out of this world. Quinn Madden is now 14 for his last 21. 14 for his last 21, which is... A 667 average in the last five games now for Quinn Madden. And that includes three doubles and three homers for Quinn Madden. Gavin Collins is coming. If Gavin Collins is in the batter's box right now, he's another guy in his last five games that has three doubles and three home runs. Lynchburg has got some hitters that are just unbelievable right now. I always hesitate to use that word, unbelievable, but they've got some hitters that have taken it to another level right now. Quinn Madden looked like he was getting into the full sprint here. I think he's going to be okay. I believe March is uh, athletic training month, I think. Shout out to all of our athletic trainers here at Lynchburg. We'll make a point to run them down more in, in the next game. We've got more March LHSN broadcast as well, so maybe we should actually wait till next weekend and prepare ourselves a bit. And by the way, fans, Lynchburg is on the road Wednesday at Virginia Wesleyan. But right back here at Fox Field, one week from today, they will be hosting Washington and Lee in an ODAC doubleheader. So make your plans to join us at the Fox or on LHSN. All right, Madden's going to stay in there. That's a good sign. And what a good hitter up right now. Gavin Collins, like the first, got it airborne. Tough sky, foul territory. First baseman making the run and making the grab. Wow, acrobatic. Put a top on that carnival, but the out is made, and the inning is over. Lynchburg does get the insurance run. Josh Jorman singles, and then Quinn Madden drives him in. Hornets on top, 8-6. Three more outs to get here for what would be win number 11. Don't miss the conclusion of game one of the doubleheader on LHSN. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities, learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible, by actually studying the human body. 
This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic and Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams, helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. Top of the ninth here, last chance for Roanoke College. Maroons trail by two. Lynchburg with Colin McGuire still on the mound. Came in in relief of Mason McDowell, who faced three batters. Wesley Arrington started this game, pitched pretty good, pitched into the eighth inning. A four spot from Roanoke made it a game again. Lynchburg just added an insurance run in the bottom of the eighth. Quinn Madden doubled in Josh Jorman. Madden is out. Ethan Morotsky is now in left field, and Eddie Gimble has swung over to right for Lynchburg. 8-6 the advantage. Tough breaking ball there from Colin McGuire. We'll get out number one. This is Johnny Wall. If there was ever a time to make a comeback and a player to do it with, I think Johnny Wall would probably be the guy. Johnny Wall in the game is one for one with a double, two walks, and a hit by pitch. He has not faced Colin McGuire, though. 1-1 one, one count here on Johnny Wall with one out. Lynchburg leading 8-6. to six. Hornets have 12 hits in the game now. Lynchburg has left 10 on base, 8 of those in scoring position. Roanoke has done a better job getting players in. But Roanoke has also lost four runners on the bases. One thrown out at home in the last inning. Great play by Eddie Gimble. And then also Sean Pokerock on the receiving end there at the plate. Johnny Walls taking another walk. And now the tying run is in the batter's box for Roanoke. But just back to Roanoke. Yeah, they haven't left nearly as many on but they've lost four runners on the bases. Wesley Arrington picked two off. One runner thrown out at home. That was to end the top of the eighth inning. And then there was the play where Brandon Garcia made the arm fake on a slow roller to get a runner taking a big turn around third, which is not uncommon with two outs. Most coaches, maybe not most, but a, a large number of coaches will tell that runner at second, hey, I'm going to send you regardless, any batted ball, hit error otherwise you need to keep going and try to score so the fact that Brandon Garcia knew that used the arm fake to get what ended up being a relatively easy out in the end pretty savvy baseball by Brandon Garcia 1-1 one, one count with one out here on the catcher Tucker Schiavone swings and misses at a high one back to that life from the Colin McGuire fastball man it looks good he's got some sizzle coming out of the right hand today I don't know if it's more than early in the season or maybe I'm just Paying more attention to it today. One, two count. Here's the pitch. Went off speed. Flared to right. Josh Jorman's going to give a chase, but that ball is foul. So we'll try the one, two delivery again. Both teams have made some changes in the batting order. How about Josh Jorman there? Great job to get a base hit, get a two out rally started. We know he can hit, but the thought was that he's probably in there as a defensive replacement, quote unquote. So to come up there with two outs and punch one into the outfield and come around to score, that's big time. Uh-oh, tying run is on now as this ball's flared to the right side. Ben Jones will scramble to it, throwing into second, which was smart. Keep the tying run out of scoring position, plus there was no play at third to get the speedy Johnny Wall. Runners at the corners, and the threat is on again here for Roanoke College. They 
always play Lynchburg tough. They have split the last two regular season series, double headers, of course. Lynchburg won game one last season in Salem. Roanoke took game two, three to one. The year before that, it was a regular season split, and then Roanoke actually beat Lynchburg twice in the ODAC tournament. This is a Roanoke team that really plays everybody tough. It's, it's not just Lynchburg. But it's a squad that really plays everybody tough. Fourth in the ODAC last season. Roanoke was 28 and 17 last year, 16 and 6 in conference. And that tells you a lot right there. Remember, I mean, this is a conference with the national champion, Lynchburg Hornets, and two other teams that made it to regional play in Shenandoah and Randolph Macon. We know how good folks like Bridgewater are, Guilford with the incredible offense. Everybody's tough in the ODAC. Everybody's tough. But Roanoke College is as tough as they come. 0 2 count, one out. Runners at the corners. 8 to 6. Lynchburg by two. Runner at first is the most important. Really, from a Lynchburg perspective, defensively, guy on third is, is basically insignificant. I mean, if he were to just take off and gift you an out, you'd, you'd get the runner at third out, but he's really not even there from a defensive perspective. One, two count. Poker Rock was going in and then a pickoff attempt. If you had a situation where there was a ball batted back to McGuire and you saw Johnny Wall taken off to home, sure, you could flip there, but that's going to be about the only time you'd even think about that runner at third when you're up two. Check swing. He went. Was out anyway because first base was occupied, but Pokey slapped the tag on him, and now there's two outs. Lynchburg just one out away from securing win number 11 on the season. Nasty pitch there from McGuire. Hunter Von Zelowitz, he hit the big double down the line to really get Roanoke back within striking distance. That came in the eighth inning. And it has been a very, very active second part of this game. Think back to the bottom of the fifth. That's where Lynchburg scored four. It was just two to one Roanoke before that. Not that the first four innings were boring at all, but these last five have been really good. Short offensive conference there for Roanoke. Good time to take it. Maybe you can stall out McGuire's momentum some and possibly think about Something scheme-wise, although really you pretty much just have to get base hits now or get, get on. You don't have to get base hits. I don't know. You could potentially try a steal or a hit and run in this situation. But you got to get got to get that runner at first in. That's the tying run, 8-6. to six. There are runners at the corners. Lynchburg leading by two. Here's the first pitch of the at-bat. McGuire with the breaking ball. That's tough. Got the great velocity. Then you add in something with some serious snap right there. Hunter Von Zelowitz on the swing, just kind of then took a stroll around the dirt area at the plate, walked behind the catcher and the umpire. 0-1 oh, count now with two outs. McGuire, I think he's off speed again. That just missed. Hunter Von Zelowitz, a sophomore. Two hits in the game, two for four. Hitting over 600 on the season. Good stick right here for Roanoke with the game on the line. 1-1 one, one count. Von Zelowitz got a piece of that and fouled it back. Just judging from his body language, he thinks he should have done more with that. Looked like a tough pitch from our perspective. 1-2 with one out. Runners at the corners. Colin McGuire trying to close it out for Lynchburg. I believe this would be save number one of his career. See if he goes fastball or off speed. Oh, my goodness, what a pitch. Just off the plate. Didn't get a super long hold from Sean Pokorok, so it must have truly been a ball there. And now the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Two outs on the board. McGuire set at the waist. Here it comes. Went with the curveball and got a big fist pump from Colin McGuire. Lynchburg will win game number one, eight to six. They beat Roanoke. A big explosion in the fifth inning. Lynchburg tacks on two in the seventh, one in the eighth. And it's a two-run win for Lynchburg. They move to 11-5 and five on the season. Roanoke 
falls to 6-10. and ten. A win for Wesley Arrington. A save for Colin McGuire. Great stuff for Lynchburg throughout the lineup. Multiple hits from Quinn Madden and Riley O'Donovan with two doubles in there as well. Lynchburg gets it done. We're going to pause for about 45 minutes or so, and then we will get game two of this doubleheader cranked up. We hope you'll come back and join us on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
So here we go, baseball fans. We are ready for game two between Lynchburg and Roanoke. Lynchburg takes game one, eight to six, to move to 11 and five on the season. Two and one now in conference play. Roanoke, six and 10, two and one in conference play. Some major heroes in game one. We'll kind of recap that one throughout this game two. Starter for Lynchburg will be Nick Matfield on the mound. We'll run down his numbers in just a bit. But this season now, Lynchburg, in close games, seven and two in games decided by four runs or less. The old one swing of the bat rule. So Lynchburg continues that trend from last season and even years gone by. Really good in close games. They find a way to get it done, even under some maybe less than ideal situations. And Mason McDowell, after all, who has been the closer for this team, was only able to work three batters before Lynchburg had to make a change. Colin McGuire comes in to slam the door and get save number one. It was Wesley Arrington with win number two on the mound this season for Lynchburg. So congrats to Wesley Arrington and also uh, Colin McGuire, excuse me. Two doubles for Quinn Madden, a three-hit day for him. Riley O'Donovan had two doubles. Gavin Collins had a big double. It was a four-run fifth inning for Lynchburg. First pitch swung on, laced over to Ben Jones, but he makes sort of a self-defense backhand and gets the out. That was Corey Coogan with our first out of the game. Didn't even get to run down the lineups just yet because we just we just came on there and the first pitch happens and it is an out. Corey, I think this lineup's the exact same for Roanoke, by the way. Corey Coogan in left, Dylan Bonson in right, Johnny Wall hitting third, playing shortstop. Tucker Schiavone is the catcher in the cleanup spot. Hayden Giordano, the freshman, hitting fifth. Hunter Von Zelowitz, the DH again in the sixth hole. Kyle Mosher playing second, hitting seventh. Caden Friels is the first baseman, hitting eighth, and then rounding out the batting order, the center fielder, Nate Prince. That is the same lineup for Roanoke. There will be changes for Lynchburg in their order. We'll get to that in the bottom half of the inning. Cue ball back to Matt Field. Can't get it. Garcia on the move. He never had the handle either. As that skips underneath, that was always going to be a tough play, and that should be a base hit for the freshman from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Dylan Bonzen. Bonzen did double in game one. Got saddled with four strikeouts, though, so tough day for Bonzen other than the double. He gets the first hit of the game for Roanoke here. Getting uh, something from the umpire over to the Roanoke first base coach. Not exactly sure what that even could have been about because it, you know, it was clear that he was safe on the play. Who, who knows? We're ready for more baseball with Nick Matfield, the starter for Lynchburg. He'll throw over one time and give us a moment to tell you about the junior from Suffolk, Virginia. 1-0 and on the year so far, 3.86 earned run average. He threw four innings against Bridgewater Sunday in game two. That was the game Lynchburg won. Matfield gave up five hits, struck out five, walked two, surrendered just one earned run. And a reminder, Nick Matfield in 2022 was 9-1. and one. He was the ODAC Rookie of the Year, a first-team all-conference pitcher. This is a hard shot that will get by the glove of Gavin Collins. That was Johnny Wall. Johnny Wall continues to be an absolute force on the diamond today. The shortstop has yet to be retired. He was one for one with a double, three walks, and a hit by pitch in game one. And now... He just smokes the ball right by the third baseman, Gavin Collins, for his first hit of the game, but second of the day, and second for Roanoke here in the top of the first. So don't call it trouble just yet for Nick Matfield, but not exactly the start he would have wanted after getting one out on one pitch to the leadoff man. Here's the catcher, Schiavone, hitting with runners on first and second. Josh Jorman is playing first for Lynchburg. Battery mate for Nick Matfield is Riley O'Donovan. O'Donovan DH'd in the first game, catching in this game. Around the diamond, you do have Jormand at first, Ben Jones at second, Brandon Garcia at short, Gavin Collins at third. Foul ball there, O'Donovan hopped out just in case. In the outfield for Lynchburg in game two, it's Logan Webster in left, and then you've got O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth in center again. Quinn Madden is in right field. Again, for Lynchburg, Eddie Gimble started at left field for Lynchburg in the first game.
Bryce Demery is the designated hitter for Lynchburg. 0-2 count. Matfield got it where he wanted. Josh Jorman on a hop. That ball's down, and they're going to get a double play. They're going to get a double play. Stepped on first and tagged the runner. What's the call here? They're going to at least get one out at first, but did they get a double play or not? The runner retreated back to first because he thought it was going to be caught in the air by Jorman. And then Lynchburg threw to second anyway. Yeah, this should be a double play. This should be probably a 3U double play. But did did Jorman step on first and then go to tag the runner as he stepped on first right after it? So you got to get that in the right order. If you if you take away the force at, force at first, the runner can then come back. So Jorman probably would have been better served to tag the runner first and then step on the bag. No replay for us today on LHSN, so we can't go back and look at it, but it was an interesting play. You had a couple not weird ones in the first game, but you're always going to have some plays in baseball where you, you just don't see very often, so you have to scratch your head and think, well, how does that rule work? You had a ball that got stuck under the fence in the first game. That was a bases-clearing double. So if Jorman, he caught the ball on, on one bounce, so it's, a, it's, a, it's not a clean hit, but it's not a, it's not a line drive catch or anything. If he tags the runner first, when the runner is still forced to go to second, he would get that out first and then step on second for the final out. But if you do it in the reverse order, then that runner might end up being safe. And that's why the umpires are continuing this long conversation, because I believe they're not even sure. I mean, this is as long of a chat as you will see on a play like this. I mean, this is this has gone on now for uh, at least – Two minutes, we'll say, maybe closing in on three or four, so long that Nick Matfield wants a few warm-up tosses to wake the right arm back up. Okay, they're just, the batter is out. So the runner on first was Johnny Wall. He's still on first. Bonds and advances to third. It's runners on first and third. Travis Beasley, the head coach, is going to get the explanation. Yeah, the batter, Shiaboni was out on what will be a, a three unassisted. Hayden Giordano will be up at third base. So Travis Beasley, I think, is saying, yeah, he did it in the right order. He tagged him first as he's stepping on the bag. What if they happen simultaneously? I don't know, fans. That's a tricky one. I mean, Coach Beasley's going to make his case. I think it looks like he's ready to head back to the dugout again. Just just on the eye test, I, really tough. You do get spoiled by the use of instant replay up here with LHSN. And when you watch a game on TV, you've pretty much always got replay there. So you kind of get spoiled by that. So without knowing, without having a second glance, that's really hard to tell. I guess you can go back on the stream here and rewind it, fans, and see what order the, order the things happened in. But we'll move on as Lynchburg is faced with a first and third scenario with two outs. Hayden Giordano is the third baseman. One for three. Well, now we get what Coach Travis Beasley's gone back again to talk to the home plate umpire. Now the home plate umpire is going to we're gonna get a pinch runner at first in the first inning. This one, this field umpire closer to first base is having another chat with the first base coach from Roanoke. That is a strange time to make a substitution. It was that they've sw – okay, the batter stayed out there at first when really it was <laughs> – yeah, it ended up the shortstop Johnny Wall has to come back to first. Wow. Wow. You could, so you could almost argue Roanoke, if that ball gets put in play there, they almost have an illegal player out there because he was not the player that was supposed to be at first base. We're ready to play baseball again after a long delay. Matt Field, good pitch. Good pitch to snap off a tough breaking ball after all that wait time. 0-1 count. Hayden Giordano is the hitter from Chesterfield, Virginia. Nick Matfield from Suffolk, Virginia. Here's the second pitch of the at-bat. Ball one. 1-1 one, one count with two outs. We're in the top of the first inning. Still 0-0 score. 
between the Maroons of Roanoke and the Lynchburg Hornets. Matt Field holds, now delivers. Oh, tough 12-6 breaking ball there. That was nice. And Matt Field's got multiple looks from a breaking ball perspective that can make him so difficult. At 12-6, remember the clock face? He goes basically straight from 12 o'clock down to 6, and then he's got others that will break more horizontal like that one right there. Got him with the slider, and it's a punch out to end the first inning. A bit of a strange first inning, but Lynchburg gets out unscathed, and here come the Hornets to swing it in the bottom of the first. Ready for the bottom of the first inning. The starter on the mound for Roanoke will be number 28, Wes Hellings. He is a freshman from Summit, New Jersey. We'll get you some numbers on Wes Hellings in just a moment, but the batting order for Lynchburg will be Brandon Garcia leading off, O'Kelly McWilliams, Ben Jones, Quinn Madden in the four hole cleaning up in game two. He hit fifth in game one. You've got Riley O'Donovan catching, hitting fifth. Gavin Collins in his usual sixth spot. The D.H. Bryce Demery will hit seventh. Logan Webster hitting eighth. And Josh Jorman rounding out the order for Lynchburg. Brandon Garcia takes the first pitch for a ball. Here you go on Wes Hellings. This is appearance number five for the freshman. He has pitched 13 innings. The earned run average is 6.92. This will be start number four in appearance number five, an 0-1 record. He struck out 17, walked eight, batters hitting 264 against the freshman Wes Hellings. You can tell right away he's one of these guys that works exclusively from the stretch, the set position, even with nobody on base. And he looks like another tall, hard-throwing right-hander. Saw this from the sophomore starter Thomas Burgess. He's got some life out of the hand. Good delivery there. Yeah, you can you can see it. Might even be able to hear it. Mid is popping back there for Wes Hellings. Garcia hits with a full count. Held hitless in game one. Very tough to do against the sophomore phenom, Brandon Garcia. Saw Brandon Garcia make some really good plays in the field, as usual. So typical for this outstanding shortstop from Durham, see if he can get on base to lead off game two. He will, fastball upstairs, Garcia's aboard for O'Kelly McWilliams. McWilliams had one hit, couple stolen bases, one for five, so IV's average might take just a bit of a hit. Still very, very valuable, very important part of the game one win for Lynchburg. Try to bunt for a base hit, and the third baseman, Giordano, made a really good play on him. Shows the bunt there. Garcia scrambling back safely, feet first, into the first sack there. And we'll try it again. That was a ball, 1-0 count. Lynchburg's offensive approach I thought was so good in game one. They hit some balls hard even before they really had their big run scoring explosion. One in the fourth for Lynchburg, four in the fifth. 
It was three up, three down in the sixth. Then they came back and scored two more in the seventh and one in the eighth. A little insurance run there. Lynchburg left ten on base, eight of them in scoring position. But to me, that just means Lynchburg's getting guys on. They're getting guys around the bases. So relentless. There were some stolen bases in there. A good stolen base stat for you fans. Ball in the dirt. Now Garcia will take off. He initially retreated back to first and then saw that the ball caromed out of the dirt circle around the plate, and that was more than enough room for Brandon Garcia to advance. And now he's in scoring position. 3-1 count here for O'Kelly McWilliams. Here's a stat for you, though, Lynchburg fans. Uh, so far this season, Lynchburg is 8-1 in games where they have stolen multiple bases. 8-1 when they've got multiple steals. The overall record is, of course, 11-5 and five now. Lynchburg 8-1 and one in games where they've stolen multiple bags. They were 20-2 and two when they did that last year. And we think about the running game for O'Kelly McWilliams, the guy in the batter's box, but it's so much more than that. Everybody from Lynchburg really does a nice job on the bases. Full count. Has that one caught the inside corner? Garcia running here. Check swing from McWilliams. That's a ball, but still a stolen base for Brandon Garcia as he advanced to third. They appeal to the field umpire who was on his way walking back over to first base, and he says O'Kelly McWilliams did not go. Back-to-back -back walks start the game. Wes, Hillings, Wes Hellings, excuse me, looks like he's got great stuff on the mound, but so far Lynchburg has worked two really good full count walks. You make a note of that. Both of those at bats go to full count. Back to Lynchburg's hitting approach. So relentless, so patient. They do not offer it a lot of balls out of the zone. They make you work. They foul off a lot of pitches. They take a lot of walks that way and then also force you into throwing them some better pitches that way as well. You get those three ball counts, pitcher can't quite be as fine. And he's got to come over the plate. Something more hittable. Ben Jones thought the first was hittable and fouled it back. 0-1 count. Let's see how long IV waits to take off there at first. Roanoke's going to throw over and check on McWilliams. Lynchburg did a nice job holding runners on in game one. In fact, Wesley Arrington picked off two runners. Garcia at third, McWilliams at first. Long hold and then throwing again. It's a great way to pick a runner. Just hold it for a long time. Hold it for a four or a five count. Sometimes those runners get antsy. And I've often mentioned the value of disrupting a hitter's rhythm like that. Hitters don't like to just stand there and wait either. McWilliams will run. Fastball from the knees. Pretty good throw, but McWilliams got around it. Nice job to head first slide to the outside portion of the bag. So here you go. Lynchburg's already got two stolen bases in this game. Garcia won. McWilliams another. So there's the multiple stolen bases. Mentioned that's typically a good thing for Lynchburg. Still a long way to go in this game. 0-0. 0-2 count on Ben Jones. Got a piece of that. Slightly out front and under that one. But looked like Ben Jones was right on it too. See if Wes Hellings decides to go somewhere else. Maybe set up a potential punch out pitch. First baseman is even with the bag for Roanoke. Third baseman even with the bag as well. Middle is back here with nobody out. Runners on first and second. Don't know if it was a setup or just a miss, but Ben Jones moves out of the way. He kind of pounded his right thigh a little bit. Maybe that was an indication he wished he would have stayed in there and let it hit him. Don't know. One, two count coming up. Wes Hellings, the freshman from Summit, New Jersey. Ben Jones gets under this. Sends it a long way, but foul. It's very high. It was one of those balls at Tropicana in Tampa that would have hit the roof. That was a very high foul ball. Let's try it again with one ball and two strikes. Ben Jones gets under this. Going to end up being a long run. Tough play out here, and it's down. That ball is down. Garcia's got to hustle home. They'll try to relay it. Not in time. That's a base hit for Ben Jones. Definitely not his highest exit velocity single of his career, but that will be just that, an RBI single. 
for Ben Jones. Not how he wanted to get it, but back to the relentless nature of this Lynchburg offense. And they've got it going on. Even those dinks and bloops fall in. Nobody out. Runners at first and third. And it's Quinn Madden who is on a tear right now. Quinn Madden is 14 for his last 21 with three doubles and three home runs. Those numbers go back to the weekend series against Bridgewater. Check swing. Good hard breaking ball from Hellings. Man, how does Quinn Madden lay off of that? Good take. Quinn Madden has multi-hit games in his last five in a row now. And he's driven in, I believe, 14 in that sequence. He drove in Josh Jorman with a double in the backside gap to give Lynchburg an insurance run in the bottom of the eighth in game one. Lynchburg ends up winning it eight to six. Runners at first and second. McWilliams taking off now. Foul ball from Quinn Madden. I, I thought it was first and third. O'Kelly McWilliams could not get to third on that dink from Ben Jones. Two strike situation for Quinn Madden. Still nobody out. Check swing from Quinn Madden. That actually gets between the dugout and the netting. We'll get that one back in play, although a lot of times when it hits the brick, it's so scuffed up, the umpires don't want to use it anymore. But we'll see. One ball, two strikes. Quinn Madden, the junior from Burke, Virginia, another Northern Virginia guy, a lineup filled with talent from the northern part of the Commonwealth. Ball two. O'Kelly McWilliams from Oakton. And you've got Eric Hyatt, not in the lineup in this game, but Eric Hyatt from Woodbridge, Gavin Collins, Clifton, Riley O'Donovan, Reston. So much good baseball up there. And a lot of these guys are coming to Lynchburg. There's a balk from Wes Hellings. And I would argue that could be the pressure applied by Lynchburg offensively. You typically think of the balk as just a mistake by the pitcher, and it is that, but I, I think Lynchburg, the way they put pressure on you, they can probably force you into a few more of those as well. Got speed on the bases too, part of that equation. 2-2 two -two count, nobody out. Quinn Madden just absolutely destroys a baseball into center. I mean, this guy is on a tear right now. Play at the plate. Throw is up the line. Ben Jones slides in safely. Lynchburg leading 3 nothing. I am blown away by Quinn Madden here, fans. 15 for his last 22 now. How do you get this guy out? And he drives in two more. Quinn Madden is just nuts at the plate right now. Remember this tear that he's on. And, and, and if you're a future Lynchburg opponent watching this or watching some other tape, best of luck. I don't know what you do right now with this guy, Quinn Madden. Mound visit coming for Wes Hellings. Riley O'Donovan is another player that is absolutely on a tear. Two doubles in the first game, two for three with a walk, did strike out. But the senior, Riley O'Donovan, has just been – Destroying baseballs lately. Remember a two home run day here against Wittenberg? One of those was a grand slam. Riley O'Ding Dong, that's what my buddy Tim LaDuca said. That was a fun day. Two wins against Wittenberg. Riley O'Donovan featured heavily in a 13 to 10 victory. This is a Lynchburg offense that is warming up. As the weather heats up, Lynchburg is doing the same. So many, so many teams are. Offenses are really coming alive at this point in the year. But, man, Lynchburg has got some guys that are, that are more alive than others. The thermometer might get broken the next time you put it on Quinn Madden. He is that hot right now. 1-0 count here to Riley O'Donovan. Wes Hellings hasn't gotten out yet. This is a lonely feeling for a pitcher. And it puts... Coach Zach Ulrich for Roanoke in a tough spot. You don't want to overwork the bullpen. You know it's a long game. You'd like to get a bit more out of your starter. Plus, you want to have the confidence in them to keep working. But at some point, 
Zach Ulrich is thinking, well, we've got to make a move too and keep this game within reach. We'll see. O'Donovan fouls one off. It's a one-two count. Hellings is set. Madden leading off at first as O'Donovan fouls another one away. Uh, we should mention about Quinn Madden in that final double in game one, he kind of tweaked something coming around first base. Stayed in the game, but uh, it didn't look like he was full speed going down the line this time after his single. So maybe Quinn Madden, he's fine to run, but he just doesn't want to chance it, I guess, if that makes any sense. Just just wait till you got to use the full accelerator, maybe. That's what he's thinking. Nice pitch there from Hellings. That will be the first out of the inning. Cade Riley O'Donovan looking. That's tough to do. Like a good power curve. And this will be Gavin Collins. So here's Gavin Collins who doubled in game number one. Just the one hit, but Gavin Collins has been on a tear lately. How about in his last six games, he's got three doubles and three home runs. Looking to pick up where he left off. Against Pfeiffer on Wednesday, Gavin Collins was three for four with six runs driven in. He scored three himself, and that included two home runs in there. Looks like Hellings has found the breaking ball. He's spinning that thing nicely. And the fastball still got life, just a question of throwing it in the right spots. 0-2 count for Gavin Collins. Madden leading off at first. Outfield's actually got Collins played away. I think he went with the breaking ball again. Back-to-back -back punch outs for Wes Hellings. That's the crazy thing about pitching, isn't it? He said it was the loneliest place in the world up on the mound. Then all of a sudden you start figuring it out, snapping off the breaking balls, and you look unhittable. can change on a dime. It can change on a dime the other way as well. Here's Bryce Demery. Bryce Demery homered against Pfeiffer. He did not play in game one against Roanoke today. But Bryce Demery, Bryce Demery takeover could be in effect again in game two. Let's see. 1-0 count. They'll throw over on Quinn Madden. Bryce Demery on the season, hitting 239. 11 hits in there. He's driven in five. One for two with a homer and walk and hit by pitch against Pfeiffer. Fast ball couldn't come into the zone. And now it's a 2-0 hitter's count for Bryce Demery. Another Northern Virginia guy, the junior from Bristow, Virginia. 2-0 delivery wasn't close enough for Demery to get the bat off the shoulder, and now it's three balls and no strikes. Green light for Bryce Demery was the question asked in the press box. Maybe. Here's the pitch. Don't know if it's green light or not because it was ball four. That is the third walk issued by Wes Hellings. Excuse me. Wes Hellings walked the first two, gave up back-to-back -back singles, two strikeouts, and now a third walk. Logan Webster represents the eighth hitter Lynchburg has sent to the plate. Josh Jorman is waiting on deck. There are two outs with runners on first and second. Demery with a massive lead at first. There's that power curve from Hellings, gets it over for a strike. Let's talk about Quinn Madden again the next time he comes up, all right, fans? And I don't think, based on the numbers I'm seeing, I don't think I'm sensationalizing it or overblowing it in any way because Quinn Madden has been on an absolute tear his last six baseball games, now seven if you include what he did in his first at bat here in this one. Good swing from Logan Webster, came up empty, and now it's a one-two count with two outs. Lynchburg does lead 3-0. Hellings has the sign, one check to second. Now fires to Webster, and he will, he will hit that over into Wakefield House to our right. Good crowd outside enjoying the upper 60s weather. Still plenty of sunshine. Just a few wispy clouds out there in central Virginia. Wind blowing slightly out at Fox Field. Webster reached out, poked that one back to the pitcher, and that will be the final out. A nice inning for Lynchburg to start. Three runs on two hits. They do leave two stranded, and they take a 3-0 lead after one complete in game two of the double dip here at Fox Field.
It's a 3-0 score here in the top of the second inning. 3-0. Lynchburg and Roanoke. Kyle Haney hanging out with you on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Strike one from Nick Matfield. Matfield's another guy that will give you different arm angles. And part of his success is he can really change it up on you. Almost never throws you the same pitch twice. And, and, and even more rarely is he, are you going to get the same pitch back-to-back. -back. He goes with a fastball back-to-back -back times. It might come from different arm angles. Certainly going to be in different locations, in, out, up, down. Matfield can really work it. When he's on, he is one of the best. 0-2 count. Hunter Von Zelowitz is the designated hitter. Swing and a miss. Oh, he got a piece of it. Just barely stayed alive there. Nice job by Von Zelowitz, who had... A uh, big double off Mason McDowell in that eighth inning. Roanoke scored four in the eighth. Maroons never stopped fighting in that first game. And don't expect them to do the same or, or to stop fighting in game two either. It was pretty impressive the way Roanoke really rallied. Said they always play Lynchburg tough. They always play everybody tough. Roanoke last year was 28-17. They were 16 and 6 in conference. Right now, the Maroons are 6 and 10, and they are 2 and 1 in ODAC play. Mm, tough breaking ball from Matfield. Little front door action. Starts it at the front shoulder there. It just catches a piece, and that's his second punch out of the game. Back to back strikeouts, in fact. Matfield sat down Giordano to end inning number one. Here comes the second baseman, Kyle Mosher. Hitting 063 on the season so far, freshman from Asheville, North Carolina. Matfield misses the plate with a heater, ball one. 1-0 one -oh count. Nick Matfield again through four innings against Bridgewater Sunday. I think that was a 64 pitch day for Matfield. Pretty good results there. Lynchburg ends up getting the win in game two against Bridgewater. Did split, lost the first one. Eagles are really good this season. Bridgewater right now at 12-6 uh, and six on the year. 12-6 and six before today's action for Bridgewater. Bridgewater's on the road in Danville, taking on Avert. Shenandoah's at Guilford. Randolph-Macon in Lexington against Washington and Lee. Virginia Wesleyan battling EMU and Hampton Sydney at Ferrum. So a full day of Old Dominion Athletic Conference baseball action. And we'll have a clearer picture after today of what's going on around the league. Another great breaking ball from Nick Matfield. Boy, that one just froze Mosher. Matfield struck out three in a row. And it looks like Nick Matfield's starting to feel it out there. This is Caden Friels, the first baseman from Coral Springs, Florida. Comes into this game hitting 250. Hitless in game one. A strikeout and a walk in there for Friels. Nate Prince is on deck. Nate Prince was one for three in game one for the Maroons. Tailing two seam fastball, fouled off. Boy, just from the eye test right now, I really like what Nick Matfield's doing. Fastball's got some run. Breaking balls are coming at you from all the different angles. And he seems to really be enjoying his time on the mound right now. There's a curve ball from the low three-quarters slot that just missed. Count is two and one. Matfield has surrendered two hits. Bonson and Wall both got singles in the top of the first. There's the curve ball, that front door action. Strike two. Twos are wild here in the top of the second inning. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. 3-0 Lynchburg lead. If only we were tied 2-2. Two two. It might be too much to take. On Saturday, March 16th, St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Let's talk about some great Irish baseball players and athletes and Actors and musicians and all down the list. Barely staying alive. There was Friels. You could hear a slight ping. Just got enough of that. 
So we'll try a full count delivery again. Three and two with two outs. 9-1-2 coming up for Lynchburg. Jorman, Garcia, and McWilliams. Matfield looks in. Holds. Now kicks. Got it inside. Ball's airborne. This is a long one. Logan Webster going back. Tried to reach up and maybe take it away, but it's over. A home run for Caden Friels. We just said Nick Matfield was throwing the ball well. Caden Friels worked himself into a full count and deposits one over the left field wall for the first run of the game for Roanoke. Solo home run, third hit of the ball game for the Maroons. Our first home run of the doubleheader day. Lynchburg has been hitting a lot of them lately. Hornets coming into this doubleheader in their last five had hit 11 home runs. There's 10 doubles in there as well. We've seen quite a few doubles on the day from both teams. Our first homer there, Caden Friels. Good swing. Nate Prince got under this one. Long run. Quinn Madden, the right fielder, will come in, make the call, and make the grab for Lynchburg. So just a solo shot there, but Roanoke is on the board in the top of this second. One hit, one run, no errors, none left on. We'll see if Lynchburg can answer in their half of inning number two. I learned a lot of valuable lessons playing college football. I never thought about the health benefits of exercise until I actually started to talk to coaches in college. It's not only just for performance, it's for life. My coaches instilled the importance of well-being, not only building up strength, mental health, getting enough sleep, eating properly, it's all what it is to be healthy. I decided that I want to go into personal training and share my knowledge that I obtained in college about physical and mental well-being. Josh Jorman leads off the bottom of the second for Lynchburg. Jorman with a one-for-one one stint off the bench for the Hornets in game one. And he did come around to score the eighth run of the ball game. Lynchburg ends up winning it 8-6. Don't underestimate the value of that insurance run just as far as a pitcher's confidence. I know, again, all pitchers will tell you Colin McGuire was the pitcher on the mound for Lynchburg in that situation he'll tell you yeah I'm good with just a one run lead coach don't worry about me but I think everybody in the back of their mind would love to have a little cushion and two is better than one and that's exactly what Jorman did getting his single and then Quinn Madden drove him in with a double in the bottom of the eighth inning to put the finishing touches on a game one victory for Lynchburg Wes Hellings is still out there he had to face eight of the nine in inning number one. Gave up three runs on two hits. He walked three. Check swing from Jorman. Let's that go. And now the count is full. Brandon Garcia, the leadoff man, waits on deck for the Hornets. He walked in his first plate appearance. Here it comes from Hellings. Jorman likes it, got under it. Long run for the center fielder, Nate Prince, but he will make the grab in right center. And that's out number one. Brandon Garcia looking for his first hit on the day. It's a rare, rare occasion that Brandon Garcia is going to go six straight plate appearances without getting a hit. Baseball's tough, though. Hitting's tough. Brandon Garcia has been on... He walked in his first plate appearance today. And Brandon Garcia is one of those guys defensively with the glove. He's going to give you so much value. Honestly, he could maybe never get a hit, and you still would want to use him. Wes Hellings did not stick the landing. 
he fell down out there on the mound. The pitch went very awry. So we talked about footing in the landing area in game one. It was in regards to Mason McDowell when he came in. He kind of kept kicking at the hole there at the base of the mound. So the teams will do some work on the mound to repair it in between the doubleheader. That's part of the reason why we have our, our 45-minute break in the doubleheader is to get the field ready again. Uh, so you repair the hole, and this, this may have been, again, not anything to do with the hole, although Wes Hellings is kicking at it now himself. A and sometimes, again, that landing on the lead leg, you take that for granted, but... It's an athletic move. You're not always going to exactly put it in the same place. So if Wes Hellings maybe missed his landing area slightly on that one, perhaps the cleat catches the side of the hole and you lose the footing. It's probably more embarrassing than anything else for Wes Hellings, although it was a ball also. 1-1 one, one count with one out here to Brandon Garcia. Yeah, it looks like Hellings is fine again as he delivers one of those power curves in there for strike two. They used to talk about Tim Lincecum with the big, the big stride length. It was, it was much longer than it should have been. Brandon Garcia does have a base hit. His first hit of the day comes in plate appearance number two in the bottom of the second inning. That's Lynchburg's third hit of the ball game. But, yeah, Tim Lincecum was the uh, great starting pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. A couple Cy Youngs. His stride length was supposedly so much longer than, than what it should have been and what the average should have been for his height. And he purposely did that. That was something I guess he and his father really honed when he was coming up. He felt he got more out of that big, almost jumping at the plate with that stride length. He almost had to jump out there to get the stride out. And he, he said it did take some athleticism and you got to build up the strength on that lead leg. Speaking of strength, how about O'Kelly McWilliams just walloping one into center? Brandon Garcia, no breaks, all gas as he takes the turn around second and comes into third base safely. O'Kelly McWilliams with Lynchburg's fourth hit of the game. McWilliams now back-to-back -back games with a single. O'Kelly McWilliams now hits in nine of his last ten, and he has reached safely in 16 of his last 17. So you got guys like Quinn Madden, Gavin Collins, Riley O'Donovan who have been legit on fire. Then you got guys like O'Kelly McWilliams who's just been steady, getting on base. Base hits, walks. Ben Jones rolls over the first one. Double play maybe. Brandon Garcia will score. No, Ben Jones beat that out at second. So a run comes home. It will be a fielder's choice for Ben Jones. And he actually does get an RBI on that one because they didn't turn to double play. Two RBIs in the game for Ben Jones. He's the only base runner now with two outs. Lynchburg ups the lead four to one. Four to one is the Lynchburg lead. Jones a threat to run. I believe he's now six for six. Stolen base wise. Quinn Madden wants the first one. Chopper to short. Johnny Wall on the run. Quinn Madden, not quite at full power, but he was getting down the line as best he could, and that will be the final out of the inning. Another run-scoring inning for Lynchburg, though. They get one across on two hits. They leave one on, and the Hornets lead 4-1 to one through two complete in game two at Fox Field. If I'm walking around over on the crowd side, I always hear someone yelling, hey, Nat, take our picture. Hey, Nat, get this or something. Or, hey, Nat, you got that shot? Like, um, so I'm always like trying to photograph the crowds and my friends calling my name. I think sports at Lynchburg unifies us as a whole, no matter what background we come from, what differences we have, and what experience we've experienced through our lives. It brings us all together and we have one goal, which is to win. As a photographer, I definitely get to capture the emotion and the feel and the atmosphere of what's going on during the games and what's happening 
in the crowd and with the fans. We have hugely dedicated fans here at Lindsberg. They come out, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, windy, no matter what, like they will come out and support their team and cheer them on. They will sit through anything. <laughs> it's just, it brings us all together as one. All right, third inning is here. Roanoke is trailing Lynchburg 4-1. to one. Leadoff man Corey Coogan on. Swung at the first pitch against Nick Matfield in his first at bat. He will take strike one this time. Coogan was the guy that was just standing on his head out there in left field. He made multiple diving grabs in left to take hits away for Roanoke. A couple other nice running plays, one in the gap, one down the line. Corey Coogan, the leadoff hitter for Roanoke. He was... One for five in game one, 0 for one in this one. So back to the high value defensively. It's important. Hmm. Corey Coogan leans into one. This is deep to right field, and this is gone into the trees. Roanoke has two solo home runs off Nick Matfield. Lynchburg still leading four to two. But back to the Maroons. They never quit. They never lay down. They keep fighting. And now it's a 4-2 Lynchburg lead. Nick Matfield looked like he just was getting ready to start turning on the A game. And not that he hasn't, but Matfield, Matfield has given up home runs two to the last three hitters. Caden Friels, the eight-hole guy for Roanoke, parked one to left. Nate Prince flew out to right field. And then Corey Coogan, a home run to lead off this inning. Roanoke coming into the game. Their extra base numbers. They had more extra base hits than Lynchburg, but less home runs. Roanoke's now up to 13 dingers on the season. Lynchburg, for reference, has 17 homers. Lynchburg as a team came into the doubleheader hitting 281, a slug 434. Roanoke, for comparison, hitting 276, slugging 417. Another strikeout for Nick Matfield as we discuss that. Bonds and down, and now it's Johnny Wall. Johnny Wall is about the only guy who can rival Quinn Madden for the hottest hitter of the day award. Johnny Wall. Hasn't gotten out yet today. Swing and a miss. He's human. Johnny Wall doubled in his first at bat in game one. It was a hustle double, too, which is nice. Then he had three walks, got hit once. One for one with a single so far in this game. Ground ball. Johnny Wall might get out here. Brandon Garcia, textbook, and that is out number two. So Johnny Wall, like Quinn Madden, is actually human. They're not machines. They're not robots. They're not cyborgs. They're not AI. They're just very good human being hitters. Still fun to watch, though. Humans are more fun to watch because we have our flaws. Now it's getting deep. Now it's getting philosophical up here in game two. It is a 4-2 Lynchburg lead. Nick Matfield has struck out four. Surrendered two solo home runs, though. Part of four Roanoke hits thus far. Ground ball left side. Gavin Collins going to make a backhand play. Line to line throw. How about the shot across there from Gavin Collins? The senior continues to impress with the leather, and Lynchburg is out of the inning. Another solo shot for the Maroons. One run, one hit, none left on. Roanoke still in the fight. Lynchburg leading 4-2. to two. Get your career in the game by enrolling in the University of Lynchburg MBA program with an emphasis in sport management. This program opens the doors to new possibilities for a variety of careers, from being an athletic director or working in athletic administration to working for professional organizations, your favorite team to running a local parks and rec department. And employers are increasingly requesting and preferring individuals who have postgraduate education specifically looking for an MBA. 
And so the University of Lynchburg Sport Management's concentration in the MBA program sets you up for success, and it sets you apart from the many other people looking for jobs in the industry. Learn from winners. Here you will learn from professors and mentors who have spent their careers doing exactly what you want to do. Increase your marketability in an $83 billion industry. If you have a 3.0 GPA, the GMAT is waived. There's no application fee, admissions occurs on a rolling basis, and our online program is ideal for working adults. When you enroll in this program, you enroll in the opportunity to learn from the best of the best. Your professors have a wealth of experience working in the sport industry that they share with you in the classroom setting. Get in the game by getting your MBA with a sport management concentration at the University of Lynchburg. We're getting set for the bottom of the now, third Hollywood, inning. Hollywood, here I come. <laughs> yeah, now we're getting set for the bottom of the third inning here as Riley O'Donovan in the batter's box. Our public address man, Sam Rice, with a, a rousing introduction for Riley O'Donovan. I thought it roused me from my mid-inning slumber there. Actually, oh, that'll just rouse you as this ball is roasting in the right, but a catch. What a catch. Nice play in right field by Dylan Bonson. I thought Riley O'Donovan hit that ball very hard. He did, but not hard enough to get it over Bonson's head. And back to the this Lynchburg team. Think about the amount of loud, hard, long outs they have in this game, in this day, rather. Let's take, let's take that back to game one. I mean, you got to think. Hit by pitch. Hit by pitch for Gavin Collins. He got plunked once in the first game. Gavin Collins is really moving up that career hit by pitch leaderboard. He might end up catching first base coach Cameron Lane before his career is done. We thought that that record for Cam Lane might be unattainable. But but Gavin Collins has now been hit, I think that's his fifth of the season now. Sixth of the season, confirmed by Director of Baseball Analytics, Brady Moore. Pitching change coming for Roanoke. Let's just keep it right here, and we'll banter about some of the things that we've been talking about anyway. Lynchburg really hit the ball hard in game one, and, and back to those great plays that the Roanoke left fielder, Corey Coogan, was making. He was taking hits away, but that sort of foreshadowed what was coming for Lynchburg, that offensive explosion. You can only rob so many line drives as a defense, and, and that's what ended up happening. As we're going to get an update here on the all-time leaderboard. Gavin Collins is up to 47 hit by pitch in his career. Cameron Lane finished his campaign with 60, and he got one in Cedar Rapids in his final plate appearance. Cam Lane is the graduate assistant coach for Lynchburg. He is coaching first base. And I, won I wonder if Gavin Collins, every time he gets hit, goes down to Cam Lane and looks him in the eye and says, I'm coming for you, buddy. Oh, we're just having some fun with it. But, you know, there is really high value in getting hit by pitch. Remember that, fans. Lynchburg fans remember this, I think, from last season. Lynchburg got hit 107 times last year. That was 1.91 per game. So you're getting almost two additional base runners per game. This year, Lynchburg, let's not factor in that one from Gavin Collins. Lynchburg has 37, I think, through the first 16 games, which is uh, still over two, right? Isn't that over two? Math, math geniuses out there? Let's do it. 37 divided by 16. Yes, that's 2.31 per game right now for Lynchburg. So... It's, it's one of those things that you don't talk about it much, but it does help the team win. Some of them are just bad pitches by the pitcher, but it also means that Lynchburg's not getting out of the way. We know Lynchburg, with the plate discipline, so good as well. So you force the pitcher to throw more pitches, that means there's going to be more pitches they could hit you with. Lynchburg took five walks in the first game. Lynchburg has walked three times already in this game. And those numbers, fans, right at five per game, five walks per game for Lynchburg. They had 75 coming into this game, or coming into this weekend double dip. So, yeah, right at five per game now, 80 through 16 games in the walk department, not factoring in this game. Bryce Demmer, the designated hitter. At the plate, 
walked in his first plate appearance. Demery will take that one for a strike. And now it's an 0-2 count for Bryce Demery. He is facing a new pitcher for Roanoke. Runner on first is Gavin Collins. One out in this inning. Swing and a miss from Bryce Demery. He's out. First base is occupied. So that will be out number two of the inning. Logan Webster grounded out to the first baseman in his first at bat. I believe the new pitcher for Roanoke is Mason Roy. Number 16, Mason Roy, a sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina. 6'3", 220 pounds. Mason Roy on the season as he throws ball one to Logan Webster. Has pitched 9.1 innings. This is appearance number four for Mason Roy. He struck out five and walked seven. So got the inverted K to walk ratio of what is preferred. But he'll look to remedy that there. And the strikeout to Bryce Demery will certainly help. Logan Webster. Fouls a ball away. Webster is a junior from Chesapeake on the season. He's driven in three on base percentages up at 300. Batting average is at 240. One, two count on Logan Webster. Collins a threat to run at first, especially with two outs and two strikes. Not going here. He'll get to second anyway after a wild pitch. Runner in scoring position now again for Lynchburg. Hornets left 10 on in game one, eight in scoring position. But, but back to what I always say, I don't really view that as a negative. I, I view it as a positive. It means Lynchburg's getting more on and getting more around the bases. Yeah, you want to be able to drive those guys in, ideally, but y you're never going to score a lot of runs without leaving a few guys on base. Here comes the pitch from Roy. Logan Webster's all over that. Ripping it down the left field line, and he will drive this runner in. Logan Webster's going to rip and run around first. Stand-up double for the junior, Logan Webster. Lynchburg scoring again. They've scored in every inning now. Double down the line from Logan Webster. Hit number five of the game for Lynchburg. The hits keep coming. Here's Josh Jorman. Flew out to center field in his first at bat. This will be his first time facing the new arm, Mason Roy. Webster leads off at second with two outs. Johnny Wall, the shortstop, trying to hold him close there for Roanoke. Maroons in the infield have Jorman played to pull. Pretty much straight away in the outfield, medium depth. 0-1 count as Roy gets the sign and gets set. A look at Webster, now kicks and fires. Josh Jorman will pull this foul into the Roanoke dugout. 0-2 now for Josh Jorman, who's off to a slow start this season. But he is a great hitter. 11 multi-hit games last year and 29 starts. Hit 398 for the season. He'll rope this one by the diving shortstop. Webster will get the wave around third. He's going to come in to score standing up. And now it's a multiple run inning for Lynchburg. Back-to-back -back base hits. And the top of the order is back up with Brandon Garcia. Man, Garcia has hit three times in three innings. That is always a great sign for an offense when your leadoff guy is up for a third time in the third inning. One for one so far for BG. Hollywood has a walk to go along with his single. Hard heater from Roy came in at the belt line. Brandon Garcia was able to get out of the way. That is heat there from Roy. So there's, there's an, an occasion where Lynchburg did move out of the way. Back to those hit by pitches. I mean, they're not not just all stone walls in there, and they're not rolling and leaning into a ton of pitches. Some of it is on the pitcher, but Lynchburg gets more hit batters than other teams. So that tells you something. There's, the data is there that would indicate Lynchburg is better at that than other teams. Brandon Garcia will spray one to the third baseman. Did that just go off the glove or through the glove? Giordano is looking at his leather there. It doesn't look like anything broke, so I think he just missed it. He seems to be miffed about how he could have missed that shot. 
I think it goes down as a base hit, though, doesn't it? Our official score has given that a base hit. Multi-hit game for Brandon Garcia now. Three straight hits in the inning for Lynchburg. And the threat is very much real and still on. Lynchburg scored three in the bottom of the first, one in the second. Now two already in the third with the talented O'Kelly McWilliams in there. Roy comes across with a breaking ball for strike one. IV is one for one in this game with a walk. One hit in the first game. O'Kelly McWilliams. Ball up the middle. This would be a tough play for Johnny Wall. Diving, flipping it to the second baseman. Did they get him in time? They did. Good play to limit further damage on the dive there by the shortstop, Johnny Wall. But Lynchburg does score two, and the Hornets are on top and in charge. Six to two over Roanoke through three complete at Fox Field. A single thread is unique, like each of us, full of purpose and potential. A strand designed to connect, strengthen, and unite. But we face different challenges and have different opportunities. By acknowledging that others may struggle in ways we do not, we can celebrate our differences embrace each other and fortify the ties among us. A single thread can fray, yet when it's woven with another, a bond forms, a new strength created by the fabric of the whole. Let's embrace the fabric we make together, the diversity of our threads, to reach beyond ourselves and overcome the impossible the true power of our game comes from unifying our individual backgrounds, connecting our unique stories, enabling us to be stronger, braver, greater. We can achieve so much more when we are all as one. The third baseman, Hayden Giordano, leading off for the Roanoke College Maroons, who trails six to two, two solo homers for Roanoke College. Give them some credit there. I think if you're Nick Matfield and Lynchburg, you're you're probably okay with the solo home runs. I mean, that was always the old school pitching thought: was pitch to contact, throw strikes, don't walk people. If you give up a single run here or there, whether it's via the home run or maybe a team strings multiple hits together, but if you only give up one run. You should be putting us in a position to be successful, and Nick Matfield certainly has done that. When you've got an offense like Lynchburg has, I think as a pitcher, you know, hey, I don't have to be perfect. I can give up a dinger here or there. Nobody wants to do that pitching-wise. But you have the security blanket. You have the comfort of knowing that you got a Lynchburg offense that has been on fire lately and has already put up six runs in the first three innings in this one. So that'll help Nick Matfield feel much better about those solo home runs he's given up. 2-2 two -two count to Giordano, who struck out in his first at bat. And he's going to strike out looking here. Nick Matfield twirling that breaking ball again. That is punch, punch out number five for Matfield. Hunter Von Zelowitz, the designated hitter from Hopewell, New Jersey, was a strikeout victim in his first at bat. Hunter Von Zelowitz impressed us with his with his swing earlier, sophomore was hitting over 600 coming in to the game. Had a double and a single in game one. Breaking ball from Nick Matfield. Man, that is good. And that's the one with more depth. That's that 12-6 one that I'm talking about. Might have even been more like a 1-7, but I think you baseball fans know what I mean. And then Matfield can drop down and, and give you the more the slider sweeper breaking ball. Von Zelowitz saw that. Hung it a bit, but couldn't get enough on it. And Ivy O'Kelly McWilliams will make a pretty easy grab in left center. Two outs, two pretty quick ones. They'll bring up Kyle Mosher. Struck out looking in his first at bat. Freshman from Asheville. Struggling a bit to begin the campaign. 
one hit and one homer on the season. His only hit is a homer on the season. He did not have a hit in game one. He did get walked one time. I think he's going to get the second hit of the season. Hold that thought, though. Brandon Garcia taking hits away. spin rama Hollywood flinging it across for the third out of the inning. Defense on display for Lynchburg. Hornets are swinging it, too. Right now, Lynchburg leading Roanoke 6-2. to 6-2, to two, excuse me. 6-2 to two through 3.5 in game two of the double dip at Fox. Nice play by Brandon Garcia to end the top of the fourth inning, retiring the second baseman for Roanoke, Kyle Moshear. An adjustment on the pronunciation there. We beg your pardon, Kyle Moshear fans, Roanoke fans. And we say hello to any Maroon fans that are tuning in. It's a fun squad to watch. They've got talent. Lynchburg right now is getting the best of Roanoke on top. Six to two. Three up, three down inning there for Nick Matfield, by the way. It was the first inning. Roanoke did not get a hit. So Matt Field might be getting even better and better as the game goes on as well. 1-1 one, one count to Ben Jones. Benny Bombs is one for two in this game with two RBI. Ben Jones did have a hit and a walk in game one. Ben Jones will laser one over the outstretched left arm of Kyle Moshear for his second hit of the game. Ben Jones is cranking that average up in addition to the on-base percentage that was already high. Benny Bombs gets on base over 46%, 464. Here comes Quinn Madden, who actually got out in his last at bat. He's one for two with two runs driven in. And so now, in his last, uh, Quinn Madden, by the way, in his last six games now, we'll count this one, Quinn Madden is 15 for 23. 15 for his last 23 for Quinn Madden. That includes three doubles and three home runs at last check. He gets hits with such regularity, it's hard to keep tally and keep track of them all. Quinn Madden with a 1-1 count now. Madden had over 20 home runs in a junior college career. Ball hit hard to Johnny Wall, snares it backhand, throws from the knees, and it's a double play. Nice defensive work there by Roanoke. Quinn Madden hit that ball hard, but Johnny Wall navigated it for the old 6-4-3 double play. And now all of a sudden there's two outs in the inning pretty quickly. It looked like it was an inning that was going to develop into something there with Ben Jones hitting the ball hard to begin. Two down. Riley O'Donovan hits with the bases empty. He flew out to the right fielder, but hit it really hard in his last at bat. Struck out his first time up in this one. Riley O'Donovan, a senior now. He has played in some big time playoff games and not just last season in the national championship run. Riley O'Donovan was a part of two regional runs before that. Over 80 career hits for this guy. 10 career homers. He's a career 315 hitter. It's a little chopper. O'Donovan's going to try to beat it out. One hops into the first baseman's glove. He can't negotiate that one. And now we'll find out if that's a hit or an error. But either way, it's a base runner for Lynchburg. 
Second one of the inning, actually. And Jones got it raced on the 6-4-3 double play. Here's Gavin Collins. Hit by a pitch, struck out. Collins has a six-game hitting streak working after a double in game one. He'll look to extend that to seven. Gavin Collins in his last six has three doubles and three home runs. He shares that with Quinn Madden. I think we're going to call that a hit for Riley O'Donovan. There's a fastball, low and away for a strike. Count is even at one and one with two outs. So Riley O'Donovan, that's the ninth, ninth hit of the game already for Lynchburg. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Said they are relentless all through the lineup, one through nine. A and that's with multiple lineup combinations that Lynchburg can throw out. Eric Hyatt's not even in this lineup here. And this will be the first game that Eric Hyatt has not played this season. Also, you got Sean Pokorak and Eddie Gimble that were in there in game one. Whoa, that was scary from Gavin Collins. I mean, that was that, that was a ball that could have really done some damage. Mason Roy luckily was out of the way. Double-digit hits for Lynchburg. Through four innings, Lynchburg's got ten hits. Throw in a hit by pitch. And three walks in there as well. 14 base runners already for Lynchburg. Incredible. Bryce Demery, let's see if he can keep it going. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. He's actually the first batter that Mason Roy faced and struck out against him. Gavin Collins, the hit streak is up to seven games in a row now. Congratulations to senior Gavin Collins. Another guy with just a, a career that sort of boggles the mind with how many big games he's played in, how much production he's given Lynchburg. And he does it with bat and ball, bat and glove, Gavin Collins. He's at first, Riley O'Donovan at second. Bryce Demery, the junior, 1-1 one, one count, hitting with two outs. Demery, got good metal on that, but got way under it. The shortstop, Johnny Wall, camp left fielder will come on and call him off and make the out. First inning, Lynchburg does not score in. Interestingly enough, they had three hits in the inning. They'll leave two stranded. Hornets still on top, 6-2 to two through four complete in game two of our doubleheader at Fox. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help, and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education, and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. We're set for the fifth inning here at Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg, James C. Fox Field. And this ballpark has been so good to the Hornets over the years. Tough to win here for opponents. This is Caden Friels leading off. The first baseman hit a solo homer in his last at bat, his first one of this game. I want to talk about Lynchburg offensively. Up to 10 hits in four innings. They had three hits last inning and did not score. So hit totals this season for Lynchburg. They got 12 against Birmingham Southern. They got 10 against Marietta. 11 against Wittenberg in game two. 14 in a loss to Bridgewater. That was a 7-6 Bridgewater win. Lynchburg actually got 14 hits in that game. 
They turned around and banged out 16 hits in game two against the Eagles. It was actually just eight hits for Lynchburg in a road win against Greensboro, 12 to one. 17 hits in a 23 to one win against Pfeiffer. 12 hits earlier in game one today. And now 10 hits in this one. And I know that's a lot of numbers, fans, but, but it all adds up to the fact that Lynchburg is really swinging a bat this year. There have been some lean games. In, in, in fairness, we should also report Lynchburg did get no hit in their first game this season against East Texas Baptist. Hasn't been all roses for Lynchburg offensively. But this, this ball club is really starting to heat up swinging the bats. Oh, hit by pitch right there. That was a 2-2 count. Matfield, I think, was going with that front door concept breaking ball. And he ends up hitting the leadoff man and first baseman, Caden Friels. Batting eighth in the lineup, but leadoff this inning. So Friels is on. It, it, it's, just a, it's just a Lynchburg team that, again, the approach is, is I always say, relentless. They never stop and resourceful as well. They're going to find multiple ways to beat you. They'll take the hit by pitch. They'll take the walks. They'll steal bases. They'll sacrifice bunt. Haven't seen that much because Lynchburg's banging out so many hits. But in close games, Lynchburg will put down the sack bunt. They'll use that part of the offensive program. They can hit for power. 11 home runs in the last week or so for Lynchburg. They can hit for average, obviously. But this is a, a Lynchburg team now that that makes – this makes seven of their last eight games Lynchburg has double-digit hits. Seven of their last eight games Lynchburg has ten hits or more. So impressive. And last year's ball club really swung the bat as well. And this year's team, yeah, just they kind of swing it in a different way maybe? I don't know. It's just a, just a really, really good offensive approach for Lynchburg. They scored double-digit runs 19 times last year. And we have run down the numbers on that this season. They've scored 10 runs or more five times. They beat Roanoke 8-6 in game one. And it's only 6-2. to two. It's only the fifth inning as well. I'm not, don't want to speak as though this game is over from a Roanoke perspective because it's not. they got a runner in scoring position now. 1-2 count on Nate Prince, the center fielder. Matt Field still working for the Hornets. There are a few arms getting ready in Lynchburg's bullpen. Away target from Riley O'Donovan. Matt Field, breaking ball stayed over the plate too much. Prince drives it into left. Logan Webster will field. No play at home. Run is coming in there. And that's the third run of the ball game now for Roanoke. Still nobody out in the top of the fifth. So, yes, this game is not over by any stretch of a baseball fan's imagination. Six hits now for Roanoke off Nick Matfield. Mound visit coming from assistant coach Michael Solbach. We saw Coach Solbach take a mound visit. Michael Solbach is one that, that we probably don't talk about quite enough. Very, very important part of this Lynchburg team, not just from a pitching perspective, but those are the players he primarily works with. But, you know, when you, you we talk to Coach Travis Beasley and Lucas Jones last season, and, you know, they just said Solbach. He doesn't say a ton, but when he does say something, you better listen because his, his percentage of being right is, is up well over 90%. Really can break down a hitter. That's one area where Solbach is, is maybe unmatched. His eye test on a hitter, they say, is so good. You make one swing and Michael Solbach's going to find a hole. You give him two or three or four swings to watch, he's going to have you figured out pretty quick. Now the pitcher's still got to execute that game plan. But Coach Solbach, he just can read hitters so well. Obviously works well with the pitchers. Lynchburg former All-American and current professional baseball player Grayson Thurman always sung the praises of Michael Solbach. There's another single. Lynchburg trying to throw in behind the runner there. Nice crafty play by Brandon Garcia to scoop up that relay and then go try to tag Prince. But Prince got back in time. Back-to-back -back singles now for Roanoke. That comes on the heels of a hit batter to begin the inning.
So again, if you thought this game was over, you're going to need to think again. It's a 6-3 Lynchburg lead right now, but Roanoke threatening with nobody out in the top of the fifth. Dylan Bonzon, the right fielder. Could be sack bunt situation. He'll show it. Freshman has popped it up. Matfield can't get to it. Two bounces. He'll scoop and throw, but nobody was at the bag in time. And that's probably going to be a base hit there. It's going to be three singles in a row for Roanoke. And this one only went about 40 feet. Matfield, I think, initially coming off the mound, tried to catch it in the air, couldn't get there, picked it up on the second hop. But nobody was available at first base, or at least in the opinion of Matfield, they weren't going to get there in time. New arm coming for Lynchburg. We'll get it for you in just a moment. It's a 6-3 ball game, but the Maroons have the bases loaded with nobody out in the top of the fifth. I was looking for a school that could provide me with the athletics, academics, to pursue my career, a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique. They, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate. When creating a sustainable future, your choices matter, even your choice of a college. The University of Lynchburg is the first college in Virginia to go carbon neutral. Our dining hall is green restaurant certified. We compost all of our food waste and purchase our electricity from landfill gas. Now we're turning a hazardous lake into a thriving urban wetland. When you choose Lynchburg, you leave a smaller footprint while building a better tomorrow. It's the left-hander Austin Riney in out of the bullpen for Lynchburg. Right into the fire here with the bases loaded, nobody out. And a great hitter at the plate, Johnny Wall. Johnny Wall has finally been retired today. He was one for one with three walks and hit by a pitch in game one. Started this one one for one, but then grounded out to the shortstop. Riney gets ahead, a one count. Bases loaded, nobody out. Top of the fifth in a 6-3 ball game. There is a lot happening right here. And Riney is now finding himself at the center of it. This is appearance number seven. He worked two innings against Pfeiffer on Wednesday, March the 12th. 1-1 one, one count to Wall. That's out of the zone for a ball from Austin Riney. Austin Riney has been one of the key options out of the bullpen, threw great on the road in Greensboro in that game against Salisbury, second weekend of the season. He's a sophomore from Midlothian. One and one with one save so far this year. Riney kicks and throws to Wall. This one will send Logan Webster back, looking over his head. Did it stay in? It did not. It's gone. It is a grand slam from Johnny Wall. He pumped it over the wall. Second hit of the game, third of the day. A four-run round tripper for Johnny Wall. And it is a tie ball game. Six to six. Or is it seven? I'm, I'm wrong. I'm off again, fans. Yeah, Roanoke, seven. Seven to six. Already one run score. Caden Friel's got hit by the pitch and came in already in this inning. It's a seven-six game. It's blowing my mind. Can't keep it straight. Wow. Tough way for Riney to enter. We mentioned you come in with bases loaded, nobody out. You're facing the other team's best bat. 
That is a tough spot for a pitcher. I like the move from Coach Travis Beasley. You want to give Wall a different look. But right now, he's swinging it that good. Johnny Wall, a career 350-plus hitter, has just put his team in front. Seven to six. It's a five-run fifth inning right now for Roanoke. Still nobody out. Maroons got four in the eighth last game. Lynchburg's big inning was in the fifth where they got four. So now a five-run inning has become the highest scoring outburst between these two ball clubs so far. You have to assume Lynchburg will keep swinging it. But they're down one again. What a fun day. Lynchburg wins a two-run game, eight to six in game one. And they got up six to one in this one. But nobody expected it to be over. At least nobody should have expected it to be over. Nice spot from Austin Ryan. He just missed off the plate. Got that as being hit number nine for Roanoke. You got four hits in a row, by the way. Hit by pitch to start the inning, three singles, and then a grand slam from Wall. Still nobody out. Nick Matfield started the inning. And it's another situation for Lynchburg this season where, where one pitcher, and more specifically the starting pitcher, has gone out to start an inning but been unable to get out of the inning. Happened with Wesley Arrington in that eighth inning in game one. Lynchburg will have 8-9-1 due up in their half of the fifth as they'll try their best to answer. They so often do. Very good about matching the other team's run output. Although not necessarily the same number, but Lynchburg typically this year, last year, previous seasons has been great. When the other team scores, they turn around and answer with some runs of their own. 2-2 pitch coming from Riney. That's inside. The hitter is Tucker Schiavone from Sag Harbor, New York, hitting 373 coming into the game. That does factor in a couple singles in game one. And now Schiavone has walked. So that is the sixth straight runner to reach in the inning for Roanoke. It's not really quite in that wheels have come off category for Lynchburg. Still a one-run game. Lynchburg down by one. But not exactly what head coach Travis Beasley and the rest of the staff were looking for here. Riney fires a strike across. 0-1 count on Hayden Giordano. Third baseman struck out twice looking against Nick Matfield. 7-6 ball game. Bunt shown by Giordano, pulls it back, and that is ball one. Hunter Von Zelowitz on deck. No outs yet. Seventh hitter of the frame. This is a very good bunt down the line. Austin Riney sort of stumbled or didn't maintain the full balance as he was working to the line to pick that ball up. And it will be another base hit. Seventh consecutive hitter to reach for Roanoke. Wow. Perfectly placed bunt from Giordano. Let's, let's, let's not lose sight of that fact. Because the pitcher, Riney, is left-handed. He's falling off the other side of the runner. He's falling to the third base side. The bunt was too far for the catcher, Riley O'Donovan, to have a play. Another bunt coming here. This one's down the left field line, third base line foul. But th that previous one was too far for O'Donovan, the catcher, to have a play. Josh Jorman, the first baseman, it's too far for him to come in and get it. So the pitcher's the only one that's going to catch that ball that's basically equidistant between home plate and first base. If you could choose to put it there every time, you'd have a really high batting average. Right-hander is going to have a slightly better shot, but that, that would have been even a tough play for a right-hander. Right-hander can pick it up, and he doesn't have to turn and throw either. Like, Riney had to spin around the 180 to throw that, so that was part of it as well. Nobody out, 1-1 one, one count. Hunter Von Zelwitz 
fouled off a bunt and then took ball one. Showing the bunt again. This is back to Riney. He'll field, spin, throw to first. Good stretch from Jorman. Okay, there's the first out of the inning. It's a sacrifice bunt from Von Zellwitz. So Roanoke's done a little bit of everything. They've hit a grand slam. They've gotten hit by a pitch. They've taken a walk in this inning. They've had now four singles in the inning. And now textbook small ball with the sack bunt. What does Roanoke have in store for us now? It's Kyle Moshear, ninth hitter of the inning for the Maroons. Corners are in again for Lynchburg. Runners on second and third. Moshear driving this one to right. Madden on the run. Not going to get it. Bounces on the warning track. Extra bases for Moshear. Two runs are in. Roanoke's big inning continues. It's now a double to go with all the other things that the Maroons have done in this inning. Base hit number 11 in the game for Roanoke. And it's hit number six in the inning. Six hits in the inning. And another pitching change is coming up for the Lynchburg Hornets, who now all of a sudden find themselves on the ropes a little bit, down 9-6 to Roanoke in the top of the fifth. has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division 3. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person. Competing at a Division III level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Dominic Rollins, the junior from Jefferson Forest High School, just down the street, is in the ball game for Lynchburg. 2-0 in seven appearances. He's been one of the key guys for Lynchburg this season. And he has struck out seven and walked just one. Did throw two innings against Greensboro on Tuesday. 18 pitches there, struck out two, walked none, and gave up no hits. Dom Rollins is on to try to, a phrase that I use a bunch, restore some order to the game for Lynchburg. Down nine to six at the moment. They entered this inning leading six to two. So yes, it is a seven run inning for Roanoke. They have batted around. This man, Caden Friels, started the inning by getting hit by a pitch. Friels homered in his first at bat of the game. So he is dangerous. There is a runner on second. With one out, 1-0 count. Rollins is a hard-throwing right-hander. 
Another guy that features pretty good action on the breaking ball. Lynchburg on the season, 11 and five, and four and two at home. They lost at home to the same team for the first time in a long time. Remember Lynchburg at Fox Field last year was 22 and one. Over 70 wins here at Fox in the last four seasons. It has basically been a fortress. Lynchburg throughout the year last year never lost to the same team twice. That has happened one time this year, dropping that three game series to York. But that's the only team to beat Lynchburg more than once this season. Five losses by four teams. 3-1 count for Friels. Rollins missed the zone. Ball four. So here comes the 11th hitter that Roanoke has sent to the plate. Second walk of the game for the Maroons, by the way. First one, obviously, that Rollins has, has issued his first hitter. One out. Got options at the bases now if you're Lynchburg. Here's a ball sprayed into right field. Quinn Madden is under it. Runner at second will tag, but it will be the second out of the inning. And now the top of the order is back up for Roanoke. They have sent a dozen hitters to the plate here in a fifth inning that has taken a long time. We're into the 5 o'clock hour, a doubleheader day that started at noon. We had the break in between games, obviously. But we had a few delays in there for some interesting calls, if you remember, fans, in game one. There was the ball under the fence. Uh, game two featured the play at first with Josh Jorman catching the line drive, and we weren't sure if it was a double play or not. Ball one from Dominic Rollins. Runners at the corners, first and third. Dylan Bonson. Uh, no, C Corey Coogan. I'm sorry, Corey Coogan, the leadoff man, is up. He has a solo homer in this game to go along with a single. A single in this inning, by the way. Corey Coogan is the 12th player that Roanoke has sent to the plate. He takes a mean cut at this, and it is going to get over O'Kelly McWilliams' head. That ball is down for extra bases. Coogan will stop at second. Two more runs in. It is a bases-clearing double, and the hits keep coming for the Maroons. Coogan is now three for four with a homer, double, and a single. Two hits in the inning for Corey Coogan. It's a dozen hits in the game now for Roanoke, and here comes the 13th person they have sent to the plate. It is Dylan Bonson. He is two for three with two singles in this game. He also has a single in this fifth inning. A nine-run fifth inning. Nine runs, a nine spot. Lynchburg scored a bunch of runs in the second inning against Pfeiffer on Wednesday. It's not unheard of in baseball. It's not unbelievable, but it is still slightly shocking when it happens. 0-1 count. And when it happens to a quality team like Lynchburg, 11-5 this year, the defending national champs, well, you could argue it's a little bit more shocking. But that's what this game of baseball can do. It can humble you. It can bring you back down to earth. It can equalize things. Ground ball left side. This is through. This is a seeing eye single now. Webster will come up. He'll throw home. Collins cut it. Collins cut it off, and another run is in. Ten runs in the inning. Double-digit runs in one inning for Roanoke. Hit number 13. Eighth hit in the inning, and that includes a grand slam home run, five singles, and two doubles, two walks in the inning as well. The score, the score card is a complete mess. Ten runs in the inning. Big swing from Johnny Wall. This is going to be tough to grab. McWilliams has a beat on it, though. Did he pull it in? He did not. It hit the glove and bounced out as he was colliding with the wall. Maybe a play at home. No. Runner will come in. It's another double. Three doubles in the inning now for Roanoke. This is getting almost into unbelievable territory now. That is hit number 14. It is 11 runs in the inning now. 
an 11 spot in the top of the fifth inning. This just does not happen very often. And once again, to a quality program like Lynchburg, well, it's even more rare. You will see everything in this game if you watch enough baseball. 13 to 6 is the score. And remember, it was a 6-2 Lynchburg lead coming into the fifth. Dominic Rollins is still trying his best out there for sure. Give O'Kelly McWilliams high marks for attempting to pull that ball in. And give Johnny Wall some more praise. All Johnny Wall has done in this game is hit one over the wall and then the last one to the wall in dead central. He's got a double, a homer, and a single in this game. Absolute bonkers from Johnny Wall right now. 0-1 count on Tucker Schiavone. Catcher, now it's 0-2. O'Donovan has to scramble to retrieve that, but Wall could not advance. This is the 15th hitter that Roanoke has sent to the plate in this inning. And even crazier to think about is what lies ahead. This game is far from over. Far from over. Lynchburg swinging it well, too. But has your offense cooled off after such a long delay? Perhaps. Perhaps. We may find out. What an inning for Roanoke. This is one that they will not and should not forget for a very long time. Rollins with a 1-2 count. Let's see if he can get the final out here. Nope, foul ball. 15 hitters in the inning. There was a sacrifice bunt in there from Hunter Von Zellwitz. That was the first out of the inning. Nate Prince flew out to center. There have been two walks. That one just missed from Dom Rollins. Two walks in there, a hit by pitch as well. And then what, nine hits now, I think? Yeah, nine hits in the inning for Roanoke. 2-2 two -two delivery coming up with two outs from Dominic Rollins. The junior kicks and fires. This ball's hit well into right, but Quinn Madden is there, and thankfully for Lynchburg, the inning is over. Major damage done, and that is an understatement. Roanoke scores 11 in a historic inning, but the top of the fifth is over. Let's see how Lynchburg can respond after that, we're moving to the bottom of the fifth at Fox Field in just a second. Lynchburg is all about you, your ideas, and your goals. We've got one professor for every 10 students, so you can get all the support you need. In the classroom, in the lab, or in nature. You'll learn by putting yourself out there, and we're right there with you. You're missing. A new pitcher for Roanoke. The lead right now is 13 to six for the Maroons. And before that inning started, I was going on and on about the Lynchburg offense, how explosive they were, how relentless they are. Well, now you have to say those same compliments about Roanoke, an 11 spot in the inning. Nine hits, three doubles, a grand slam home run in there. And right now, the Maroons are in control in control on the scoreboard, and then also you just have so much momentum. It is so deflating for the opponent. And Lynchburg did that to Pfeiffer on Wednesday. 12-run inning for Lynchburg 
on Wednesday against Pfeiffer. Was it 14? Was it more than 12? Let's double check. Was it 15? Now I'm being told it was 15 runs against Pfeiffer. So that's, again, the thing about this game. You hang around in this game long enough, you're going to be on both ends of that. And that's even when you're on a good team. You're going to be on both ends of a no-hitter. You're going to be on both ends of all the crazy things that can happen in a game. But Lynchburg on the receiving end of it this time, and it is really hard to bounce back from that. Good hack from Logan Webster. If you're the Hornets coaching staff, the, some of the reminders will be, hey, it's a, it's, a long, it's a long game. We're only in the bottom of the fifth inning. We got five more swings at it. We got 15 outs to work with to try to get those runs back. And we're swinging it well. And Lynchburg is. Lynchburg's got six runs on 10 hits. I mean, they are really knocking it around. Yes, it was a 15-run second inning for Lynchburg against Pfeiffer on Wednesday. So the Hornets are capable of this. Hard to do it after the other team has already done it. Back to the momentum concept. Very difficult. Not impossible. And that's what you're looking for if you're Lynchburg. Although, again, you can use these five innings and just steadily get them back one at a time. For Roanoke, they're going to be looking for more, obviously. And if you're a Lynchburg coach, I think you're probably assuming Roanoke may end up scoring more. You're hoping for the best. You're hoping they don't. But you're also assuming that there, there might be more runs coming for a Roanoke offense that is extremely hot right now. A new pitcher for Roanoke, by the way. Bray Farrell began the inning. Bray Farrell has pitched seven and two-thirds so far this year. 0-0, oh oh, this is appearance number six. He struck out six and walked two. Surrendered four earned runs. Josh Jorman is the hitter after Logan Webster was retired to begin the inning. 3-0 count for Jorman. Ball four. That one wasn't really all that close. And now Jormand will head down to first. Lynchburg scored three in the first, one in the second, two in the third, none in the fourth inning despite three hits. There was a double play in there from Roanoke, and then the Hornets left two stranded. For Roanoke, the inning by inning looks like this in this game. Zero in the first, solo homer for one in the second, solo homer for one in the third, Zero in the fourth. They were actually three up, three down in the fourth inning. I mean, it looked like Nick Matfield had it all going on. And then the fifth inning arrived. They sent 15 hitters to the plate. They scored 11 runs on nine hits. At one point, I believe it was seven, seven straight got on base for Roanoke. There was a sacrifice bunt in there. Which, in hindsight, if you're Roanoke coach Zach Ulrich, maybe you wish you hadn't a sacrifice bunted right there. But at that point, it was a one-run game. Roanoke was up like 7-6 at that point. 13-6 is the advantage right now for the Maroons. 1-1 one, one count on Brandon Garcia. Hitting with a runner on first base. He'll take a strike at the knees to make it 1-2. Roanoke deserves a ton of praise. Probably more praise just for that inning than we have time for in the rest of the broadcast. Back to the great thing about baseball, all is not lost for Lynchburg. They've got time. Bouncing ball, nice snag by the second baseman. Did Garcia beat it? He did not. Helmet came off as Garcia was busting it down the line. What a play there by the second baseman, Kyle Moshier. Dead sprint out to right field, just sort of threw the glove out, stabbed at it. Came away with the baseball, then made a good throw to just barely get Brandon Garcia. Ivy's up now. O'Kelly McWilliams is one for two with a walk in this one. O'Kelly McWilliams has hits in his last nine of ten now, including game one and including this game. Steady presence at the top of the order. O'Kelly McWilliams has hit leadoff some this season and now seems to be shifted into this two-hole right here. Pulls one foul. It's an 0-1 count. Ben Jones is on deck. Benny Bombs is two for three in this one with a couple runners driven in. Lynchburg trailing 13-6. Down 
but definitely not out. Roanoke looking for the split that would move them to three and one in ODAC play. Have to feel pretty good about that if you're the Maroons. Yeah, anytime you can win on the road in this conference, you feel good about that. But then add even further, anytime a team can win at Fox Field, you feel great about that. And that is slightly, I guess, a biased opinion, fans. But if you just look at the stats, Lynchburg does not lose at home very often. The statistics back up the bias in this case. 1-1 one, one count to IV. Breaking ball missed from Brave Farrell. If you're Lynchburg, you got to plan on using more pitchers. Nothing against Dominic Rollins, but just going to be tough for him to finish this ball game. After all, we're only in the bottom of the fifth, so your plan has to include quite a few other options. And I think if you're Roanoke, the plan includes other options as well. That's just college baseball. Honestly, in college baseball, it's, it's maybe you should be surprised any time a guy can go five or six or seven innings. And that would include out of the bullpen as well, which is basically what you'd be asking Dominic Rollins to do. 2-2 two -two count on O'Kelly McWilliams, the fourth, with two outs. Here's the pitch. Caught the edge for strike three, looking, and Roanoke will take even more momentum away from things now. They throw up a 13 spot in their half of the fifth, and then they shut down Lynchburg, a runner stranded at second. We'll move to the top of the sixth inning here. You're watching the fun on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. in the dream USA Mexico New pitcher for Lynchburg will be the sophomore Logan Tapman out of the bullpen in relief of Dominic Rollins. Fourth arm that Lynchburg has used in this one. Logan Tapman will enter to begin inning number six. It's a 13-6 ball game. You know, Tapman's a guy that, that could finish the game for Lynchburg. We know he's gone long a few times this season. Tapman does have one start. 2.30 earned run average in five appearances, including that one start. 11 Ks, five walks. Hitters batting just 208 against the sophomore, who was 3-0 and in 13 appearances last year. He did start one game there. That was actually on the road at Christopher Newport early in the season for Lynchburg last year. Logan Tapman is in in what maybe at first glance feels like a blowout game. Lynchburg down seven, but again, Lynchburg offensively has the firepower to get back in a game like this. So it makes a lot of sense to use Tapman, keep the game close. And hopefully you've still got Tapman maybe even getting better and better when the eighth and ninth roll around. And perhaps you can win the game there. Lynchburg has had some comeback wins, of course. 40-game season, you're going to come back in a few. And then you can kind of get into how do you define comeback. You know, if, if you're down one nothing after top of the first inning, is that is that still a comeback? So some people define it differently based on where you're at in the game. But right now, we're in the top of the sixth. Good breaking ball from Tapman there. Just missed. 
Hayden Giordano laid, laid off. He is one for three with two strikeouts and a single. He did single in the big fifth inning. Nine hits in that inning for Roanoke. They score 11 runs. 15 total to the plate. Giordano belts this one. Right field off the base of the wall. Madden struggling to pick it up. Giordano is going to turn for third. Could have a play here. Strong arm from Ben Jones. Two hops in there. Bounces off Giordano on the slide. And that is a stand-up leadoff triple. Roanoke might be picking up right where they left off. If you're the Maroons, you have to think that way. You have to think, hey, we're just going to continue to bang here. 15th hit of the game, by the way. If you're Logan Tapman, you've got to think the opposite way. You've got to say to yourself, just an isolated incident, just one bad pitch, left it up a little bit. I'm going to go get the next guy. The next guy is Hunter Von Zellwitz. He'll swing it to first. Out in front, pulls it foul. Von Zellowitz had a sacrifice bunt in that big inning. 0 for 2 prior to that with a strikeout. Flew out to center. Von Zellowitz from Hopewell, New Jersey, had two hits in the first game. Jones, Madden, and O'Donovan do up for Lynchburg in the bottom half of the sixth. Got to get there first. Nice off-speed pitch from Tapman. Had Von Zellowitz out in front again. Lynchburg is in action Wednesday on the road in Virginia Beach to take on Virginia Wesleyan. The Marlins will play host to the Hornets. And then our next home broadcast will be back here, March 23rd, one week from today, Washington and Lee. High and tight from Tapman for ball one. Lynchburg, after the Wesleyan trip, will have the two against Washington and Lee. And then a non-conference midweek on Tuesday, March 26th, hosting the Methodist Monarchs. So we get, uh, we get five out of six here at home for Lynchburg. A little mini home stand, if you will. We hope you'll enjoy the baseball with us in person here at Fox Field, or at least on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. 2-2 two -two count. Hunter Von Zellowitz facing Logan Tapman. Tapman slightly open when he comes set, looks at the runner. Off-speed pitch, Jones will field on one hop. Runner has to hold. Small victory there for the Hornets. Just a 4-3 put out. And it's the first out of the inning. Kyle Moshear is one for three with a double and a strikeout. He's grounded out to the third baseman, or excuse me, grounded out to the shortstop in this game also. For Roanoke, they will head to Pfeiffer, the team that Lynchburg beat Wednesday. They'll head to Pfeiffer on Tuesday, March 19th, and then turn around and host Avert at home coming up this Wednesday, March 20th. Nice pitch from Logan Tapman and a good start. Strike one. I believe he has started all three hitters with strikes in this inning. Good job by Tapman to get ahead. Corners are in for Lynchburg. Middle's kind of a modified in. They're not all the way in on the grass. Looked like it was a squeeze attempt coming. Bunt, foul, and it's just a foul ball. Riley O'Donovan couldn't quite scramble in time. Hard to see on those bunts as a catcher. Some, some coaches will teach the catcher to assume a pop-up on a bunt. And just, just Maybe you're a little bit more ready for it then, but that's easier said than done. 0-2 count now. Tapman to Moshear. Here's the pitch. Went inside. Moshear got it elevated. O'Kelly McWilliams on the run. It's a long run. He's not going to get there. Another double for Rono. The Maroons are showcasing some power in game two. I've got that as being hit number 16 for the Maroons. Let's figure up how many of them are extra base hits. It looks like four doubles now, one triple, and one grand slam home run from Johnny Wall. So that gets you up to six extra base hits. Wow. Another run is in. 14 to 6 is our score now. Roanoke on top. Caden Friels has a solo home run in this game. 
He's walked and been hit by a pitch as well. Logan Tapman got him way out front. Strike one. What an attack right here from Roanoke. And some of the stats from earlier in the season, you maybe knew this was a possibility. Mentioned the Maroons had more extra base hits coming into the game for Lynchburg. 42 to 39 coming into the series, I guess, rather. Uh, Lynchburg had more home runs. Roanoke had more doubles. Lynchburg had a slightly higher slugging percentage. But Roanoke, their bats are waking up as well. It was one of our themes and our talking points. To start, how good Lynchburg had been swinging it. Hitters heating up. Roanoke, they have certainly done that today. It's been a microwave situation. They've gotten very hot. They continue to stay hot. One two count here for Logan Tapman on Friels. Tapman got him. High heater there that Friels couldn't catch up to. And now there's two outs in the inning. Nate Prince is one for three in this game. He's flown out to right a couple times. Nate Prince from Roanoke, a sophomore from the Star City. Hitting ninth here, playing center field for Roanoke in both ends of the doubleheader. Roanoke actually used the exact same lineup. So there's an interesting thing to think about. Breaking ball from Tapman. That was nice. A lot of teams will use different combinations in the doubleheaders. Maybe there's something to be said for using the exact same lineup. Those guys get more looks, albeit against different pitchers. But they get to swing it more. Maybe if you identify your nine best, you're just trying to stay with them. That could be part of the concept here for Roanoke. As opposed to using different lineup combinations and shuffling, which is so common in college baseball. Interesting thought. And Lynchburg's lineup is pretty similar. We know we, you know, Lynchburg has those stable of guys that are pretty much going to play every day. Ben Jones, Brandon Garcia. McWilliams, Hyatt has been in that mode, but he actually did not start this game. Punch out looking there, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Logan Tapman to end the inning. Roanoke does get one, triple and a double in there for the Maroons, and now they lead 14-8. to eight. rough day. Jess and I are officially on a break. The couple hey, canoe no, has broken up. <laughs> How you feeling? Living the dream. Just canoeing. That's the Mexican side behind me. Um, the U.S. is that way. So far we're all still alive. I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Ben Jones leads off the bottom of the sixth inning for Lynchburg. They trail 14 to six. Lynchburg led in this game at one point, six to two. Lynchburg led after the first inning, three nothing. It was four one after two complete. It was six two after the third. Both teams got blanked in the fourth. And then Roanoke had their eruption, their explosion in the top of the fifth with 11 runs. Maroons just add one more in the sixth. 
So Lynchburg, again, we've been saying all is not lost, but now you really have to start thinking about getting busy. 2-0 count for Ben Jones. He's a guy that can get busy pretty quickly. One swing of the bat. Thought about that one, but decides to take it at the knees for strike one. You want to stay confident. You want to stay even keel, as even keel as possible. You know your offense is capable of a big comeback. But it has to start happening pretty quickly. Lynchburg is down to 12 outs now. We are in the bottom of the sixth inning. Jones, Madden, and O'Donovan do up. And those are three guys that have been really good lately for Lynchburg. By lately, I mean in this last couple weeks here. Big hack from Ben Jones. Nothing there. And the count will move to three and two. Ben Jones has reached base now in nine straight. He's an on-base machine between the hits, walks, and hit by pitch. There's a walk right there for Benny Bombs. Be his first of this game. Walked once to go along with one single in game number one. I think Ben Jones has got an interesting little run scoring streak. I believe he's got now eight games that he's scored runs. Got a couple runs driven in. In this game as well. Here's Quinn Madden. Grounded out to the shortstop twice. One of those was actually a 6-4-3 double play. One hit, drove in two in the first inning. Quinn Madden was on fire. He has cooled slightly. I would argue he's probably still smoldering there. His swing is so quality. He's never going to go too cold. Here's the pitch to Quinn Madden. Takes that for strike one. Nobody out. Ben Jones leads off at first. Got to be real safe here if you're a Lynchburg runner. Really cautious. You're still running hard, but you just take no chances in these situations when your team is down by a lot. You know you're going to have to get a lot of runners on behind you to come back. Obviously still some value, again, in running it hard and got to get their own, got to get to second on the pass balls, those kinds of things. Takes away, take away the force options. Advance, get 90 feet closer when you can, but no chances. Quinn Madden will flare one foul, and now the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Riley O'Donovan waits on deck. He's one for three in this game. Riley was rocking in game one with two doubles, two for three. There was a walk in there as well. Collins would follow in this inning if Lynchburg gets that far. Nobody out in the bottom of the sixth. Breaking ball, missed the zone, looked like it went over it, and that's ball three. Bray Farrell still working for Roanoke. Full count. Close game, Jones might be on the move here, but probably not in this situation. That ball was ripped by Quinn Madden. Self-defense there by Farrell, and then he scrambles to pick up the rebound off the leather and throw to first to get Madden out. So back to Quinn Madden. I mean, that's going to go in the books as an out, but he really hit that ball hard. I just think he's just so lasered in right now. Riley O'Donovan, single in his last at bat. He flew out to right field hard. That was to right center, but he just crushed the ball. O'Donovan's another guy. I, I mean, when he makes contact, it is loud and hard and dangerous. 14-6 ball game. Lynchburg's going to need some of that danger here. One out with a runner on second. High and tight to Riley O'Donovan for ball one. Kyle Haney and a cast of thousands here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Actually, it's just been a smaller cast because we're in the midst of spring break. Spring break coming to an end for our student workers. And everybody's all sad about that when really you should be excited to come back and learn more. Don't you think? Sam Rice, Sam Rice in the press box, he agrees with me. Sam Rice, a lifelong learner. He has never stopped learning. 2-0 count to Riley O'Donovan with one out. Not that you couldn't learn on spring break, but you know what I mean. O'Donovan takes strike one. Bray Farrell is another Roanoke guy, senior. Went to Lord Botetot High School like our buddy Evan Gates, who I, I think is probably watching somewhere. 
either now or uh, possibly after the fact. 2-1 count, or is it 2-2? Two -two? Let's find out in just a second. Here's the pitch. No, that's strike two. Now it is even at two balls and two strikes. Farrell made 11 appearances last year. Pretty good stuff. This is appearance number six this season for Brave Farrell. Earned run average currently at 4.70. Lynchburg hoping Riley O'Donovan can change that here. 2-2 two -two delivery coming from Farrell. O'Donovan will rope this into center field. Caught there. Double play. Maybe no Ben Jones scrambled back in time. Nice catch by Nate Prince in center. Another hard out from Lynchburg. I, I just think the hitting approach is so sound right now. You can't feel bad about that if you're Riley O'Donovan. He's made two really hard outs. And that's where I like the exit velocity. Uh, some folks don't like the new school analytics and some of that stuff, but I like knowing the batter's exit velocity because if I'm a coach, I'm going to say, hey, Riley O'Donovan, you know, you hit that one, ball came off at 97, whatever. Just a ballpark there. I don't know what it, the exit velocity was. But if it came off pretty hard, you got to feel good about that if you're a hitter. That's what you're trying to do. That's what we've been trying to say for years to hitters is hit the ball hard. Don't try to place it. Just hit it hard somewhere. Hope it finds a hole. So knowing that exit velocity kind of quantifies that and, and backs that up. Gavin Collins will dodge a high one. He is one for two in this game with a hit by pitch. Does make you feel bad when you hit balls at guys over and over again. Quinn Madden did that in his, or for the first out of the inning, and now Riley O'Donovan has done it. Lynchburg's hitting him hard up the middle as well, which is always a good sign. Roanoke has done that today. 2-0 count on Gavin Collins. Collins didn't think he could pit, hit that pitch hard, so he takes it for ball three. Normally, I'd say green light for Gavin Collins. Maybe when you're down by eight like this, maybe you do just give Gavin Collins a take sign right here, 3-0. Who knows? Two outs, runner on second. Farrell delivers. That might have been a straight take from Gavin Collins, either on his own or from the coach. 3-1 now. I bet it's swing away time for the senior from Clifton, Virginia. Subtly good base running there by Ben Jones as well. If you notice, fans, he got as far as he could on that line drive and still was able to get back in time and not get doubled off. Collins will hit one hard, but again, sort of right at a defender. One hops into the leather of Johnny Wall, and he throws a strike across for the final out of the inning. So some bad luck there for Lynchburg, and unfortunately the Hornets trail. Roanoke on top, 14-6 to six through six complete in game two at Fox Field. My name is Alexis Fabula. I major in criminology and I double minor in psychology and criminal forensics. Top of the seventh inning. It's the top of the lineup coming up for Roanoke. Corey Coogan will lead off. He is three for four with a homer, a double, and a single. He had two hits in that, seven, in that big fifth inning for Roanoke where they scored 11 runs on nine hits total. Some walks and a hit batter in there as well. As well, Coogan likes the first. And he'll just roll it into right field for his fourth hit of the game. Corey Coogan had one hit in game number one. 
Now he's got a four-pack of them in game two. Leadoff man is on. I've got that as being base hit number 17 for Roanoke. Dylan Bonzon is up. A defensive change for Lynchburg. It'll probably also be a change in the batting order as well. Ethan Marotsky comes in for Quinn Madden. Marotsky plays left. Logan Webster slides over to right. Rest of the order and defense is intact for the Hornets. Logan Tapman still pitching for Lynchburg. Struck out the last two he faced in the inning after surrendering a triple and a double. Going to give up back-to-back -back base hits here. This one's slightly off the end of the bat by Bonzen, but down for a single. Dylan Bonzen has four hits in the game. 18 now for Roanoke as a unit. It's, it's again, it's sometimes tough to wrap your head around. But if you watch enough baseball, you will see these things. You will. And if it's your first time seeing it now, you can use that phrase to the other people when they are blown away by this. And not that you still shouldn't be blown away by it. I mean, it's still ultra impressive what Roanoke is doing right now. And I would argue Lynchburg still with a chance. Their offense can be equally as impressive. Nobody out here in the top of the seventh. But Johnny Wall up, who is on fire his own. Breaking ball from Tapman. Good pitch. Johnny Wall has three hits in this game. He was one for one with three walks and a hit by pitch in game one. This is going to be a Saturday to remember for Johnny Wall. Even his great career got over 165 hits now. Runners go. Pitch in. O'Donovan throws a strike. And he's safe. He's safe. It's kind of a head first slide and maybe a swim move around it. Collins was getting to the bag on the run. O'Donovan threw a strike. Throw beat him. Looked like Gavin Collins got the glove down in time. But the runner, this case Coogan, got around it. Now it's runners on second and third for a dangerous Johnny Wall. He has played wall ball a couple times, including a grand slam off Austin Riney that went over the left field fence. Nice pitch by Tapman to get it inside. I, I think Lynchburg feels like if Wall's got any kind of a hole, maybe it is there under his hands or on the inner black. Not that that's a bad place to pitch any pitcher or any hitter. That's going to be a, a tough spot for anybody to handle. But right now for Johnny Wall, that might be the only place you can go to get him out at the moment. 2-2 two -two count. Nobody out. See if Lynchburg goes back there again. They did. Wall got to it. A beamer right into left field. One run will come in. Johnny Wall has four hits. Think about this. One, two, and three in this game for Roanoke. All have four hits. Twelve between them. Between Coogan, Bonson, and Wall. They have 12 hits right now. They have each gotten out one time. So it's 12 for 15 from the top three in the order for Rono. That is semi unheard of. I mean, teams score 15 runs all the time. Again, Lynchburg scored over 20 on Wednesday. But to have your first three put together a stat line like that, my goodness, Schiavone wants this one. Didn't get all of it. Marotsky fields in left. Lynchburg throwing home. It's on the mark. Well, slightly off the mark. And Bonds unable to slide in. Sacrifice fly is successful. One more run comes in for Roanoke. They've got two in the inning now. Roanoke in this game has scored a run in every inning but one and four. And the big one was the fifth with the 11 spot. Two outs. One out. Correction, one out. Might have been wishful thinking for me. I think Logan Tapman's got pretty good stuff. I think all the pitchers in this game for Lynchburg have had good stuff, but Roanoke is just on another world right now. They're in, they're in the stratosphere. It looks like a beach ball to everybody. Hitting is contagious that way. It really is hard to quantify. And I, and I don't know if the, the psychologist or the scientist would back up that, but it really can be contagious. 
one guy starts swinging it well, for some reason it does carry over to other hitters. Obviously the plan is good, the approach is good for Roanoke. You still gotta swing it though. Check swing there on what is gonna be ball two. I think Riley O'Donovan maybe just thought it was a strike anyway. But instead, it's a 2-0 count right here for Hayden Giordano. He has two hits in the game. Giordano has struck out twice as well. That was against Nick Matfield. Ground ball, left side. Collins on the dive, slings it to second. They get one. They do not get the other out at first. Nice play by Gavin Collins. 5-4 fielder's choice there. Collins continuing to play hard, as expected. I was just looking at Lynchburg's dugout and observing some guys in between innings there or in the break. I mean, the energy still seems pretty good. Nobody's gone silent over there. Everybody's still chatting it up and trying to support one another. Has to be tough, though. Not used to being down 10 runs, 16-6. A 10-0 Roanoke lead right now. We'll have to dig into the file a little bit to even find out the last time Lynchburg was down 10 runs in a game. That has not happened in a while. Tapman misses the zone with what looked to be a breaking ball. The hitter is Hunter Von Zelowitz. He does not have a hit in this game. Von Zelowitz and I think Friels are the only no, Friels has, the, Friels has the solo home run. So, yeah, actually, Hunter Von Zelowitz is the only one in this game without a hit so far. Just double-checking the scorecard again. It's a busy one. A lot going on. Pretty busy in the first game. Lynchburg won that 8-6. Soft contact. Jorman will eye that, take two steps, and make the run and grab to end the inning. Two more runs come across for Roanoke. Maroons rolling here. They're on top, 16-6 to at Fox Field in Lynchburg. Tim Slusser from the Outdoor Leadership Program gave a presentation at a teaching and learning resources conference here about getting his program more involved on the academic side of campus. I mentioned uh, computers and mapping, and he mentioned caving, and eventually we came up with the idea of mapping caves. So the week before, we were able to learn how to use the instruments kind of like on a flat surface and just kind of get a hang of how they work. But it was really amazing how once we got in the cave, it was a completely different experience using them. It was unique. It got most of us out of our comfort zone, kind of gave us a new experience, a new taste of something new. But I think the most difficult parts were getting the lighting right. Um, you had to read the instruments with the headlamps while keeping your eye pointed on the plot point this allowed them to actually literally get their hands dirty, uh, collecting data, conducting measurements, and putting all that together in the form of a map, and doing it in a, in a place that's never been mapped before. Pinch hitter coming up for Lynchburg to begin their half of the seventh. It'll be Joe Munitz. Joe Munitz in a small body of work this season has put together some really great numbers. Joe Munitz is hitting 500. Two for four. He's sort of been the sacrifice bunt specialist for Lynchburg. He's got three of them on the season, uh, but he also... Has two hits, including a double. He's driven in one. Joe Munitz leading off this inning. And he'll start it off with a 2-0 count. Bray Farrell is the pitcher for Roanoke. 7-8-9 in the batting order here for Lynchburg. Wonder if we'll see some more changes, or maybe this is the only one. Bryce Demery, the designated hitter, started in this spot. Demery's day will be 0 for 2. Fly out to left, a strikeout, and he also walked once. Logan Webster would be on deck. Webster is one for three with a double in this game. And then Josh Jorman 
in that nine spot, one for two. The single and a walk. 3-1 count here on Joe Munitz as that one misses upstairs. He's a freshman from Virginia Beach. The old left-handed hitting, right-handed throwing combo. 3-1 pitch coming to Munich. Munich, excuse me, that's in the dirt for ball four. So, Joe Munich, the good start to the freshman season continues for the first year. And it is Logan Webster still hitting. Logan Webster, another Tidewater area guy like Joe Munich, Chesapeake, Virginia for Logan Webster. Hit 248 in 37 games last year. It's a career 264 hitter that's entering today. Doesn't factor in that double he had earlier. Logan Webster, some sneaky good power numbers. In his career now, it is 13 doubles, two triples, and three homers for Logan Webster. 0-1 count. Runner at first is Joe Munitz. Again, should be station to station over there for Lynchburg in the running game. Don't want to take any chances. 0-2 count now on Logan Webster. It's almost to the point where if you're Roanoke, you could have your first place first baseman play behind the runner at first if you want to. You don't necessarily want to invite that runner to, to dance off and take second base because, again, you want to keep the double play in order. You don't want to make it easy for runners to advance, but... With a 10-run lead, things change a bit in a baseball game. Down the line, diving grab is no good. Webster's going to have another extra base hit. Joe Munitz will turn in round third. It's going to be a triple for Webster. Munitz stepping on the Pentagon for the seventh run of the game for Lynchburg. Nice job by Munitz to read that well and hustle around. A triple for Logan Webster. Talked about his power numbers. That, that, that's included. Definitely factored into the slugging percentage. Now it's three career triples for Logan Webster. He was wheeling around the dirt to get 90 feet away. Could this be the big inning that Lynchburg has been looking for? It's actually their first hit since the fourth inning. So in addition to Roanoke just banging the ball all around the yard, the Maroons have been pitching it and gloving it pretty well. Lynchburg had three hits in the fourth inning, and they did not score a run. Josh Jorman now, 1-1 one, one count. He is one for two with a walk and a single. Top of the lineup on the way next for Lynchburg. Don't want to say it's a now or never moment, but if Lynchburg could cut into this Roanoke lead even more, they already have with one run there, they could cut into it even more. Might start to gain some confidence if you're Lynchburg. Might feel pretty good about a comeback attempt. One, two count. It'll be on Brave Farrell, the pitcher for Roanoke, trying to halt any momentum that the Hornets might be trying to build. Nice spot right there. Mm, that was good. Got under the hands to start and then came back. Two seam fastball with movement tailed over the inside corner for strike three. Brandon Garcia walking to the plate, hitting with a runner on third and one out. Hollywood is one for, or excuse me, Hollywood is two for three with a walk in this game. A multi-hit game for Brandon Garcia. Seventh multi-hit game of the season. Hacks it to first, and that is foul. Oh, one count here for Brandon Garcia. Logan Webster leads off at third. Roanoke's going to send 7, 8, 9 to the plate in their top half of the eighth inning. We're in the bottom of the seventh right now. Hard breaking ball from Farrell. Strike two. So in the last three innings for Roanoke, they have scored 14 runs, and that looks to be on 14 hits. That's in innings 5, 6, 7. Roanoke did get solo homers in the second and the third for the first two runs, but the bulk of the damage has come in the fifth, sixth, and seventh. One-two count to Brandon Garcia. Garcia, hard hit up the middle. Johnny Walls got that one. 
Wow, good play. Run comes in for Lynchburg. Brandon Garcia is going to get credit for an RBI. You're looking for a little bit more right now if you're the Hornets, but they have cut into the lead with two runs in the bottom of the seventh, two outs. O'Kelly McWilliams stepping into the batter's box. He's got one hit in game two here. He had one hit in the first game. And now O'Kelly McWilliams has hit safely in nine of his last ten. Lynchburg will need to keep the heat on. Obviously, you don't have to get them all back in one inning. But Lynchburg is running out of time. In a game where there is no clock, Lynchburg's starting to use it up. Johnny Wall, high hop. He'll throw to first and get another one. Man, Johnny Wall, in addition to swinging the bat, he is playing a very good shortstop. Roanoke does leap two, but they still lead by eight, doubling up Lynchburg 16-8 to eight as we head to the eighth inning here at the University of Lynchburg. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic and Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams, helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. Top of the eighth inning, Roanoke leads 16 to eight, a complete battery change for Lynchburg. No, we don't mean the double A's in your remote. We mean the pitcher-catcher combo. It's Nathaniel Mack, return of the Mack. He is on the mound with his pretty good numbers this season. Mack's only pitched in three games. He had some nice work against Bridgewater, 2.2 innings pitched. Did not surrender an earned run so far on the season. Nathaniel Mack has struck out Four, walked none, and he does have one win. That was in the Bridgewater game. Mighty Mac is in there, senior pitching to his battery mate, sophomore Matt Cassidy from nearby Heritage High School. Another defensive change for Lynchburg will be Ryan Long at second base. So we think those are just straight changes there with Cassidy in for Riley O'Donovan. And then Ryan Long in for Ben Jones in those spots in the order, but we'll keep an eye on it when they come up. Mack missed with a breaking ball there, so now it's a 2-2 count on Kyle Moshear, who has two doubles in this game. Nobody out to begin the eighth inning. It's a 16-8 ball game. Big uphill climb for Lynchburg still, and they only have two games to do, or two innings rather to do it not two games two innings but don't give up hope just yet Lynchburg fans if you're a Roanoke fan watching you hope that door is completely slammed and locked as Mac 
misses the zone there with a breaking ball. And that'll be the first walk that Nathaniel Mack has issued this season. Appearance number four for Nathaniel Mack. This is game 17 for Lynchburg. Same for Rona. Runner at first for the first baseman, Caden Friels. Solo homer in his first at bat. Nathaniel Mack has hit Friels. Second time Friels has been hit by a pitch. So Mack maybe struggling to find it just a bit here early in this one. Coming into the game, I think you heard me just say it. He hadn't walked anybody. Don't think Mack has hit anybody this season either. Just going to double check it for you. He has not. So first time all year Nathaniel Mack has hit or walked a batter, and they come in sequential order. Walk came first, then the hit by pitch. Here's Nate Prince, nine-hole hitter for Roanoke. 16-8 ball game. Nathaniel Mack. It, it seems like those are breaking balls that aren't breaking. That was a fastball, much closer to the plate, but also a ball. So it's a 1-0 start to Nate Prince. And so as a coach, you, you, as you're calling your pitches, you know this guy's having trouble with his breaking ball. The problem with that is that Roanoke knows that as well. And now they're sitting on the fastball, and that can become very problematic for the defense. Good pitch there from Nathaniel Mack. 1-1 one, one count. Corey Coogan due up for Roanoke. He's working on a four-hit game. He will be looking for hit number five. His next at bat. That ball pops out of Cassidy's mitt. I think that's going to be a pass ball. It, it, it really looked like it wasn't that bad of a pitch. <laughs> As the umpire gave Nathaniel Mack a new ball at the same time, Matt Cassidy was throwing one back to him, but it's a, it's a dead ball, so runners cannot advance. But they did move up on the initial pass ball anyway. Matt Cassidy's going to have a chat with Nathaniel Mack. Maybe an adjustment, maybe talking about the signs, maybe a little of both out there, short meeting. 2-1 count on Nate Prince, the nine-hole hitter for Roanoke. A Roanoke native. He had one hit in the first game. He has one hit in this game. Prince has two in scoring position. Can give Roanoke a little bit more cushion again. There was a breaking ball from Mack. So maybe he's got that figured out. Nathaniel Mack, I think, is, is high quality. Another guy that has really worked hard to better himself in the offseason. Had a good summer playing baseball. And he's an important part of the bullpen, at least so far. Breaking ball that got soft contact, and it will. Did Josh Jorman make that grab? What a play. He's going to throw home. Run will come in. That was outstanding. Lynchburg thinks the runner left early, and they are right. Runner did not tag up. It is a double play in strange fashion. What a catch from Josh Jorman. On the run, going over his shoulder to make a grab. That's a play I always talk about that is just so hard to practice. As an infielder, you, you take a billion ground balls in your life, but you never really can practice a little soft looping line drive or a a shallow pop-up, maybe you want to call it. So high marks there. High degree of difficulty for Josh Jorman going straight over his head as well. I mean, that's one that's even hard for an outfielder to do, and they practice it. Infielders, you never really get to practice that. You'll do your pop-ups, of course, but that's not a true pop-up. That's, that's slightly different. Jorman's on the move, on the run, and in addition to all that, You've got the second baseman and the right fielder that are also involved. So there can be some discomfort knowing they might be bearing down on you as well. Got to get the communication right there. So that's where it's different from an outfielder as well. An outfielder on a ball hit straight over your head, you're the only one that's going to catch that. It's not like you're going in the gap or something. That is a really difficult play for a first baseman to make. Jorman made it. And he got up and made a good throw, although the runner left early, so it ends up being a double play. 1-1 one, one count. This is Corey Coogan. He's in the four-hit club today for Roanoke. They've got three members, and it's the top three hitters in the lineup. 
four-hit club in this game, by the way, not just on the day. Coogan on the day has five. Bonson has five. Wall has five. They've all got four in this game. They all had one in game one. Two-one count on Coogan. Mack has missed with the breaking ball again, and now it's a three-ball, one-strike count with two outs. Lynchburg got two more rips at it. Eighth and ninth. It'll be 3-4-5 due up for Lynchburg. We think that will feature some new hitters. It, well, it definitely will based on the changes. Ryan Long and Matt Cassidy will be in there. Mm, that was a much better curveball from Mack, but also missed for ball four. Nathaniel Mack has walked two. And Dylan Bonson steps to the plate. Bonson four for five with a strikeout. Here's an interesting fact for you, baseball fans, a strange one. Coming into this at bat, Dylan Bonson on the day has five hits, but he's also struck out five times. Feast or famine for Dylan Bonson. We'll see. Some, something is going to change there. He's either going to add to those totals or he's going to make a more conventional out or walk or get hit by a pitch or reach on an error. All your options are there, I guess. Runners will go. Man, I think it's just a textbook hit and run there with two outs. Bonds and slashes it through. He has now become the first member of the five-hit club. Runner's going to try to score and will. Ball got under Cassidy's glove, and now it's really not looking great for Lynchburg. That's not what you want. The base hit is one thing, but then when you're not so clean with the baseball there, that's going to bother you a bit as a coach. Bonds and congrats on a five-hit day. Five hit game. Again, rather, I keep I keep misstepping because this is game two of the day. It's a five hit game for Dylan Bonson. He has six hits on the day. I've got that as being 19 hits now. No, 20. I've got that as being 20 hits for Roanoke. Another ball is going to get away from Matt Cassidy. He's had a couple sneak by. Tough, tough deal to come into as a catcher for sure. Catching is very difficult to begin with, but then when your team's down, your back's to the wall, you may not have the same spark, same fire, same energy. It's been a long day. You've been warming up guys in the pen probably. If you're Matt Cassidy, that can be really difficult back there. 1-0 count. Good action on the pitch from Mack, but it missed the zone. He's facing the ultra-talented ultra Johnny Wall. Johnny Wall has four hits in the game. Five on the day. 2-0 count for Johnny Wall. Roanoke leading by 10 again. After what looked like a textbook hit and run. Johnny Wall will send one back to the wall again. Great grab out there. Ethan Morotsky got to the warning track, found the fence, and made the catch right in front of the ODAC Championships sign here at Fox Field. But two more come across for Roanoke. They continue this offensive assault here. Maroons are on top, 18-8, to eight, heading to the bottom of the eighth. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lynchburg, we have an on-campus zip line program. Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience.
It's an 18-8 ball game in the bottom of the eighth. New pitcher for Rona will be number 31, Isaac Brooks, 5'10", right-hander from Glen Allen, Virginia. This will be appearance number five on the season for Brooks. He was 2-1 and one last year with three saves in 18 visits to the bump. Uh, this year, 0-0, oh oh, no saves. ERA is a little elevated, so this is a chance for him to probably get back on track. I, I don't know. That's probably that's probably a uh, maybe an assumption by me to assume that he needs to get back on track. I mean, the a, the ERA is high. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's pitched poorly. So we'll say it's a chance to bring his ERA down and maybe even stay on track. The hitter is Ryan Long, who subbed into the game defensively. Ryan Long's had a pretty good season thus far for Lynchburg. He'll work with a 2-1 count now. Ryan Long, senior from Virginia Beach, is hitting 278, slugging at 500. He has six starts. This will be game number 12 that Ryan Long has played. Really valuable as a, a utility guy. Can kind of go anywhere. We've seen him play some first base. And he plays quite a bit of second base as well. A hitter, though, too. Uh, not, not just a, a purely defensive guy. Definitely a good hitter, Ryan Long. Talk about a guy that's played in some big games. Big moments all through his career. He hits that hard. There's Johnny Wall again. Wall has been a vacuum cleaner over there at short. I've been really impressed. And, of course, Johnny Wall's been swinging the bat. But, man, his, his defense is maybe just as impressive. Different, different vibe, different reason, but very impressive. All right, so Ryan Long is the first out. And here's Ethan Morotsky. This will be Morotsky's first at bat. He's actually been out there for a bit. This is the spot that Quinn Madden started the game in. Ethan Morotsky, one of our favorites. He's a guy that does a lot for us here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. I had to call in Morotsky to, to, to get on the volleyball call for me uh, in the fall. Morotsky, got good medal on that, but what a grab. Man, Morotsky just missed a homer. He would have settled for a double or a triple, but Nate Prince out there just covering a lot of ground to pull that in. <laughs> Roanoke has scored 18 runs. Their defense, I mean, they have made some outstanding plays. Remember, it was Corey Coogan in game one that was making the diving grabs to take hits away. Johnny Wall has been lights out at shortstop, rock solid. Uh, Roanoke's outfield play in general has just been fabulous. I mean, they are covering the ground out there. 0-1 count, low three quarters, maybe even just called a sidearm there from Isaac Brooks. Excuse me. He is pitching to Matt Cassidy. This was the spot that Riley O'Donovan began the game in. 1-2 count now. With two outs. Let's see if Cassidy can stay alive. He cannot. Swing and miss there on Isaac Brooks. And it's a three-up, three-down inning for Lynchburg. Marotsky put a charge into one. What a great grab in deep center field. And Lynchburg is down in order. We are heading to the top of the ninth at Fox Field. It's an 18-8 Roanoke lead. I learned a lot of valuable lessons playing college football. I never thought about the health benefits of exercise until I actually started to talk to coaches in college. It's not only just for performance, it's for life. My coaches instilled the importance of well-being, not only building up strength, mental health, getting enough sleep, eating properly is all what it is to be healthy. I decided that I want to go into personal training and share my knowledge that I obtained in college about physical and mental well-being. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level. 
Um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. Top of the ninth, long day of baseball. Lynchburg won game one, eight to six. Lynchburg was on top six to two in this one. We knew it was not over. Astute baseball fans, like everybody watching our LHSN broadcast is, you knew it was not over. Roanoke, we did not know they were going to explode the way they did, though. 11 runs in the fifth, one in the sixth, two in the seventh, and two in the eighth for the Maroons. They've really just continued that. 16 runs in four innings, 18 total after two solo shots early in the game, and Roanoke leads 18-8. Okay, some changes here. O'Kelly McWilliams is on the mound for Lynchburg. We'll talk about him in just a second. Because that one got behind and actually scraped the back of Schiavone. So there's a hit by pitch for McWilliams, not the way he would want to start. At third base for Lynchburg, you have Joe Gordon, sophomore from Midlothian. In the outfield, we think we've got uh, Eddie Gimble playing left now, who we saw start game one. Ethan Morotsky has slid over to center for Lynchburg. Logan Webster still in right. Back to O'Kelly McWilliams. He is a two-way player. He pitched quite a bit in his former stop, Wofford. McWilliams is a hard-throwing right-hander. He has one appearance on the year. That was in that loss to Cortland, an extra inning game. Pitched 1.2 innings all the way back on February 24th. So have not seen O'Kelly McWilliams in a while. And it could be a chance to get him back on track. 2-0 count. He hasn't thrown a strike just yet. Really tough to be a two-way player. So many guys make that look easy in college baseball, and even one guy in the big leagues makes that look easy. Bouncing ball, left side, long throw for Brandon Garcia. Not in time, an infield single there for Hayden Giordano. But really tough to be a two-way guy. You have to put so much effort in. And then, you know, if you do get off track in one spot, it kind of becomes very difficult to get back on track. When you're in the lineup every day, like McWilliams is, it's kind of hard for the coach to take you out of that. He's an elite defender in center as well, so you lose some of that there. So, so it can be tough, that, that two-way player role. Again, people have made that look really easy. Matt Cassidy, a true, true, a true two-way guy catching. Remember, Cassidy pitched some in Cedar Rapids. And now he's behind the plate as a catcher. That was part of his value and why he was on the active roster in Cedar Rapids, in fact, when the rosters were limited because you had a guy like Cassidy who could pitch and catch. Well, the battery is fully composed of two-way players right now. O'Kelly McWilliams pitching with runners on first and second. Nobody out. 2-0 count to Hunter Von Zelowitz. Good hard fastball from McWilliams. 3-0 count now. Struggling just a bit at the moment. In that one appearance, he did strike out one and walk two. Ended up getting saddled with the loss against Cortland. That was Lynchburg's second loss of the season at the time. Lynchburg... This game's not over yet. So up to this point, Lynchburg has lost five to four different opponents. Cortland is the only one with a losing record at the moment. Cortland's schedule has featured a lot of ranked teams, much like Lynchburg's did early in the season. But yeah, Lynchburg lost to East Texas Baptist, 12-4 and four on the season so far right now, ETBU. That was a team Lynchburg beat twice in Cedar Rapids on the national championship run. Cortland is 5-7-1. and one. Yes, you can have ties. York is seven and one. And then Bridgewater, 12 and six right now. Haven't checked on any other ODAC scores at the moment, but Bridgewater was 12 and six coming into today. So Lynchburg, total between those opponents, it's a combined record of 36, 18 and one for the teams they've lost to. If this one continues the way it looks, it might. 
spin move there from O'Kelly McWilliams, but no throw. So there's his one disengagement of the rubber without throwing. But uh, if this game continues like it does, like we think it might anyway, Roanoke will move to 7-10 and ten on the season. There's a hard hit ball over the second baseman's head. Rotsky on the move to right center to collect it. Slight bobble. Probably wouldn't have mattered. I think the run would have scored anyway. And the other runner going first to third. That was Giordano that went first to third. Another hit for Roanoke, Hunter Von Zelowitz. I've got him at 22 right now. Slight discrepancy between my card and the official scorebook, but I've got Roanoke at 22 hits right now. Pinch runner coming in for the Maroons. You know, Roanoke, other than pitchers, really hasn't made any moves out of the lineup. They did make some changes in game one, but worth repeating that this is the exact same lineup construction from game one. Same order and everything, which is slightly rare in college baseball on those double headers. Nice block from Matt Cassidy. I think that one did some physical damage there. Yeah, you can see Cassidy, he's a little, a little slow to move. Nice job by our umpire to give him some time there to shake that off. That's really difficult. That catching, man, catchers are built different. I know that phrase gets thrown around. Catchers really are built different. I was mentioning Roanoke. This score line stands. It's 19 to 8 right now. Roanoke will move to 7 and 10 on the year. They will be 3 and 1 in the ODAC. Lynchburg would drop to 11 and 6. And an even two and two in conference play. Still so much baseball left in this season. We're not even halfway. Game 17 of a 40-game regular season. Ball in the dirt. McWilliams will cover. Not necessary as the runner beats it there. 20 spot for Roanoke. 20. This just does not happen to Lynchburg very often. And you got to dip into the archives to find the last time this kind of thing did happen. You know, York scored 11 in a game one win. That was 11-6 York. Lynchburg won the second game in the series against York 6-3. And then York beat Lynchburg 8-3. And I can look at last year, but I can... Guarantee Lynchburg didn't give up 20 last season. So let's go, go back to 2022 and just take a look. But it, 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 it's a tough game. This, base, this game of baseball will humble you. It is one of the most humbling games. Every sport has the ability to do this, but baseball specifically. I mean, you think about how much failure is involved in baseball. A good hitter fails Seven out of ten times. That's the 300 hitter as Mo o Kelly McWilliams has walked one. Another. Uh, actually, McWilliams' first walk, he's given up two singles and a hit by pitch. But but this game, you know, no, nobody can play this game perfectly. Everybody on TV has had a rough day. All those hitters, even those guys in the big leagues, have had a game in their career where they went 0 for 5 with four or five strikeouts. All those pitchers. Had a game somewhere along the line at some level where they couldn't get out of the inning and they had to get lifted for a reliever and hand the ball off. And, you know, again, coaches, same way. You stay in this game long enough, you're going to be on both sides of this. Lynchburg was on the other side of this against Pfeiffer on Wednesday. This is exactly how the Falcons from Pfeiffer felt. And Lynchburg was on the road there. They did it at Pfeiffer's home, just like Roanoke's doing it here at Lynchburg. So if you hang around in this game long enough, you will be on both sides of this coin. And as a player, if, if you can manage to hang around long enough, you're going to have some great days like those top three hitters from, from Roanoke are having right now. And you're going to have some, some rough days too. You're going to have some days where the game seems really difficult. Other days as a hitter, it looks like a beach ball coming in. And then sometimes it, it looks like a little pea. You can't even find it. Doesn't even look like a golf ball. It looks smaller than that. All part of the deal when you play this game. 
And we're still playing here in the top of the ninth. Another two-run inning for Roanoke. Multi-run inning. Strikeout there for O'Kelly McWilliams. That'll be the first out of the inning. Nate Prince is walking up, I think. Yeah, no change there. Still the center fielder, Nate Prince, who made a great grab earlier in this game. And it has been a long day, of course. Sometimes the two games run together. All the events that have happened. We appreciate you sticking it out with us. Whether you've watched for just one inning or you've been here the whole time, that really means a lot to us. If you're watching it after the fact and you're still here, that's great as well. Roanoke leading 20-8 at the moment. Another spike from O'Kelly McWilliams that Matt Cassidy is going to have to shrug off. Go back to the ODAC tournament in 2022. Roanoke beat Lynchburg twice in that tournament, but Roanoke in the first round of the final weekend, game one of the final weekend, they beat Lynchburg 15 to three. That's the last time Lynchburg has given up that many runs, 15. And I'm gonna go back and try to find the last time Lynchburg gave up 20 in a game. I think the Lynchburg fans, maybe you'd rather not know. But I think some of it is just uh, how good this Lynchburg team is. They, they, just, they just don't give up a big run total like this. But back to the nature of our game, it can happen. It can happen in a heartbeat. It does happen. 2-2 two, two count. Good pitch there from McWilliams. One out. Runners it. Second and third for Roanoke. This is Nate Prince, nine-hole hitter. Two-strike pitch. Prince will foul it away. It is a Roanoke team that has, I can't say had Lynchburg's number, because I think that overstates it a bit, but it is a Roanoke team that has really played Lynchburg tough, as tough as anybody as tough as the Randolph Macons of the world and the Shenandoahs and the CNUs and the Bridgewaters. Lynchburg split with Bridgewater last weekend. Bridgewater took the one game in the ODAC tournament here, first round of the tournament here last year. Prince will slash another one through. 21st run coming across for Roanoke. Nice piece of hitting there by Prince. Fouled one off with two strikes and then got a base hit. Might be the 23rd of the game. That's unofficial. But but this Roanoke team, again, they have played Lynchburg so tough lately. Split with the Hornets last year and took three of four total with Lynchburg in 2022. These two squads split the year before. There is a double switch coming up for Lynchburg. This means O'Kelly McWilliams is out. We will get a new arm. Let's pause for just a second. We'll try to grab the changes for you. And then we're right back here in a blowout game, but we're still knocking away at it. It's the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. When creating a sustainable future, your choices matter, even your choice of a college. The University of Lynchburg is the first college in Virginia to go carbon neutral. Our dining hall is green restaurant certified. We compost all of our food waste and purchase our electricity from landfill gas. Now we're turning a hazardous lake into a thriving urban wetland. When you choose Lynchburg, you leave a smaller footprint while building a better tomorrow. Carson Peggins is the new pitcher in the ballgame for Lynchburg. 
a true two-way guy as well. Peggins has one at bat this season, but this will be pitching appearance number one for Carson Peggins. Then back to difficult situations that this game will put you in. Really tough to come in right now as a pitcher. Down 21-8. to eight. And It's just hard to find the motivation. Now some guys will use this as a chance to prove something to the coaches, prove something to themselves maybe. Peggins is going to get a good piece of the order to test himself against. Runner zone first and third here with one out in the top of the ninth. This has been a long doubleheader day. Carson Peggins will try to get Lynchburg back in the dugout. If you're Lynchburg, you, you really can't even necessarily think about uh, a comeback, even though that's what you want. It's just so far away, you, you can't think about it like that yet. you got to just take it one at bat at a time. You tell the hitters, just try not to make an out. Base hit, walk, hit by pitch, reach on an air. Just don't make an out. If we score seven or eight runs, then it'll become a little bit more realistic. But until that point, we just you kind of got to almost treat it like a 0-0 ball game. Again, that's easier said than done, obviously. Everybody sees the scoreboard. Nobody's that robotic to where they can't not know the situation right here. No, I don't think any player is that next level elite with their mental process to where, where they're not affected by this situation. If they are, then good for them. But everybody, you're human. You're going to know what the situation is. You're going to know you're down by a bunch. 21-8. to eight. Good cut there from Corey Coogan, but it's a strikeout. Well, Peggins is already off to a great start if he got Corey Coogan out. He had four hits on the game, four hits in the game, five on the day. And here's Dylan Bonzon, the only person with five hits in the game so far. For Roanoke, he has six on the day. Carson Peggins chunking it pretty good with the right hand. Another guy, obviously, that's been working on his game, getting the reps in, practicing hard, trying to make an impact for his team. So it could be a chance. I mean, you get Coogan out, that says something about your stuff. Now it's a 1-1 count. Dylan Bonzon. Only the freshman from Toronto, Canada, has probably enjoyed his first trip to Fox Field. He might be asking everybody else, what's all the fuss about? Fox has been a fortress for Lynchburg. Ooh, Bonson got that yeah, just above the shoulder blades. It was almost in the neck right there. All right, two outs, and now the bases are loaded. Bases are loaded with two down here. It's Johnny Wall. Speaking of danger men. Johnny Wall is four for six in the game. Grand slam home run. And that was back when this was a close game in the fifth inning. And then Roanoke continued to pour on runs. Johnny Wall was one for one in game one with a double and three walks. He got hit by a pitch. See how Carson Peggins attacks Johnny Wall. Really just one of the all-time best in the ODAC. Over 160 hits in the career. Strike one. Good job by Peggins. Went after him. Base is loaded here, too. So if you're Peggins, you know you're back. It really is to the wall. Maybe the fact that it's a blowout actually makes this situation easier for a pitcher. I don't know. 0-2 count. Peggins is look, making it look easy thus far. See what the approach is right here. Peggins set with the bases loaded and two down. Ground ball. Brandon Garcia will go the short way over to third. They get the out there. Nice play by Joe Gordon. Throw is a little low. Gordon had the foot anchored to the bag. And Peggins does come in and two, get two big outs. Roanoke scores again. Three more in the ninth. They are on top and in charge. Three more outs to get for Roanoke. Let's see how much of a comeback Lynchburg can make. 21 to 8 right now. Maroons on top. Beating the Hornets. If I'm walking around over on the crowd side, I always hear someone yelling, hey, Nat, take our picture. Hey, Nat, get this or something. Or, hey, Nat, you got that shot? Like, 
Um, so I'm always like trying to photograph the crowds and my friends calling my name. I think Florix at Lynchburg unifies us as a whole, no matter what background we come from, what differences we have, and what experience we've experienced through our lives. It brings us all together and we have one goal, which is to win. As a photographer, I definitely get to capture the emotion and the feel and the atmosphere of what's going on during the games and what's happening in the crowd and with the fans. We have hugely dedicated fans here at Lindbergh. They come out, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, windy, no matter what, like they will come out and support their team and cheer them on. They will sit through anything. <laughs> it's just Joe Gordon leads off for Lynchburg in the bottom of the ninth inning. Joe Gordon famous, famously entered into that Bridgewater game for Lynchburg in the tournament here. I say Bridgewater game. It was a three-game series in the first round of the ODAC tournament. That first round was is at the, the host sites, the top seed. Lynchburg was the one, Bridgewater the eight. The Eagles got the win in game one, and then Lynchburg rallied to win games two and three. But uh, Joe Gordon actually came in to play first base after Josh Jorman was injured. We'll leave it there. Josh Jorman was injured. And uh, Joe Gordon actually came in and got a base hit in his first at bat. And it was a really great story from that perspective because it was the first playing time of the season for Joe Gordon. And that's why you practice hard. That's why the coaches always tell you to stay ready because you never know when your moment's going to come and when your name will be called. And it was Joe Gordon that day. I think he ended up getting out in the second at bat. So the, 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 the average from last season is only at 500 for Joe Gordon, not 1,000, but still pretty good. 3-1 count for Joe Gordon here. He'll foul this one away. Uh, Joe Gordon does have, yes, one at bat this season. He is 0 for 1 so far this season. So at bat number 2, full count here for Gordo, number 30. And I found the answer to a question that Lynchburg fans probably didn't want answered as Gordon fouls another one away. Last time Lynchburg gave up 20 or more in a game. You have to go back to game two of the 2017 season. It was on February 4th of 2017. Lynchburg lost 20 to zero on the road to the Methodist Monarchs. Joe Gordon has walked. That tells you how good Lynchburg has been since that point, maybe just in general. They don't give up this many runs a lot or ever. But you can go back to the 2017 season, February 4th of 2017, last time Lynchburg gave up 20 or more. Roanoke right now is on top 21 to 8. If anything, like I said, it, it's actually a testament to how good Lynchburg is, and then additionally, how good Roanoke has swung it in this game. And it's been basically fifth inning and on. 11 in the fifth, one in the sixth, two in the seventh, two in the eighth, three in the ninth, 21 to eight. Roanoke has scored 19 runs in innings five through nine. One one count on Trevor Loving. Another pinch hitter in the game right here for Lynchburg. And I believe this is Trevor Loving's first at bat of the season. Chopper off the plate slash dirt. Loving will not beat that out at first. And it's the first out of the inning. Another sub coming in the game. Uh, Trevor Loving. Trevor Loving did have an at bat against Pfeiffer. I was wrong. One for one against Pfeiffer for Trevor Loving. So now the Season average is down to 500 for Trevor Loving. Here's Connor Moore in the game. Another sub, number 44, Connor Moore. Two-way player from Vienna, Virginia. That pitcher-catcher combo like Matt Cassidy. Moore will take a hit by pitch. Well, that's knowing the approach. We know Lynchburg's so good at that. Connor Moore got to see one. Didn't even really have to do anything. Just didn't move his right thigh out of the way. And the freshman is aboard. Now 
uh, for Connor Moore, that was at bat number two. He actually got an at bat against ETBU in game one, but hasn't played in a while. And here's Timmy Cotton. Timmy Cotton is a fan favorite. He's a team favorite, one of ours. When we were doing our Wheel of Hornets in the summer, when we would spin a random generated wheel, Timmy Cotton's going to squirt one to the right side. Let's see if he can beat that out. Nope. Good infield play again. Defense sound all day for Roanoke. No errors for Roanoke in uh, not quite 18 innings of defensive work because Lynchburg did not have to hit in the bottom of the ninth last game. But in 16 plus, now 16 and two thirds inning, Roanoke has been error free, which is outstanding. Brandon Garcia is still in there. He hacks at the first one and it's strike one. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about Timmy Cotton, but he swung at the first pitch. Timmy Cotton is a junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. And for Timmy Cotton, he got one at bat in that Pfeiffer game where Lynchburg was on the other side of a lopsided score line. Today, it's Roanoke with a big victory. 21 to 8, they take game two over the Lynchburg Hornets. Not the day, not the way Lynchburg wanted to end the day after the Hornets do get the win in game one, eight to six. Lynchburg now on the season, 11 and six. They are two and two in conference play. Roanoke moves to seven and 10. They are three and one in ODAC play. A big performance here for Roanoke in game two. All credit to the Maroons. All is not lost for Lynchburg. They'll be back on the road in Virginia Beach taking on Virginia Wesleyan on Wednesday, and then it's a home double dip against Washington and Lee, and of course those are all Old Dominion Athletic Conference games. So we'll see how Lynchburg can respond. Definitely some highlights for the Hornets in this one throughout the two games, but not what they wanted with a blowout loss in game two. Roanoke takes this one 21 to eight. Lynchburg won the opener eight to six. Kyle Haney saying a big thank you for watching and tuning in. We really appreciate that. Big thanks to our entire LHSN team who worked hard during a long day today. And we'll talk to you again soon, baseball fans. Our next LHSN broadcast here from Fox Field will be one week from today. Lynchburg taking on Washington and Lee, and they're on the road this Wednesday against the Marlins of Virginia Wesleyan. We'll say so long. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day, and we'll talk to you again soon.